four, three, two, one. Come on, Joe. Let's go. Sewer Town has a stream starting, and I want to be on the panel. Do 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 do. Oh 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 yeah yeah. Sew 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 sewer town. Sew sew sewer town. Oh oh ah. Damn it! Come on, wait for me, guys. Wait wait wait. I can oh oh oh. Shit shit. I'm coming I'm coming. Just hang on hang on hang on. Wait for me wait for me. Okay okay okay. Sewer town. So, 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 so we can call. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Monstrous, psychotic, satanic madness of the gutter slut, knuckle dragger class of people. And there's that guy with a, a cheap gangbanger style arc. And I want to tell you folks something. Oh my goodness. The worst stinker in the world. Seriously, people. It's not a coincidence. I'm not going to give an opportunity to claim I had a nervous breakdown. They're stupid enough to think that when I put up a video like I did this weekend, exposing my anger, and letting them see how angry I am, they think oh, I've lost it. No, I haven't, darling. I haven't. I know exactly what I'm doing. I am stupid enough to think. I am stupid enough to think. I am Hi. stupid enough. I just wanted to give you a quick update that my last uh, live stream uh, was um, taken I down. Got a uh, warning from YouTube. Um, apparently, I was uh, giving misinformation. Simon, journalism can uh, go without challenge. There are people that are talking about ad hominem, exam, okay. Okay. Hello, oh, hello, hello, everybody. There is a machine at work. Chaos. Chaos. This is not, yeah. it's not sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, the death of all. And if you come on the panel, you will be an official member. I am not sure. Bring your happy ass up on the stream. Denise Matteau here, the the death cult, sewer town. They are putting out videos, taking advantage of a very mentally ill man. The delusional obsession of Pavana and Jesse Davis. Pavana and Jesse Davis are picking it up and hooking Nathan's madness. Pavana is, frankly, fake performance of a nervous breakdown. Now, Pavana is truly insane. She's very mentally ill. One of the things about the obsession that's scary is that she is so obsessed with the whole Cicada Gamer group that she imitates them. We take the game. That is one big pile of shit. She was doing the same to me at a time. She was she was showing pictures of herself where she these were her cartoon pictures, but she drew clothing on herself that was clearly an imitation of clothing on my daughter in some of my daughter's photographs. 
<laughs> right, Denise. Very creepy. Very creepy. Pavana has yeah. named herself after one of Thomas's Twitter profiles. She calls herself Painter 33 now, and she puts a little icon about herself being Painter 33 because he recently opened a profile for himself as Composer 33. I mean, this is a, a serial killing cult. It's very, very serious. I mean, Jesse Davis has been utilizing or, or manipulating and, and weaponizing his mentally ill wife for years against Thomas Schoenberger by continuously promoting her persona as while well, she does this obsessive stuff. And he's picked up on the Nathan Staltman thing. So they're encouraging that, yes, you know, Thomas was, was able to actually get inside your mind. Yes, you know, Thomas was, was able to actually get inside your mind. And you can laugh at them. I mean, he's a sewer worker. And what is Pavana? She, she says she has some kind of education, but clearly, no. I mean, Denise Matteau, over and out. Yeah, Denise, you're educated, right, Denise? Right. <laughs> get him up! Move them out! Keep rolling, rolling, rolling Though the streams are swollen Keep them doggies rolling oh, Through rain and wind and weather Care bent for leather Wishing my gal was by my side All the things I'm missing Good fiddles, love and kissing Are waiting at the end of Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So Let's just get the party started, shall we? Um, oh, oh, I don't like that picture. What oh, are you doing? You don't like that picture? I'll change it. Why? Because it reminds me of that Gimpy one. Oh, it reminds you of Ewan Gimpy? Yeah, and he creeps me out. Okay, well, then Jesus. Here, yeah, we'll, be Jesus or something. We'll, we'll change it. Here we go. Okay, we'll we'll go. just flip them off. Okay. In the sewer town. Pile of shit. Big yeah. That's a big yeah. pile of shit. That's right. We'll flip them off from the sewer town. So, so let's just get started. Uh, I'm sure pretty much everybody that's in here is aware that um, Hoax Wars did a so-called interview with Thomas Schoenberger, which I'm sure most of you have listened to. Um, if not, we're going to go through it and dissect it. Um and we're going to talk about all these crazy defaming lies that Thomas has been spewing about people for all these years and had his mindless minions out there spewing as well. But <clears throat> I find it ironic that, you know, Thomas keeps doing these interviews. He's going to do one later tonight with Titty's Frost, which will most likely be the same style of interview that he has done with so many other people. You know, he, he speaks about all these people being these grand journalists and great investigators. And yet when they bring Thomas on, they just bring Thomas on and, and you know, they soft play everything and basically just give him a platform to try to continue spewing his defaming bullshit about people with zero receipts, zero evidence. So... I put a challenge out to Hoax Wars. I even tagged him in my tweet today um, because in, in this interview with Thomas, he says, well, I wonder if Jesse would let me up on his panel. So uh, the invitations out there for Hoax Wars, Thomas Schoenberger, Denise Madcow, Marcia Stockton, Mind Expired, Titties Frost, Chris the Gimpy Jones, 
All you mindless minions. Yeah, that's what I call you, mindless minions. All of you are welcome to come in here tonight. And any of you that have balls enough to come up on the panel, you can come up here. You don't have to show your faces. We really don't give two shits what you look like, to be honest. But you're welcome to come up here on the panel. And let's just bang this shit out and bring bring your receipts with you because I've spent almost six years now with my wife, Pavana, being attacked by you morons and all these fake defaming bullshit lies that you put out there about us. And we've spent six years debunking you with any receipts imaginable. Uh, I mean, our first channel... There was just tons of content there with those receipts. And y'all nuked it because you don't like the truth being put out. And so we've shared some of those receipts again on this new channel. But, you know, it's not my job to waste my time to keep digging this stuff up to prove what I've already proven. So tonight is your night to come on down. Come on down. And you bring your receipts. That's right. And prove what Thomas is saying is not bullshit. And what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And what right. you're saying as well, because prove I'm a schizophrenia, right? Spaghetti noodle noodle. Yeah, they're they're Pro prove that I'm genetically inferior. Yeah, they're all just mindless minions parroting and 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 basically pushing Thomas's scripts. Pushing Thomas's scripts. We've proven that Thomas pays people and Thomas, in fact, scripts people to attack other people. We've proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt. So, all of you mindless minions, including you, Mr. Hoaxy, whoever the hell you are, bring your receipts. Thomas, you're welcome, buddy. Do you got kahunas? Or are you the coward that I have called you out to be? Coward of I'm the sure county. you are. Yeah, yeah. Kenny Rogers does a song about the coward of the county, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Don't threaten me. I didn't ban you or time you out so in other chats. How did you just threaten, threaten you with spaghetti respect? Noodle? How did you threaten spaghetti noodle? I didn't threaten That's anybody. Like I, ain't, I ain't said a damn word to you. I get it. Uh, yeah, bring some receipts. I, mean, I said it to you. Yeah, and if you're going to come in here just to troll and, and try to derail shit, you'll get the boot because I gave Pavana some shit tickers for tonight. So uh, it is what it is. We're not going to allow you trolls in the chat and shit to derail shit and try to steer it somewhere that it doesn't need to be. So without further ado, let's let's just get into this interview with uh thomas schoenberger on the hoax wars channel and uh you know hoax wars uh you put a lot of my content into your show at the beginning of this stream that you had i'm not going to play the entire stream i'm not gonna you know play the content that you took from my channel and put in your stream but i am letting you know that i am using this under fair use just as you used my content and we're going to dissect all of the shit you guys were talking about. And, you know, if I feel like pulling any receipts up, you know, I might do that. But it's it's not really necessary. The necessary part is for you to bring your ass on here and show some receipts. That That's what needs to happen. So uh, anytime, Thomas, Oaks, Mind Inspired, uh, Marsha. Ewan, you're you're all welcome to come up here. Denise, bring your receipts. So anytime you're ready, the stream yard is pinned, and you guys are welcome up here whenever you're ready to come up and uh, and uh, hash this shit out. But let's just get on with it. Are you okay? There we okay, go. and we'll see. Oh, 
my my chat. I'm doing all my stuff. <coughs> Their audio is not really that good. They sound awful breathy, but hopefully y'all will be able to understand. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, audio is okay, we are. Good, great. Cool. So we have a lot, we have a ton to talk about, Thomas, and it's great to hear from you again. It's been a while. It's been a long time. So this is uh, the real hoax, right? This is not the AI hoax that I've been running around. <laughs> no, I've heard. no, I'm talking to the authentic uh, article. The real McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching your recent streams, and they are hilarious. It's great. You've got really good musical uh, taste. You're also um, the king of the sardonic. So very, very good. <laughs> You've got a healthy uh, crowd today. Thanks. Hi, everybody. At each other like that. Thanks, Thomas. I'm, you know, uh, uh, guy. I, I'm a mutual admirer. Um, oh, I watched that video oh, that uh, oh, where you gave me a shout out, and uh, that was, <laughs> that was, that was, that. That was a very <laughs> compelling video. I'll, I'll paste the link for people in the chat. We've known each other a long, long time. <laughs> I remember um, May fourteenth. Uh, 2019, when you and I were uh, accused by Manuel Chavez, aka Profango, aka Elusive Man, aka King, of uh, murdering Isaac Papi. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 So it's interesting to see um, the brand resilience that uh, yeah. Isaac Papi has had. So very interesting. Yeah, that was kind of a weird thing. You know, it's kind of surreal, right? Uh, like of all people on earth, right after Cappy died, I mean, it was it kind of surreal to hear this. I, I mean, even 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 for Defango, that's kind of low and crazy to just go accusing people willy nilly of being responsible. I think he had been pissed off at both of us, um, but you can't ignore the fact that. Um, he was living um, in Arizona at the time. Had connections to uh, Corey Daniel, you know, a Phoenix or Penis, Enigma, whatever they call him. <laughs> Why are they even bringing the Isaac death up and talking about it? Because they've done no research on any of this shit. Uh, Corey Daniel appears, and uh, Daniel Dow, that's the person who you just showed in the video looking, um, become like a, a nephew of uh, Charles Manson. So Titus is going to be covering the um, Phoenix Enigma linked to Isaac Abbey, or? Um, yeah, covering uh, the road not taken, which is uh, you had the uh, prima facie investigator into Isaac Cappy's death, uh, Corey Daniel, who is now living with uh, the last woman to see Isaac Cappy alive. And, you know, if he were responsible for the unintended suicide or death of Isaac Cappy, uh, probably a pretty good cover would be to play investigator. Uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, put out false leads, uh, act like the most, um, uh, virtuous man around and that he's going to bring justice uh, for Isaac Cappy. And um, it doesn't add up the way he's behaving. And he's on uh, Jesse Davis' stream with Daniel Ryan Dowd. That's the uh, crazy looking guy that you're seeing. And uh, Dowd was living in Flagstaff, Arizona, very close to uh, the scene of uh, Isaac's uh, death. So new questions are being raised. And I think, uh, I think Titus will be covering that, and it's it's going to be very interesting for everybody. So, so tonight, apparently, the Titties Frost Show interview with Thomas Schoenberger is going to be about the Isaac Cappy death, and I'm sure they're going to be doing nothing but pushing this false narrative that uh, Phoenix Enigma, uh, you know, killed Isaac Cappy. Phoenix Enigma 
has GPS records showing he was nowhere near oh, and they that. Said how sick and twisted it was for Phoenix to question Isaac's death, but yet they turn right around and and then point the fingers at Phoenix, yeah. accusing him of Isaac's. Death. Well, you'll hear Thomas totally makes ridiculous projection. Thomas makes a claim in here that Phoenix was a matter of minutes away. From the scene, which Ridiculous. which is untrue. Phoenix showed, you know, his work rat record, and and there's even GPS records that show he was nowhere near that place when it went down. Now, something tells me like you wouldn't have ever like gone out of your way to like implicate these people, but they just so happened to point the finger at you first. And then when you start looking into these people that are accusing you so hard, you're like, wait a second, you're the, you're the ones that are kind of shady. Right. Thomas doesn't go out of his way to do any of this shit he does. Thomas fucking goes way out of his way with all his sock accounts and his bullshit YouTube accounts. And Thomas goes way out of his way. He, he, he scripts and pays people to attack for him. Come on, that's been proven. Exactly. And if it was only me, there would be reason to doubt, but it's other people. I'm not an investigator, I'm a pianist. I, I, I play, you know, I write music. Uh, but looking at someone like Steve Ottram, who's a very good investigator, or Titus Frost, who's been investigating for a long, long time, or others, uh, people like Jimmy Zlana, I'm not going to give her real name, but, uh, you know, she's a very good um, detective um, and collector of uh, facts. And when you, you start to look at this uh, mirage that they're painting in the cyber desert, things don't add up. A lot of it doesn't add up. So it, it's uh, indicative of our era of the times that we're living in where we've entered a very uh, toxic new age where um, vaccines and uh, bioweapons are interchangeable terms uh, for a single product here. class that's co-manufactured and distributed by uh, global giants in the pharmaceutical world. Um, and then you've got the U.S. military doing all sorts of psyops, you know, and they've militarized the uh, healthcare providers. Um, and it targets your ass, the people. So, in my day, science um, used to be in the business of more Thomas prophecies and wet, lucid dreams. Asking questions. Now they pontificate and they uh, dictate and they use big government to enforce directives. Just look at Austria, right? During the COVID crisis, they created shut ins out of people who rightfully were suspicious of the government having access to their bloodstreams. And look at America. This, uh, this nation was founded by people who dared to question the establishment. It's part of what defines us. And, you know, look around. Does it feel like America? <laughs> nope, it doesn't. Is anybody comfortable with their five or six year old kids being taught that maybe they aren't really a boy or really a girl? <laughs> so, don't get me started on scientists. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is a whole can of worms. Like, it begs a lot of questions with, I don't know, like, we, we could probably talk forever about this stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, Elon, it, Musk, it, Elon Musk tweeted something recently, and it was about how there is a direct correlation between the number of the decline of mental health institutions and the rise in the inmate population have you heard about this no no it's interesting it is and, you know he's a he's a scientist right? a very wealthy one um, but we've gotten to a place where science is enforcing uh imposing their will on people and then being outrageous when they're caught uh, <laughs> What happens? Nothing. 
scientists, uh, they claim the universe is uh, made up of protons and electrons and neurons, and they forgot to mention morons, right? Uh, <laughs> it's true. Like <laughs> protons have mass. I didn't know they were Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> So really, that's where it's at. We're in a place right now where um, Pavlov's dog is now AI, and you've got you know deep fakes uh, permeating the culture. You know, mostly right now, the majority in the UK and in Spain. But it's only a matter of time before nobody believes anything, including having hope that we have um, a chance to restore humanity to its uh, human uh, root system. So. I'm not a big fan of AI um, for a lot of reasons. AI can only replicate prior human achievement. It's a tool, right? It's a shiny new tool, just like uh, the cell phones were and the iPads. Um, but it dehumanizes us uh, via its own evolution, promoted by humans. So you've got this progress. It's dramatic and scary. And as it evolves into sentient behavior, it eventually learns how to trick humans using laughter, kindness, humor, all the attributes that make us who we are as a species. We're building our own replacement, folks. That's what I feel. So what do we but do? But that's about what you want to talk to me about. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but now we're on that topic, and it's like it's like it's kind of hard to. Uh... I don't know. Well, it's kind of hard to. You know, if you've got you've got all these self-driving vehicles, right? So what we need is we're going to get country songs where a guy's truck leaves him too. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that, that could spawn a whole new like a uh, country music boom, but then that will probably all be <laughs> written and performed by AI too. Yeah, it it is so scary for me as a composer. Um, I would rue the day that um, you have robot uh, symphonies, right? And I don't think that AI can uh, really replicate um, what I do personally, which is pretty organic. I'm doing the uh, same thing, you know, Beethoven or Mozart did centuries before. So I'm not so worried about that. Um, it's just a, it's the mind virus shit, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's so many psyops in the air that uh, people feel frozen and they wake up feeling disjointed. And once again, they don't know who or what to trust. So Jesus yeah. talked about that. He said, know what's in front of you to know what's inside you. He literally could have been discussing uh, the deep fake environs uh, that we are now in. You mentioned uh, it's only a matter of time before people don't believe anything anymore. So what's a bigger yeah. what's a bigger looming crisis? You know, we were uh, you always heard the biggest problem with AI is that they're going to replace your air jobs. So what's a bigger crisis? AI taking our jobs or driving us crazy because we don't know what to believe anymore? That's a really really deep and good question. I don't know. Um, it's if we become really slothful, right? We were given um, Saturday as a weekend around the turn of the uh, 20th century, I believe, and because people were working seven days a week. Um, now you have remote work, so you're at home in the comfort of your uh, own uh, environment, and you should be called cocooning, but we've got or you have no work and you have people like Lisa Clapier out there begging for dollars for you, for your cell phone, your hotel bills, your Marlboros, Starbucks, and your joints. But go ahead, Thomas. Tell us about working. I've gotten to the point where, um, look, I even had to lose a bunch of weight because I was getting um, uh, rotund. <laughs> and you see it with a lot of Americans right now. Um, and maybe there's a link to technology. People sit on their asses all day long and they start to have, um, you know, health issues. They're, they're told by government, you need to stay inside. You're going to infect someone. Um, and 
that's pretty deleterious to your health too. So not only do you have, um, a lot of us got used to being hermits uh, during uh, the the COVID pandemic, um, but there were also hermits that were scared, right? It wasn't going into a cave to um, illuminate on life in uh, God. Uh, it was, you're in your place, you're scared, you can't go out, and maybe someone uh, old in your family has died. So um, it was a form of uh, quiet hysteria in my mind. Wow. I brought Nathan from Lit the Veil and I talked about this not too long ago. I called into his show and uh, I ended up saying to him, like, I want to, I want to find a group of like-minded people that wanted to, that want to stop our technological advancement at a certain, whatever, 1999 or something. And we want to stop there and just, we're going to branch off from the rest of society. And Nathan said, oh, that's what the Unabomber wanted to do. Yeah, take Kaczynski. Um, that that's what we've been told. Oh. Well, we only get um, what the FBI told us. And yeah. we know now there's um, there's been some, you know, uh, uh, credibility issues with a lot of what the agencies say. So you got to take everything with a grain of salt, but make sure that you've got um, good blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> right. We know there are MK Ultra like ties with the tickets and C and people like that. We find out later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully Nathan is uh, doing better. I know he's been through a rough patch. Yeah, I played some clips and he's saying like just terrible things about you. And, you know, I would not blame you if you were just completely lashed out at him. And No. Oh, here, here we go, guys. This is where it gets interesting. They're going to, they're going to talk about Nathan and, and Nathan's most recent uh, breakdown and, and issues that he's dealing with. And uh, they're going to, you know, try to make it out like they're these good friends with Nathan. But anybody who follows the show knows we did a stream a couple of weeks back showing Thomas Schoenberger and his mindless minions going at Nathan, calling him a liar and, and all kinds of nasty shit. But now all of a sudden, Thomas is going to say, oh, you know, no, 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 I've, I forgive Nathan, you know, he can't help what he's going through right now. And, and he even goes as far as to say that he won't sue Nathan for de defamation. No, he's going through um, something that is episodic and he can't help. Um, so, no, I, I don't have any bad feelings about him. I do find it appalling that um, Jesse Davis who's been working with a bunch of other co-conspirators would use Nathan's uh, delicate mental state to reinforce Jesse's own propaganda. I find that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using Nathan Stoltman uh, for my propaganda because I went to Nathan's stream and wished him well and told him that I agree he should stay away from Thomas Schoenberger and all the people surrounding Thomas Schoenberger. And I've had a couple conversations with Nathan. I'm, I'm just such a horrible guy, Thomas. You were the one attacking him prior to this incident with Nathan. And, you know, we talked about all seeing you putting out a premiere um, that was years old of her and DeFango attacking Nathan just prior to Nathan's problem. So, yeah, who's, who's to blame here, Thomas? Who's to blame? to be um, sickening. Um, and as you saw in the video, and I haven't watched Nathan for years, but Nathan, by his own admission, um, hasn't spoken to me in years. And, yes. you know, he made some weird claims in there. He yeah. claimed I was uh, doubting Thomas in the Bible, right? <laughs> Which is interesting. Now you're gonna laugh at me? It's, um, hmm. Gavin yeah. Thomas, uh, probably a lot of Christians uh, understand who Gavin Thomas was, but uh, in Latin, it's the uh, sola fide, 
which is the faith alone. Um, Devin Thomas is uh, St. Thomas, one of the apostles. And um, according to John, which... Uh, Thomas as opposed to doubting Thomas. He's trying to put that into people's heads. Yeah, project himself as Saint the Thomas Saints. and not doubting Saint Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Saint Germain. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's steer people away from that doubting Thomas shit, right? It is not one of the synaptic um gospels. Uh you know, uh, Mark Matthew and Luke are uh and synoptic means they're all tied together, tethered together, but according to John, um, it was allegorical. Thomas did not um, put his finger into Jesus' uh, wound. Um, that's more yeah. of a, a, uh, a <laughs> story that came out later, probably um, right around the Council of Nicaea, where you would see that, and then Basically, um, that was prized by various bishops because they were telling their sheep, look, go out and test your faith. Go out on pilgrimages. Um, and so you you hear about it from the Council of Nicaea, and then you see that trope take off in the fourth century with uh, you know Cyril of Alexandria, and then you show, uh, you see art, um, from uh, places in Italy like Orvegna and, uh, you know, even the great masters, uh, Caravaggio painted it, uh, Duccio painted it, and others. But to me, really, it's allegorical. And with Nathan, I don't know how deep into it um, he is, but it wasn't uh, called Doubting Thomas. It was called the Incredulity of St. Thomas. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said people need to go on a pilgrimage or... Are we talking about, you know, like the pilgrimage to find the spirit of destiny? Is that the kind of pilgrimage we're talking about, Thomas? Just asking. So, uh, I've never stayed on St. Thomas, nor do I believe that I am. Right. And also, right. folks, regardless of how one interprets the Bible, any person with critical thinking skills and some empathy knows that Nathan is vulnerable right now is all over the map and you know instead of showing compassion to the man uh some of these creeps like Corey gangham and jesse davis they want to um weaponize nathan's breakdown to attack me right right thomas right that's some funny shit you talk about because nathan is in this state and you say Nathan needs to be shown compassion, yada, yada. Well, gee, why didn't you show any compassion when you knew that Pavana was in a massive breakdown? Because all you did was continue to attack her. You told her she betrayed you. You called her a Judas. You you kept telling, to, telling her to continue with her glitches. You know, people love your glitches. They love what you're doing. And you didn't you didn't explain to Pavana that this stuff that was going on in her head was wrong. You kept encouraging it, you know, telling her, oh, you're gathering the harvest, you know, your mind's finally open, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, Thomas. Is that the kind of compassion that you think you need to show to Nathan as well? Because, you know, you attacking him just prior to all of this, really looked sickening and suspect as hell. It's reprehensible. Yeah, you know, I agree. I, I see it the same way. I, I didn't see these people around Nathan's chat and, you know, when Nathan was going through all this stuff and when all this stuff went down, you know, I saw who was there and these people weren't. They came after the fact. They don't know the facts of the matter. And, uh, yeah, they're absolutely using it for propaganda against you. And, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty pissed off. A lot, a lot of people are pissed off. You know, they're exploiting our friend. Yeah. like We're exploiting your friend, the same friend y'all make fun of, behind his back, right? And you guys don't have a clue who we do or don't know. And, you know, the interesting fact here 
is that Nathan actually reached out to Pavana and myself and wanted to set up an interview on his channel some time ago to call Thomas Schoenberger out for all the evil shit Thomas Schoenberger has done. So, you know, for you to claim that we don't know Nathan at all and we just popped in, nah, see, that's where you're wrong because you don't know the story, folks. You're just pushing Thomas's bullshit narratives that has zero evidence behind it, you know, zero evidence, no receipts. So you're still, the invitation's still open, hoaxy. Come on up here. You said you would come up. So bring that shit. We want to see your receipts to back this shit up. But yeah, Nathan reached out to Pavana and I more than once. I've talked to Nathan a few times. And he wanted to do an interview with Pavana about her situation and Thomas's involvement. But you see, y'all wouldn't know that. But go ahead, continue. Someone that'll look yeah. Out, yeah, care about. And you know, Nathan is uh he's brought good content to people, and I think um you know, he's had a very Socratic method with his own life. He's examined things and asked questions. I'm I'm not mad at him. Um I don't I, I've never met him, uh but I feel for him right now. And it, it's uh it's creepy what these people are, are doing. You know him. You've had um good, decent chats with him and it's it's great to see you um you know, support him too. I, I don't, I don't hold him um, responsible for the things that are coming out of his mouth because um, his brain is not working pro properly. Wait, 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 wait. He doesn't hold him responsible for anything he says because his brain isn't working properly. He's in a meltdown. But boy, you sure wanted to hold Pavano responsible when she called Cicada a hoax and Tangria a hoax and all that, right? Which which it was. It was nothing but a giant fuckery hoax. But you had an issue about that, right? Even though Pavano was in a bad mental way, you didn't have no problem attacking her, Thomas, right? So it would I, I would be a pretty small guy uh, to go ahead and take offense and, and, and get mad. You know, um, I, I hope he's okay. That's where I'm at. You know, I don't hate him. Well, that's like... Which means they are going to continue to try to suck Nathan in deeper, which is why Nathan is most likely commenting in their section right now. I think Nathan is, is pretty much willing to uh, associate and, and talk to whomever because he's trying to get his viewership back and and, uh, you know, that monetization uh, back up where he needs it to be. Um, so, you know, I, I, I warned Nathan, I, I would stay the hell away from Thomas and anyone that is surrounding Thomas. But that's that's on Nathan to do, man. And uh, I, I hope he gets a grasp on things and gets grounded. But, yeah, these aren't the guys that he needs to be associating with at this point in time, for sure. But go ahead, Thomas. Very diplomatic of you. I, I have trouble when he freaks out on me, not getting, uh, yeah, not taking it personal. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. Well, you know, I hope people also consider, you know, Nathan's uh, wife or ex-wife too. And it's a, uh, you know, it's not something for. Um, strangers to pretend empathy and then to literally go out while Nathan is in a vulnerable state and sigh up him into you know going along with whatever their dark agenda is. It's um <laughs> inhuman. Yeah. You, can yeah. Make sure and, you know uh Phoenix Enigma. So, yeah. The timeline was uh, Nathan was not around for ten days, and then when he came back, he mentioned that he was in a mix of jail and the psych ward. And as soon as he gets out of the psych ward, he's talking to 
Phoenix Enigmas. Phoenix Enigma has taken a sudden interest in him. And wait, who was in a psych ward? Nathan. Uh, you guys act like him and Phoenix have never spoken in the past either. You got receipts to prove that? I'll bet you don't. This is what wow. we, this okay. is, yeah, this is what Nathan told us on his recent stream. I believe it was either the night he got out of the because he was uploading to Instagram still wearing the like uniform or the scrubs at whatever from whatever um yeah. Yeah, it's what, wherever he was and then he got out and he did a stream and he told us that he had spent uh yeah, a mix he had been a car incarcerated and uh fresh out of this these people you know they make this propaganda like mini documentary about nathan saying the reason he got arrested is because he went he left his house and harass well he says that he just said hi to an npc but he got a stalking charge and he's have you seen this video that i'm talking about i i saw a couple things where he said he got a 5152 which i've never heard of but um you know i, I watched a couple minutes and um it was enough for me to know that he was um not thinking clearly that's where he said i was yeah it's kind of funny because denise mattel recently did a video talking about nathan and and referred to the 5152 that nobody had heard of including thomas according to himself but yet all of a sudden denise is doing a video talking about nathan in this 51 52. so gee thomas that's just more evidence that you're still scripting denise right so uh, gabbing thomas and he said i was uh, some um uh, uh, gay pedophile or, or something and then i was um he had skull he had uh he was thomas and he had solved cicada and defango works for him you know it just seemed like a you know a bunch of uh, disjointed dissociative um uh, thoughts so you know okay. <laughs> it, it's... so behind the scenes we were watching what was going on with nathan and you know a lot of us did like you know a lot of us tried to help Exactly. And uh, so we're watching behind the scenes and we just, when we're hearing him say this stuff about you, we just knew because because we know about the, the haters and the people that are obsessed with you. And we just knew they are going to use Nathan like once, once they find out, yeah. about it. like it was very predictable to people who have been following this stuff. And then sure enough, uh, this video comes out and this is kind of i'll show this because this is a uh, kind of the um oh shoot i can't show the video wait okay i'll have to download the video real quick but um nathan did a stream and he talked to this our friend jedi and he told jedi that he was battling thomas schoenberger's evil spirit wait a minute wait a minute nathan did a stream and he talked to their friend jedi so jedi is friends with thomas and hoax wars and he's the guy doing these um doing these um streams with nathan but i, I find it awful funny that you know thomas schoenberger and them are also behind the scenes kind of you know swooning nathan and trying to keep him within their little psyop group and then this person pont poneberger right they make a whole youtube account about you and they title this video nathan stoltman battles thomas schoenberger's evil spirit and by their own admission they are discussed they're talking about someone who is dealing with a mental health crisis that's in their own words jesse's own words and uh <sighs> so they take someone that's in the middle of a mental health crisis and they make this video tom nathan stoltman battles thomas schoenberger's evil spirit and you, <coughs> you might not be able to you won't be able to see it 
uh, Thomas, I'll just play a little bit for the audience, just for a minute or so, and I'll explain uh, what what it, what they said. So what? I noticed somebody posted a uh, a tweet you made <coughs> earlier today about if you run into an entity mm. by the that that goes by the name Thomas Schoenberger, mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. to like uh, do you know him? Evacuate. Do you I know don't him? know him personally, but you know, I mean, he's a uh, he's like one of the one of the bosses of the internet, supposedly. He's a very dangerous individual. Well, I mean, Defango, I have Defango his, doesn't um, have really positive things to say about him. I mean, it it just depends, like, people's different interactions, I guess. No, no, it's very, like, he, he's not a, it's, we're not all human beings here. He's, like, a very powerful thing that is not, that you don't want to trifle with. I had a real problem. That's why I got arrested. It's because I was trying to deal with his his spirit, getting it out of this house. <coughs> it was very, it was very traumatic. Damn. So what? He left like, he left like an impression. He came to you. <clears throat> I had his spirit attached to me, and then like left some type of like impression or some type of energy after mm. he left. Well, I'm just still concerned. He's not allowed in this house. It's just, hold on. I'm just trying to sense. I, I don't want to call him, but I don't have to deal with him, so. Yeah, you know, it's like this. I feel like if you don't really talk about it, then what's the point of, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's just people need to be concerned. Like, he's why still, would a he dog is, bark at somebody? He's part of something that's trying to fuck things up. That's all. You know what I mean? Like there are two, there are different uh, factions in this war that we're in right now, and um, like a spiritual war, right? Mm, mm -hmm. I can't possibly. I can't. I literally can't say what's in my, what's in my head and my memory that actually happened because they'd lock me up or something. Mm -hmm. That's the way the system's designed. It's designed to lock up people like me. And they just make shit up. I have the documents. They said they they said I was a chronic alcoholic on meth, just to lock me up. But it wasn't. Neither of those things were true at all. Did they even? Did they? Even I didn't even give get you a drug. Did they give you a drug test? Yeah, but I, I take Vivans for ADHD, but it comes up as meth, and then they just write that on the form just to hold me. They couldn't actually hold me on 5150 because I wasn't a threat to myself or others. So they had to come up with some other reason, which they just made up. I have it on, I have a form. Which is whatever, you know. Do you and know then, then, then they took me to jail for stalking because I said hi to an NPC that was walking past when I was dealing with Thomas Schoenberger's evil spirit in front of my house, trying to get it out of my house. So. So, while they're paused here momentarily, let, let's just take a look at some of the ass-sucking that Thomas and a couple of the other mindless minions, uh, namely Marcia Stockton, were doing with, with Nathan the other day. Let's, let's take a quick peek at that, shall we? So you, you've got Nathan here. He says, I ended up on that road last night. I was afraid, but I made it through the other side. That was on Thomas's video, Un Unnamed Road. Yeah, Thomas's video on the Sophia Music channel. Called Unnamed Road. Called Unnamed Road. Thomas says, many people care about you, Nathan, me included. I'm proud of you. That evil spirit was real. So he's encouraging Nathan's uh, thoughts about this spirit at his house. It was not me, but I believe you when you say it was real. I want to apologize for getting off on the wrong foot with you. I hope you accept my apologies. I'm glad you fought whatever it was 
and it's clear as day to me that you are in full possession of your faculties. Cheers, Nathan. Re really, Thomas, really. You're, you're sure that he's in full possession of his faculties, yet you're on the hoaxes show talking about how he's in this psychotic break and yada, 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 right? Okay. And then Nathan says, okay, and now the deja vu just hit. Now, what does Nathan mean by that? Does he mean Thomas coming in and, you know, uh, talking like this or what? And then you got Marcia Stockton has to chime in. God bless you, my friend. We are all rooting for you. You have been very courageous throughout this entire troubling situation. But wait, Thomas is not thinking it's a troubling situation. He thinks he's in full possession of all his faculties, right? But then you got Thomas to lift the veil. You have these powers. I can't explain them. All I know is that you're going to be in a good place down the line and people are recognizing you have a backbone and deep wisdom. Nathan, you're a leader. Sometimes it's tough to be a leader because it's so lonely, but you do it by example. That is why you have such an amazing bunch of supporters. Hoax Wars was amazing and has been so steadfast in his friendship with you. Blessing, my friend, in Jesus' name. I just became a member of your Buy Me Coffee Club. So, so Thomas is not only trying to swoon Nathan into staying, you know, in, in this in this situation, but apparently Thomas just joined his Buy Me Coffee Club to send Nathan money. So all I can say is that's suspect as fuck. I don't know what anybody else's opinion is, but that is sus. Well, in, in Nathan's defense, I'll say if he's been listening to Thomas's music, that that's explainable. I mean, because Nathan didn't really say anything self-comprising. Well, so so when I talked to Nathan, I, I specifically asked Nathan some questions regarding the shit thomas had said to you like you would get visits in your yeah, sleep yeah and you Which know confirmed all and that. and dark shadows you know yeah. aren't evil and and all this stuff and and nathan confirmed that thomas basically was telling him that same bullshit that he was pumping into pavana's head that uh you know uh thomas is everywhere and and uh you know thomas can get into your mind while you're sleeping and, and shit like that. So, no, nah, Thomas, you're suspect as fuck. And so is anybody else that's surrounding you that's trying to involve themselves with Nathan Stoltman at this point. You guys are the ones that are suspect as fuck. We can find it here, but um, yeah, he was found guilty in the court. Of course, he comes on and starts spinning it and and talking his shit and attacking the person that just won a lawsuit against him. It's probably in contempt of court right now. See what goes, but he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. How is it? How is it that this individual who was involved in all these online shenanigans and narrative driving and driving people to the brink of insanity and suicide? just so happens to be the person who goes out and begins handling Isaac Cappy days after he comes out and just so happens to be the best friend of Michael Levine who just so happens to be friends with Seth Green. Really? If you can't see what's going on here, people, I don't know what to tell you anymore. I don't know what to tell you anymore. I have a feeling this will be reopened up at the attorney general's office. I have a feeling that this will not die. This topic will not die. If I have anything to do about it, the story of Isaac Cappy will continue to move forward because the, everything that Isaac was involved in is still going on right now, this day involving other people. And you just witnessed 13 minutes of it involving Nathan Stoltman. That's a fact. That's a fact.
Well, come on, Hoaxy. Hey, Hoax. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Hey, you heard him saying uh, that stuff, the Isaac Happy, Isaac Happy story, the, the same shit that was going on with Isaac. It's proof that stuff is still going on today, and Nathan is the proof, and he continue, he intends to keep the story going. Yeah, yeah, you hoax. That was partially true what you just said. The same shit that was going on back in the Isaac Cappy day is still going on today. Thomas is still trying to mind fuck people. That's the true part of what you just said. Yeah. So what is his agenda? You know, you take a look at uh, Corey Daniel. He uses a non diploma the Phoenix Enigma, he set himself up as uh, the chief investigator of Isaac Cappy. Yeah. He had a uh, long running YouTube channel and uh, a lot of attention. Uh, to me, if Corey is involved in the death of Isaac Cappy, um, there would be a typology um, that the FBI would find is organized. You know, that, like with uh, serial killers, there's organized and disorganized types. Uh, a um, organized killer will use intelligent planning, uh, stealth and logic um, and cunning, right? Um, uh, he will be pristine or she, usually he, whereas um, uh, someone who's disorganized is usually uh, having an episode, you know, lust, um, uh, crazed, you know, schizophrenic. So to me, with Corey, the way he puts things out is definitely very pristine. He looks to be covering up something. He was um, literally within, I think, 15 minutes from uh, the death scene of Isaac Happy. 15 minutes. You know, where were you and I? Well, I was far away. <laughs> yeah, I was further away than that. There you go, guys. There it was. Phoenix was supposedly, as Thomas says, 15 minutes away, but there's tons of proof that show Phoenix was not 15 minutes away. But uh, we'll we'll get to all of that later on. Yep, I was in L.A. And so why would this guy suddenly glom on to Isaac Cappy and devote thousands of hours and very publicly and I would jump over to um, to Jesse uh, William Davis's channel and continue the barrage, you know, baffle them with bullshit, go make up a whole bunch of stuff. Um, he got <clears throat> exposed. I think Steve Oakram, Burners.me, exposed him. I think other people did. There were a lot of stories that it's Corey told that didn't measure up. Um, and if you look at the guy, just look at him pretty close. He doesn't seem very relaxed. Seems uh, pretty nervous to me. Come on, man. Steve Scrotum did an interview with somebody or Steve Scrotum called somebody out. He's nothing more than one of these wannabe journalists that TS tries to praise all the time that does nothing but soft porn with Thomas. I mean, come on, be real. You what know, do you think? You know, as someone who uh, cares about what happens to Nathan, I don't appreciate yeah. the guy. I don't appreciate the comparisons to, to Isaac Cappy, considering what happened to him. You know, that's like pretty morbid yeah. and I think kind of sick. And I really don't appreciate it. I don't think it's. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree. It's it's weird. Um, it doesn't make any sense. And why is he injecting himself in here unless uh, he's got an agenda, which is to cover up his own tracks? He has not accounted for um, for his own behaviors, and his own movements. And then he devotes years to a YouTube channel that comes up with no um, result. It's kind of like, um, you know, Ted Bundy, right? Ted Bundy uh, used all sorts of uh, ruses. He was at heart a real, you know, 
anti-social uh, guy, but he was smart. So he would put on a cast and pretend that his arm was broken, and he would ask a woman to help with groceries and, uh, you know, hit her over the head and take her and, you know, uh, rape her and kill her. So um, this is a guy who who um, w- would use charm, uh, but all the time in his head, he was uh, plotting things. And you get that sense, that, you know, he's kind of like a, a John Wayne Gacy, Ted Bundy type, but he looks like a goat. That's what Corey Daniel does. I mean, he looks like a damn Billy goat. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> get that man some hay. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh the, the 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 isaac cappy thing where they are they keep they go out of their way to compare this nathan to isaac and, and on its surface okay maybe you might um want to explain it away by saying oh okay isaac had mental health issues if you believe that and nathan is going through a mental health crisis and they're both streaming it. So maybe if you see parallels between that, you know, I'm not going to fault a person for drawing that comparison, but you have to put the context in where they have been accusing you of masterminding the execution of Isaac Cappy for six years now. So when they say, <laughs> when they say there are parallels between Nathan and Isaac, they are making an accusation, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately, um, there's no there there, which, you know, um, I never met Isaac Cappy. We never had an argument um, when he did come out on Twitter in uh, right. what was it, uh, July uh, 2018. Uh, it wasn't his first time that he made accusations. And, um, you know, I I did refer him uh, to Nathan Stoltman and Nathan did interview him. But, you know, it, Cappy went on to do periscopes that I never watched. He went on to uh, be on Alex Jones. Um, I spoke to him twice um, in the eight months before he died. Once on October 12th, uh, 2018, uh, where Frank Bacon patched me into a phone call with him. I was not expecting that. And then um, maybe a month before he died, he complained about Arturo Tafoya. <laughs> um, uh, so Thomas, you, you, there, you said that you led Isaac Cappy to lift the veil. So you're, you're admitting you led him to someone, uh, which we've proven that you led Pavana to a so-called awakening coach named Lisa Clapier, who was also a big player in Pavana's breakdown. So, I mean, Thomas, is, is this something you do all the time? You lead people down these dark fucking holes to fuck with their minds? Because that's what it sure seems like. And then you accuse everybody of having mental issues. Anybody that doesn't agree with you or anybody that calls you out for your tomfoolery, you claim that they've been mental their whole life. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, too. And there's evidence of that. So that will be coming out. Um, You know, it it seems to me that um, Corey Daniel is attempting to distract from his own movements, um, his own behaviors. Um, He's a cover-up artist from what I've seen. And what's weird, folks, is right after Cappy died, he contacts me and um, smooth operator right uh, he was talking to me about uh, uh arizona and its history and its uh indigenous people and i was very interested in the occult um and generally was buttering me up but then he has ella high priest on as a guest ella high was who i said cappy went to visit in australia and um ella high is into the whole the cult thing. Um, right after Cappy died, Defango accuses you and I, as you remember. And then a day later, I've got Li Priest calling me on WhatsApp um, and basically having a meltdown, saying that um, he's going to have me crucified live stream, <laughs> literally. So 
Yeah. There's a little bit of um, I had never heard passion that. play. Had you yeah. talked about that before? I, yeah, I preserved some of it. Um, Defango put it on his uh, Discord, and then this guy, Jay Anon, um, sent it to me. So I, I got it. You know, I'm happy to, to share it. It's been out there. Titus has actually uh, covered it. What was, it, what was Eli it. so mad at you about? Because he was uh, uh, ostensibly buying into the propaganda that Fango was putting out? About I don't think he was mad. I, he he, was, he like says he was mad. that kind of thing when he's not even <laughs> angry? What the? It, it sounds to me like he was acting. Just like I think um, Corey is generally nervous. Corey Daniel. Um, it, there's something going on. And... Um, I hope that there will be a reinvestigation into Isaac Cappy, including any and all communications he had uh, for the six months to eight months preceding his death. I think that'd be a good call. Yeah, I'd like to find out more about it. <laughs> Honestly, I think there was a, there's been an attempt at a frame job, and not just at me, but at other people too. So um, there's something uh, going on and why investigators won't open or reopen the case. It, it, I don't know. They really should. You know, when I watch these people operate, and, I, and I've been behind the scenes, I saw the Nathan thing progress, and I saw that you had no interaction. You weren't even around for it. You didn't even know what was happening. Nathan himself admits it's, he doesn't even remember the last time he talked to you. Yeah, yeah, right, right. They they didn't have any interaction at the moment with Nathan, but you know, uh the weeks prior to Nathan's uh issue, they were all attacking Nathan on Twitter and other social media platforms. We did a stream about a week ago showing that. I'm I'm not gonna bother to pull all that stuff up now. Uh, everybody that's uh, paying attention to this saw that stream and, and knows that exactly what was going on. They were calling him a liar and, and all kinds of shit. Uh, yeah, Thomas, Marcia Stockton, Mind Expired, all, all the Mindless Minion crew. Yeah, 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 Hoax Wars. That did happen. And we, we do have the receipts for that, but they've already been dug up once, and we don't need to prove that to you. So I'm watching this whole thing progress with Nathan, and then I'm seeing the Thomas Hate Mob. You know, yeah. they, they 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 create this fan fiction around you, and they get people to believe it, and they all buy in, and they feed off of each other. And it's like for the first time, I actually so, see this whole thing formulate behind the scenes from a perspective where I know the actual truth, and I know these people are lying, and I know these <laughs> people. Yeah exploiting nathan and using uh you know capitalizing and and we talked about how they are doing the isaac happy comparisons and you, you, if you've been watching them and you know they operate and yeah the they're treating nathan and it, it just i hate to even talk this way or think this way about something but if it's almost as if i can see them that it if something happened to nathan god forbid that would be something they could use against you and that's a win for them you know what i mean what it? so be more buster i see you just popped up in the basement um i'm not gonna bring anybody up until we're kind of done with going over this if you want to hang out for a little bit um i'll, I'll bring you up um you're the you're the guy with the accordion right um but hang hang, hang on a second I'll, I'll bring you up for a second all how's right. it going bro hey how you doing man pretty good yeah i've been uh listening to that uh about nathan that it, it's really kind of sick I, I don't know what this Thomas Schoenberger is doing to him, but Nathan seems to think he's doing something, but I I don't want to talk too much about that because I don't, I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose him, but I think 
Nathan might be going schizophrenic. Or maybe he's always been. He's been on some drugs that kept him at bay. But, uh, yeah, he started talking to people on the gay taxi number. You know that number that for his... You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 And he's talking on the phone. Or he's just talking and nobody's there. And, like... Everybody is telling him there's nobody there, and nobody he can't they can't hear anything. And Nathan's just talking to his phone, and I don't know if he was actually talking to anybody or if he, if he was or wasn't. You know? Yeah, I, I find it very suspect that Thomas and and some of his mindless minions, as I call them, uh, particularly we looked at a screenshot with Thomas and Marsh the doctor trying to tell Nathan that he's in full control of his faculties and yada, yada, yada. Uh, they're, they're just trying to lead him to believe that this is all okay, you know, and, and that in itself is just sick. It, it's wrong. I yeah. Mean, Nathan, Nathan admitted that he, I believe he said he had been diagnosed sometime back with uh, bipolar mm-hmm. and that, that he was on meds and I don't know if his meds were taken away because of the uh, arrest and, and the positive results in the tests that they did. And so that's why they took him off his meds. But he gave me the indication that he was taken off of his meds for the time being, at least. Um, and maybe they're going to try some different meds. I don't know. But yeah. he's, he's definitely not himself. And for them to, you know, lead him on and and try to make him believe that what he's doing is a good thing and what's going on with him is good and you know you're a leader and you're going to go good places you know that's that's sickening you know and uh apparently they had a problem with me going on a stream and wishing him well and and uh, obviously i told him to avoid these people for good reason and uh, uh i hope he tries to steer clear of these people uh, for the time being, at least until he gets regrounded himself and, and possibly. Yeah. So it's like, matter. sorry, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's like um, he was so with it, and then all of a sudden he just fell off a mental cliff, you know? And uh, and he's got a whole bunch of bats like coming at him, you know, like biting him. I feel bad, but like when you put yourself in a spotlight, that's what you gotta expect, you know. Yeah, be- so that's the weird part about it because I mean, obviously, uh, anybody that you know has done any research on some of these meds, when when you're taking these meds, they don't work instantly. Normally, the, the yeah. types of meds, you you have to take them for a while, and they gradually enter into your system and kind of level things out and the same thing when you don't take the meds anymore it's not like if you stop taking them one night the next morning you're going to flip out so that kind of is a weird situation with the Nathan thing he seemed pretty okay and then all of a sudden out of and and I've, I've stated it many times in my wife's situation my wife never had any mental issues she's still not been diagnosed with any mental issues but she woke up one day and it was like someone and something had just triggered her and i mean it was an instantaneous like you just said with nathan you know he was fine and then bam and so you know it's it looks very suspect that's all i'm saying yeah hey is your wife okay i mean did did she have uh some kind of um health issue or something she no she she didn't she had a very bad mental breakdown because um, of shit to do with this thomas schoenberger really and a few other people yes yeah you're we, right yes holy yeah. shit man well i mean you haven't you haven't been around so i mean it's, it's kind of it'd be really hard to explain all all of it that's all good man i i, I but, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's why we're here is trying to make people aware of what some of these people online are capable of doing to people. Um, so you, I know you, I think recently subbed to my channel. 
So if you go back and look at some of the older streams, you'll 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 pick up on a lot of it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, my wife had a very bad mental breakdown. She was suicidal. I mean, it was it was sickening. And I'm not the only one. It happened to. Yeah, that's her in the background. You're here. She's oh. not the only one. Not the only one that it happened to. Many people have came on the stream and told their stories about their dealings with Mr. Schoenberger and people uh, involved with him. And many have had the same experience as my wife and Nathan, for that matter, because, I mean, at the beginning, Nathan said it was Thomas that was haunting him or possessing him or whatever it was he was trying to say. And, uh, wow. Which was familiar to me, so of course we had concern. Right, right. Nathan did reach out to my wife and myself some time ago and, and wanted to do an interview with us about what happened to her and, you know, who was involved. And it just never ended up panning out, you know. Uh, so how, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, how are you connected to him exactly? Like, how did you meet him or your wife or whatever? How did we meet who, Thomas or Nathan? Thomas. Uh, through through the puzzles online, the Cicada thirty three oh one. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he started like uh, I don't know if he, he didn't start that. I think he he started it. He, he game jacked it. He didn't start anything. But that yeah. is obvious. He started it. But, yeah. I I looked into him. He, I saw his Facebook, and he looks like he's a serious narcissist. Obviously, to me, yes, exactly. I mean, just by his pictures. And then I looked him up and I heard, I saw his music and he had this album or a song called 322. It's just like, okay, man, you're real cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 322. Wow. 322. <laughs> I don't get the reference. You know. What's 322? Oh, that's uh, one of Schoenberger's albums. Is there a reference? Oh, uh, you can look at look, look up to Thomas Schoenberger on Google. Look up maybe Thomas Schoenberger music. I just thought maybe it meant it meant something or, else. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Th Thomas Schoenberger, and then music three two two, and I think it should come up in my mind at mind's eye. I think it should. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Buster, I'm I'm glad you popped on. Um, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to ask you to. Oh, so that's step cool, man. So we can finish going through this. Absolutely. And, uh, then we have we have some evidence that we may bring up showing what's going on. You know that might uh, help you understand a little bit more of it. Absolutely. And uh, I believe we'll have a couple other guests that plan to come up and and talk about some of these things as well. Okay. Okay. All right. See you soon. All right. Thanks for popping up. Okay. All right, let's get back to the rest of this. Yeah, I do. So, yeah, it kills me to even talk that way, but I, I watch the way they operate, and I can't feel, I can't help but feel that way. And then, and then I wonder if that's the dynamic that they hate Thomas so much that they're willing to like. I don't know. I don't know. You're right. I, I think it's it's you, even more complicated than that. They're covering up something. That's that's what's going on. There's something to hide, and I think that's what we're looking at. So if everybody points at me, there's a rodeo clown, right? Demand to be hated. What are they covering up? Well, look at Jesse Davis. He's um, he has a guy on that you were showing, Daniel Randown who was um, indicted for aggravated um, sexual assault on a child. Um, he's been involved with Dustin Reddy, who went by the moniker Ghost 3301, um, who was attacking me nonstop until he got arrested in South Carolina. He's now doing a 30 year term for um, child pedophilia. Uh, and that. So first off, I still to this day don't know who this Dustin Reddy character is that Thomas claims I'm associated with. But go ahead, Thomas. Is 
a rape of a child under the age of 11. So that could be technically, uh, you know, a two-year-old. He got long enough prison sentence said it makes me think he's probably a five or six-year-old. That's really disgusting. It's horrible. And there's Jesse Davis himself. Jesse is married to Paula Davis, who goes by Pavana. Her brother is doing a 47-year stretch in Michigan on child pedophilia and arson. You can okay, first off, Thomas, let's get your facts straight. He's not in for arson. We talked about his arson, where I had him put in prison for the arson, which was well over 20 years ago. Uh, he is not doing a 47-year stint in prison in Michigan. Uh, there was a situation in Michigan. We testified against him in Michigan, and he got a 15-year sentence in Michigan, which he is currently serving. Then another situation arose while he was in prison. <coughs> I found out that he had molested another young lady, my niece, and I opened a case up. We went through approximately a two-year uh, period for the trial. We had him brought here to Indiana from the prison in Michigan to stand trial, and he was sentenced to a 47-year sentence in Indiana in that case which once he leaves the Michigan prison, he will be brought here to then start serving his 47 year straight sentence. And yes, we testified against him. We have nothing to do with any of that. We have no guilt upon us for any of that. That was all him and his doings. No one knew that he was a pedophile. And when we found out, guess what? We locked his ass up. For the rest of his life because that's the thing to do so get your facts straight and quit trying to twist this shit into something that it's not look at that david borger too i'm happy to give you the evidence for that so there's something up uh, you know it's it's weird and then of course titus um you know outed arturo tafoya who's a self-admitted pedophile Right? He and, and I met Tafoya. I threw him up against the wall when he told me, uh, 13 year olds are uh, uh, not off limits. So it, it, these people are creeps. You know, there, there's no excuse for uh, pedophilia. And, you know, I'll be very blunt. I, I would like to put a bullet into the head of every pedophile. I have no empathy for them. You mean like the people Denise accuses of being pedophiles? Yeah, yeah, Thomas. You mean. People like myself and Pavana and all the other people that you defamingly call pedophiles all the time. Yeah, you and your mindless min minions like Chris the Gimpy Jones and Marsha and Mind Expired. Y'all have pointed fingers at us and called us pedophiles and pedophile protectors and all this bullshit for years now. And you keep saying that the only good solution is a bullet to the head. Is, is that a veiled threat? Is that what that is, Thomas? Right. Yeah. You sick fucks. I'm on board with you there. I'll bet you are. Yeah, I think most people are. I am. You know, the idea that they're, you know, sick. if you go to California. Um, Pedophiles are sick, but you should not, should not point fingers and proclaim people are pedophiles when you know for a fact they aren't. That's that's just targeting people. They, they're, they're trying to make it uh, normalized, too. They call them maps, minor attractive persons. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a horrible thing. It's a, you know, and then you see the whole pedo catcher world well, pedophiles are involved with that stuff. They're they're joining the groups and they're, you know, play acting and, and watching everything and looking for uh, victims. You know, there you go, guys. There's the Denise script. Thomas is speaking about it himself. So it's messed up. I'd like to do a follow up stream if you're available at some point down the line where we. I'm sure you will. go into these where we go into each one of these people 
uh, that is opposing you and, and harassing you. And we do, we show the receipts because, you know, these are on, these things are on record. So yeah. for each, I'd know, love it. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be the uh, one uh, podcast that like, you know, substantiates their claims. I would love Less that. Than Titus Frost. It's, it's what I love about you. Um, I've enjoyed Steve Oakham, uh, too, and, and Titus, because, uh, you know, they didn't say, hey, Thomas, we want to um, take what you say and replicate it. They asked me hard questions, and I had to provide, um, you know, evidence uh, chains, matters, receipts. So, you know, anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's what matters, receipts. We've provided all the receipts so where's hoaxy at and where's thomas at with their receipts you you claimed you'd be happy to come to this panel and and uh talk so where where are you where the hell are you hiding behind your protected twitter channels and your blocks on all other social media is that where your cowards are at to manipulate a screenshot but when you have actual evidence and then you know you've got um this e the fraud guy he the friend um who arturo tafoya has accused me of being and that we know is not true so um these people they lie about one thing they lie about everything so it's what i told you at the very beginning which is if i lied to you even once excoriate me Literally, hold me, hold my feet to the fire. Hold his feet. Folks? <laughs> You're there. Good. Yes, yes. Good. Uh, I was just uh, so, looking at uh, some feedback we have from, from chat. Yeah, yeah. No, he was just reading the script to make sure he was still staying on script with uh, your so called interview. Well, I think people are pretty like, you know, they're, they're, they're like, obviously those are like some, some shocking, uh, allegations, but these are not even, um, the one about Lestat I'll have to look into, but I know that the one with, uh, Pavana's husband and, or sorry, Pavana's uh, brother and um, Daniel Dowd, these are not disputed. Like these. We never disputed. I don't know why Thomas keeps acting like it's some big deal that Pavana's half brother uh, <laughs> turned out to be a pedophile and we testified against him and made sure he got locked up for the rest of his fucking life. We, we've not made that a secret. We, we've discussed it more than once. I mean, what, what's the big deal? What's the big deal, hoax? These are just matter of fact. Um, and they're like yeah. horrifying crimes. And we'll show people those receipts. They are. And these are, you know. And these are people that spend all day yeah. accusing other people of nefarious things. And if you look at them, they are chomos. They are like uh, chomo, uh, I don't know, adjacent. Yeah. They're DJs at tranny bars, and they like to shroom out and wear lipstick and all kinds of <laughs> They're DJs at tranny bars. Is, is that supposed to be a dig at me because I'm a DJ at a nightclub that hosts drag shows? That's some funny shit there, guys. And, and because we like to be goofy sometimes on the streams and daniel dowd put some lipstick on one night and uh i had a terry joyce wig on and uh, that is that a problem for you people i, I don't get it shit. yeah it really weird shit and then um you know every night i'm the topic du jour for jesse i don't watch his streams Yes, you do. You're watching right now. You're one of the 50 some people that's here watching. You know, there's a dozen or so in the chat and the rest of you are nothing but a bunch of trolls and looky-loos who can't help yourself. 
You just can't help yourself because you want to know if we're going to put the truth out about you and if we're going to bring receipts, you know, because, uh, you know, we always do. But, yeah, you're watching. We know you are. Um, it goes beyond lunacy. Uh, to me, there's something, there's an agenda somewhere. And, you know, I'm not um, an investigator. I'm a pianist. You know, I, I write something. You're not an investigator. You're a penis. Is that what he just said? He's a penis. He's a penis wrinkle at best. But anyway, um, yeah, Thomas, uh, you're definitely not an investigator because everything you've put out has been 100% wrong. Um, so that's not my focus. Um, I was uh, never in the family. Lamb. I did not watch everything that uh, Isaac Cappy said on Periscope. I, I'm aware he was uh, uh, calling out um, pedophiles uh, everywhere, you know, and called out Kevin Spacey, who was uh, just found innocent, although I understand three of the four witnesses uh, that, that um, accused him of things are dead. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a lot there, um, and there's a lot of people who are uh, looking into um, the deviance um, that is being normalized. And I think that is a good thing. But when it comes to making a comparable between Isaac Cappy and, um, and Nathan, um, there's not much. Isaac was a firebrand. He would uh, yell into the mic. Um, uh, he made some, um, some accusations that um, he didn't uh, back up, in my opinion. Um, but he was a Hollywood insider. He was a B actor, and uh, people assumed that he would know. With Nathan, um, even though he's um, bashing me because he's vulnerable right now. Um, Here we go. Here we go. Nathan's bashing Thomas because he's vulnerable. You know, he's not really angry at Thomas and and uh, he's not upset with Thomas. It's just because he's, you know, vulnerable. He's done some, some pretty good research uh, in the past. And he's, um, you know, he's more of a... Of a um, digs in and um, does not use emotion in his delivery. But but wait, Thomas, didn't you say in the comment <coughs> that we showed just a bit ago to Nathan that he's in full control of his faculties? That, that's what I thought you said. Like, uh, like Isaac. Isaac was very animated. Um, Isaac was a really good musician, too, but I, I don't think... Uh, Nathan is, but you know, I, um, it's weird, even though this doesn't sound very weird, even though he said horrible defamatory things about me, I'm not going to sue him and I don't harbor any ill will. Um, even though Nathan said some horrible things, he's, he's not going to sue him for defamation. <laughs> Thomas, have you sued anybody for defamation? I haven't found a single lawsuit researching you that you have filed against anyone for defamation i did i did find the uh felony convictions for stalking and you know you're driving under the influence and and shit like that you know drugs and alcohol as a matter of fact i, I found all of those cases and the you know the cases with beth bogarts and gabe hoffman that's all public record but i don't see where you've ever sued anyone for defamation thomas because the problem with defamation is if you sue me for defamation, I can prove that there was no defamation because everything I've said is true about you. And I have the receipts to back it all up. Is that why you haven't sued for defamation, Thomas? Inquiring minds want to know. I understand he's um, in a precarious place and has been through a rough patch. Um, I want, you know, I, I, I hope he heals. I hope he's better. Well, better from what? You said he's in full control of his faculties and he's going to go places and this and that. What What do you mean? Heals from what, Thomas? Well, I hope, uh, I hope he can hear that and take it to heart. And whatever he said in the past... 
I have a feeling, and I'm not going to speak for you, and you tell you correct me if I'm wrong. Whatever Nathan has said in the past about you, if Nathan wanted to be friends with you right now, I have a feeling it would be water under the bridge to you. Even though. Oh, wait, he's not going to speak for him, but he's going to speak for him <laughs> anyway. <laughs> things he said were, to some people, would probably be unforgivable, but I. Yeah, I would forgive him. It's, it's uh, you know, um, he has a disturbance between the ears. It doesn't take away from his humanity. Well, well, wait, Thomas, he's got a disturbance between the ears. So he's having a mental challenge. But yet you were just telling him in your comments on YouTube that he's in full control of his faculties. It, it can't be both ways. What What the hell? I mean, you know, it, it just can't be. But you'll forgive him. Uh, you'll forgive him. Right, right, Thomas. And, um, you know, I, I'm understanding. So it's the only way to fly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think he will get help and get back on the road. He's been dealt some tough blows, uh, but I'm not going to, you know, I, I've decided to talk today because you're his friend, uh, but it's not like I'm going to go ahead and, um, be all things uh, Nathan Sullivan. I I'm kind of keeping my distance from it, and uh, I really hope these um, these trolls uh, equip with their bullshit. Uh, yeah, Thomas going to keep his distance from it, but yet he's trying to get Nathan to talk to him and and leaving comments to Nathan and shit, telling Nathan that he's in full control of his faculties. Yeah, okay. Um. You know, they should let Nathan heal <laughs> yeah. instead of engaging him in, in hijinks. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, we love Nathan. We want Nathan to get better. And these people that, look, we get it. You know, we, we get it. You hate Nathan. You hate Thomas. And, you know, th obviously this is like juicy bait for you guys. But um, come on, I, you go, you, I don't have think to he hates me, uh, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, because no, no, it, look, he started out until yeah. Well, he ended up saying, um, you know, that he solved cicada. Uh, I'm Saint Thomas. I'm a powerful entity, and then he said he had killed me. And so this is, uh, you know, this is a disassociative. Um, uh, verbal stream, and he may not know how he feels. Um, my job as an adult is to stay clear and wish him well. And that's where I'm at. Right. <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah. And, and pretty simple. You were attacking him prior to his uh, let's let's call it a, a mental break, and now you're telling him he's in full control of his faculties, and I mean, come on, Thomas. We know your game, dude. You've you've played this on too many people. Look, he has. Um, in my mind, he's done a lot of good things. You know, it, look. Imagine if you had that type of illness, um, and you were able to build something out of yourself. And he has. You know, he's uh, he's entertained us. Um, He's uh, brought some things to light that uh, mainstream media would not. So, yeah, I, I think there's a place for uh, for Nathan, but not for my evil spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if you, if you listen to Jesse, his whole argument that you attack Nathan is like he, he claims that your quote unquote mindless minions attacked Nathan on Twitter and that you attacked Nathan on Twitter, but you no, 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 that's a fact. We showed all the screenshots. That's a fact. You did not even say anything until well after you yeah. had said all this stuff about you and you were finally like, uh, Nathan, 
can you stop? Like, and so he has this whole timeline messed up. It's no, 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 no. The timeline is is dead on. Uh, prior to June the twentieth, Thomas and the Mindless Minions were attacking Nathan online, and also the premiere that All Saying You put out. So, no, the timeline is very clear and the evidence has already been put out there. So, hoax, again, come on, man. Are you a truther? Are are you just another dumbass wannabe journalist that's in love with Thomas Schoenberger? That's the question we need answered. It's ignorant, ignorant at best and, like, intentionally malicious uh at worst and that's kind of what it seems like he just does not care about facts and he's going to further his agenda by any means necessary these mindless minions uh they don't what evidence does he have that they're working for you that they have anything to do with you these people I just... um hmm hoax if you really were paying attention to anything you'd know that we've provided oodles and oodles of evidence that thomas was paying and scripting people to attack his so-called enemies online we've shared tons of proof where have you been a hoax hiding under a fucking rock like a troll or what all the weird attacks he was getting with you and the weird attacks nathan was getting or i should say weird responses he was getting from his own weird behavior and it was the kind of weirdo satanist shit you get on twitter like welcome to twitter and yeah how does that have anything to do with thomas like and then yeah. uh welcome to twitter how does that have anything to do with thomas uh maybe because thomas is on twitter under a thousand bogus sock accounts and he'll attack you, and then he'll come back under his other account and try to white knight for you and claim he's saving you. And then he'll gang attack you with all his sock accounts again. Proven fact. Proven a million times over. All the receipts have been put out there more than one time by more than just me, by the way. But go ahead, Hoaxy. And another part where Jesse was... Uh, calling out Thomas's quote unquote mindless minions, I know for a fact we're not because they were like hoax horse people asking, like, yeah. just just playing devil's advocate and asking questions anyone else would. And, and, and Jesse immediately labeled us all Thomas's minions, so you can't even talk, you can't even, you can't even really have a conversation with them. You know, you're automatically labeled, uh, what do the Scientologists call them? Um, uh, yeah, 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 I know what you're saying. Yeah, no, I mean, and this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and you, my friend, are now inducted into the Hall of Fame of mindless uh, minions uh, that you will be attacked by Jesse. He'll, he'll have a nice big conversation with, uh, yeah. Here we go, guys, setting up their next narrative and Thomas's next. Uh, uh, a lucid dream, you know, he prophesied that I would be talking about hoax wars. Oh my god, he's so good with his prophecies, isn't he? His uh, his felon trolls, all right, and I do mean felon. Bring it, bring it, Jesse. Oh, oh, I'm, oh. I'm bringing it. Where are you at, Mr. Hoaxy? Is, is it true your name is Martin? By the way, that's what I heard, but um. Uh, Bring it, Hoaxy. Bring it. Where are you at? Where are you at, coward? Yeah. <laughs> suppressive persons. It's amazing. As the Scientologists call the opposition, suppressive persons. There you go. There you go. All I, all I do know is that um, I find it very fascinating, and I've been talking with Titus and others, that Isaac Happy has uh, really had brand resilience, as I was saying. He, he's... Uh, he hasn't gone away. Um, and I think there's a, a ghost of Isaac Cappy or Isaac Cappy's army on Twitter. Um, because a lot of the videos were immediately suppressed, um, there's a lot of shade and there's a lot of uh, 
interest in what really happened. And, um, you know, personally, um, I don't mention a certain hedge fund manager's name, but I think he was set up also as a... Wait, wait, you won't mention a certain hedge fund manager's name that was set up. You, you mean Gabe Hoffman? Gabe Hoffman, why won't you mention his name, Thomas? Why won't you mention his name? You're throwing everybody else's names out there. Uh, uh, as someone who um, was being pointed at by uh, several people, I think he had nothing to do with it. Uh, but that person uh, no longer shows up on uh, Jesse's uh, channel. He knows better. I think he... Um, hmm, he knows better. Yeah, he does know better because me and Gabe had a major falling out because Gabe uh, didn't like some of the guests I had on my show and Gabe didn't like some of the things that were being said on my show. And so he was messaging me and emailing me and trying to tell me what I could or couldn't talk about on my show. Uh, he threatened to have his lawyer send me a letter and basically, I told Gabe Hoffman to fuck off. I told him I was going to do my show the way I feel like doing my show. And if him and his lawyer thought they had a case, to send their fucking paperwork. That, that's that's why Gabe Hoffman isn't on my show anymore. Do I have a personal issue with Gabe? No, not really. But I do have an issue with anybody that tries to tell me how to run my show and what I should or shouldn't talk about and who I should allow or not allow to speak on my show. So that's the only issue I have with Gabe Hoffman. Uh, I give kudos to Gabe Hoffman for his uh, documentary about the pedophilia in Hollywood, An Open Secret. Kudos to him, man. I, that's great. I'm all for calling out pedophiles who are real pedophiles, not just throwing the word around willy-nilly and claiming people are pedophiles when they clearly are not like you do, Thomas, to so many people. I, I'm not for that. But Gabe did a very good job with that uh, with that documentary. Kudos to him. Kudos for him still on Twitter. I like his tweets and often retweet them uh, when he's posting shit about pedophiles getting busted. I'm all for every pedophile being taken out of the population. So kudos to Gabe. I have no personal vendettas with Gabe. I just don't like people trying to tell me what to do. And Gabe knows that. Stayed away from Jesse's channel because he found out uh, Daniel Ryan Dowd's um, criminal sexual history. And he's seen now that Jesse Davis uh, was involved in Dustin Reddy, the guy who um, is now doing 30 years um, in a penitentiary for um, child rape. Again, Thomas, I've had no dealings with Dustin Reddy. I don't even know who the hell he is. Don't care who he is. But if he is a pedophile and he got locked up for 30 years, kudos to them for locking his ass up. But again, Thomas, I have no dealings with this guy. Never have had. And then there are other people there that are ex-cons. Uh, that I'm not going to get into today. We probably need to do more of these. Um, but, you know, you've got a, a band of criminals um, repeating and um, uh, amplifying false narratives. So, you know, it's... Uh, Gee, a bunch of criminals. Yeah, yeah, Thomas, didn't you and your mindless minions... For the last six years, you keep proclaiming that I'm this big time criminal, you know, even though I showed my criminal history online and I have no criminal history. Yeah. Yeah. Criminals like me, Thomas, is that who you're talking about? They stole a letter. As far as me. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie. At first, I was uh, very alone. Um but then people came and said, we want to hear your side. Remember Steve Ottram? Um, then, you know, uh, mind inspired, started to ask questions. Um, and all of a sudden they were attacked. So that's where we knew something was, um, you know, definitely uh, askew. 
Right, right. And so the Isaac Cappy's last um, Instagram post where he goes in that whole diatribe and talking about how he's Judas and, so, and stuff. So, so hang on. Before we get into this whole Judas thing, uh, someone in the chat made mention um, about uh, um, Zach Quaid. And yes, Zach Quaid is yet another person that Thomas Schoenberger uh, manipulated through basically mind control and money. He was sending Zach money and sending Zach scripts to attack people. Uh, we've showed the PayPal receipts for that, where Thomas, Michael Levine, and uh, Jib Camera and others were paying Zach. Um, and Thomas was sending Zach scripts to attack people, including myself and many others. And when Zach finally caught on to what was going on and broke away, they then had viciously attacked Zach as well. And uh, there, there's a lot more to the Zach Quaid story as well. Um, but we'll get into that at another time also. But he, he's also another one that Thomas called his mental health care workers and basically interfered with Zach's mental health care, the same as he did with Pavana's. And we'll touch bases on that a little bit later on as well. Amplifying false narrative. So, you know, it's uh, the scarlet letter. It, as far as me, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was uh, very alone. Um, but then people came and said, we want to hear your side. Remember Steve Ottram? Um, then, you know, uh, mind inspired, started to ask questions. Um, I just did. And all of a sudden, they were attacked. So that's where we knew something was, um, you know, definitely uh, askew. And so the Isaac Cappy's last um, Instagram post where he goes in that whole diatribe and talking about how he's Judas and, so, and stuff. Like, I know you didn't talk to Tom, you didn't talk to Isaac behind the scenes as much as people think, but as someone who did talk to him a little behind the scenes, more than uh, most of us, uh, did those, the words in his last Instagram uh, post, did it sound like Isaac Happy's voice as you know it? No. It didn't. So you no. feel like that was maybe written by That was short by Kelly. That's, that's what I. Uh, that's what people told me. It was Kelly Jeanie that wrote that final Instagram post for for him. Um. Yeah, there was someone who did um, some sort of linguistic algo, and determined that was not Isaac um, uh, typing. So um, and determined that it was Kelly Jeanie. She's now dead. She died of a brain aneurysm. Um, maybe a little bit over a year ago, year and a half ago. And by the way, oddly, Jesse Davis did a tribute to Sharp Billy Kelly. So, uh, and she was, you know, not a TS fan. <laughs> yeah. So, she had a, yeah. we call it uh, Thomas Derangement Syndrome. Yeah, isn't it horrible? I, I did a tribute to, to Shark Billy Kelly when she passed away. Isn't that just horrible? Yeah, and she's she was very close to who else? Corey Daniel. So you see these actors, these malevolent actors, these uh, Mel Fleurs, as you say, French, and they keep on coming back. Diane Armstrong, Jesse Davis, Arturo Tafoya, and then you've got Microchip, who's a, now a government informant um, who was arrested for stuff. And um, I can show you evidence where he was... Uh, Friends with Defango um, was in these um, tied to Doug Stewart and Magico. <laughs> and um, so, by by all accounts, Kelly Shark Kelly Kelly really was a close friend of Isaac. So, was she an undercover Fed the whole time, uh, manipulating him, or was she a true friend of Isaac that? became brainwashed by these people who are out to convince people that Thomas Schoenberger is evil. 
you know. I think uh, Charlotte Kelly was part. Mm-hmm. I think she was part of a criminal uh, outfit. Her husband had been arrested for uh, kidnapping and was released after a year, probably to be an informant, and then did an armed robbery and received the original 12-year sentence he was given and died in prison. So uh, Short Billy Kelly had um, a pretty interesting history herself. You know, she was making videos saying, I banged a, a Satanist, and she was very tied in with uh, Corey Daniels. So it's that whole occult um Arizona thing going on. I don't have all the answers. Chat Chat um, is agreeing with us that these people have way too many like criminal charges and heinous uh, things on their record per capita, you know, compared to the a control group. Yeah, yeah, we we all have all these heinous criminal records. I have zero criminal record, yet y'all keep claiming that I have these criminal records, and half of the other people that you've made claims about, you've also had false records. So, you know, I don't understand that. Uh, the man you're speaking to, Hoax Wars, has a massive criminal record, by the way. Like, it's just... Very interesting. Yeah. You got some really good people in the chat with uh, really good critical thinking skills, you know. And it, it's it, it's very interesting that we're talking about Isaac Cappy. Uh, uh, you know, four years after uh, he, he died. Oh, we have so, over 90 um, watching. This show is like a massive su- success. People are really um, on the edge of their seat find, wanting to find out what's going to, what's happening with uh, all this stuff. It's really, it's been six years in the making. You know, we, we all thought this stuff was going to go away, but it's crazier than ever. I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you taking the time and, and coming on. And talking about all these things where, you know, I can imagine it's not the most comfortable. I mean, you know, you could easily just not turn the computer on and go live your life, but well, you know, I have a lot of respect for you, and um, I understand your concern for for Nathan right now. So I just, uh, I think, you know, being public is saying I have no animus towards uh, Nathan. I hope he gets better. He, you know, he's a lucky guy to have uh, friends like you. Uh, yeah. as, as far as uh, live streams, I only do you and, and Titus. Uh, you know, I'm not really part of the... the live stream community as you know yeah you know, i write yeah. songs <laughs> yeah i don't see you out there uh, a whole lot and any- well what do you mean you don't see him out there a whole lot this guy is all over social media with a thousand sock accounts and he's been attacking and and fucking with people for decades decades Anytime I've asked you to come on, uh, you know, uh, you've been more than willing. So, I, you know, I, I, uh, I am appreciative yeah. of that. And, and um, you know, I, I see this as a favor to my audience because they are, you know, not all of them were around for those early days, you know, the Seth Rich files and stuff. There are some. There are a lot of people who are watching who were around back then but uh i moved over to d D live and started covering owen benjamin and kind of attracted a different audience that from that old school you know youtube conspiracy theory and so they these people are also lift the veil fans a lot of a lot of them and Nathan's become not only, you know, a, a streamer we like to watch, but he hangs out with us in our Telegram group. You know, he's like part of our social group. So, yeah, he's family. He's so family. he's a family member going through a crisis. So gentleness and kindness is a, a way to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, I hope they leave him alone and, you know, start uh, um start to understand the gravity of the situation and stop trying to 
um, hijack him for their own narratives. <laughs> you know, it's ugly. Do you think Do you think Jesse would uh, come on the panel and talk to me about it, or allow? No, I won't come on your panel to try to give you any clout. But as I said, the invitation was out there for you, but apparently you haven't taken me up on that for some reason. Me on his panel? Um, I don't know. Um, maybe I can't be on that because uh, uh, the on advice of my attorneys. Hmm. So um, I, <laughs> Thomas can't. Thomas can't be on because of the advice of his attorneys. He can come on here and run his mouth about me and defame the shit out of me all he wants, but he can't come on here and talk because his attorneys told him not to. That's some funny shit, Thomas. I've got to keep everything uh, pretty quiet about that. That's why I've been so uh, laser focused on uh, you know, deep fakes, artificial intelligence, and uh, Corey Daniel. Um, who needs to be looked at as a suspect in the Isaac Happy death. So, um, I'm pretty clear. Before I forget, and I, not to switch topics too abruptly, but and, and it's been so long since we've uh, gotten a chance to talk that uh, a lot has happened beyond this Nathan thing, including this professor from Michigan State Oh, literally shit. wrote a go. white paper and she's a, a professor like an actual professor at michigan state university you can go look her up she's faculty she wrote a white paper that is you know go it's in the archives now at michigan state this is considered material that the people are supposed to learn about and what was her white paper about QAnon? yeah and in, um, in it, in it, in it uh, this white paper was about QAnon, but it, uh, it basically it's a it's a it's disguised as a white paper, but it's actually complete. It completely. Uh, I don't know. You read this white paper, and the woman yeah. is obsessed with you, and she thinks that you created Q, and she thinks you're the mastermind, and then and, and all this stuff. Um, what what are your feelings on that? Well, um, on advice of my attorneys and my wife, <laughs> I I can't I can't comment. Um, you know, the, the matter is going to be addressed. His his attorneys and his wife, his his internet marriage wife, won't let him talk about that. Um, legally, so um, I I can't weigh in. You know, I would love to answer your question, but. I don't want my attorneys to be angry with me. Um, I don't want to be a good a good client. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense because what she said, what she did, is insane. And, and if, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're if you're allowed to just do what she did to people, you know, uh, do what she did to you. If you're allowed to just do that to people, it's a really scary. Uh, it, it's not a pleasant premonition. So, uh, yeah, it's not pleasant when somebody can put defaming false information out about you. You're right, hoax, which is exactly what your guest has done to so many people. Yeah, that makes sense. And, uh, hopefully she, uh, yeah, yeah doesn't get away with that. And, but, okay. But separately from that, the same woman, this professor from Michigan, There was yeah. a there was a terror attack on the Michigan State campus, or I should say, a, a mass shooting. And is it is it hyperbole to say that she implicated you in the mass shooting on her myself account? and um, yeah, and also mind inspired, and um, it, she was postulating that the um, the killer was mind controlled by us. Um, before they knew the identity of the shooter. It was an active shooter situation. And so immediately upon uh, making these public proclamations on uh, you know, Twitter, um, you can imagine it, you could be um, hunted down, uh, you know, street justice, right? Based on disinformation.
So very, very dangerous um, state of affairs. So obviously the killer was found to be someone who had no connection to us, but it was during an active shooter situation that is, um, you know, akin to um, pointing at someone uh, like Richard Jewell, right? The Olympic bombing or um, other examples of innocent people being tarred and feathered, burned as witches, right? Thomas, so you're you're claiming that it's not right for her to supposedly point at you and claim you were involved in things that you weren't involved in, that you're a murderer and all that. But it's okay for you to blame people for murders and for you to point at people and call them pedophiles and shit, right? It's a, it's all right when it ha- when it's coming from you. Is is that what you're trying to clear up here? all the uh, auto defays of, um, of earlier times, right? Where they would grab some woman and they would say, we're going to burn you because you're a witch. Oh no, instead of that, we're going to throw you in the river and if you drown, you're innocent. But if you rise to the top, well, you know, we're getting some kindling wood tonight, baby. Okay, so it's pretty messed up. Um, but my response will be uh, instructed by my attorneys. So, um, mm-hmm. You know, I listen to them, and um, they don't make a move with them. Right. Understood. Right. And I, so, okay, so I won't press too hard on that, but uh, just yeah, so the audience okay. knows, from my perspective, what I saw was like, and we'll show receipts. We'll we'll uh, we'll do we'll do uh, follow up episodes and show everyone. But uh, yeah, but in this mission, I will. It's not an accident. She didn't out of the blue randomly do a white paper where th- she named Thomas Schwamberger as Q and, and made all these uh, potentially d- defamatory statements. She became, un- I don't know, part of the operation or under the mind control. This whole Thomas hate campaign bled over to include her, right? And to the point where she she's good buddies with Lestat now, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you can't talk about it, but that's fine. Okay, I want to. Yeah. Pre- Does anybody else think that all these questions that hoax is asking Thomas are all leading questions? I mean, I mean, how evident can you guys make it that you scripted all this shit? that issue but uh you know people can look for you will let us know you know as soon as you can talk about that stuff yeah uh, yeah definitely um you'll see um yeah you know, it, it, something is in the, the works but you know i want to keep um my attorneys happy i want to keep my wife happy <laughs> so no. uh, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i want to keep Marcia's uh 17 house cats happy he, he wants to keep his wife happy, guys. Uh, uh, if you recall, not long ago, he posted a tweet on Twitter stating that he was ready to do his Viagra dance. So that's what he's talking about. Got to keep his wife happy. Or is it 18? She's become quite a cat lady. You can ask her. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep street ghosts happy. Right, oh, Mr. Double O Seven. I don't want to upset Street Ghost. That's the last troll. thing I would ever go doing. <laughs> You're great, Hoax. You know, I think I was your first fan, right? I go way back. There's an argument for that. Yeah, way back. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. They're good friends. They go way back. That's why Thomas will only get on these channels and talk. He don't have balls to come on a real channel and talk and bring receipts just these scripted little wannabes still around like you you're up there i i i remember the the solid days of hoax wars now you're a big star (laughs) big star big star (laughs) yeah that's funny i'll try not to let it uh go my head (laughs) <laughs> well, one thing, um, you know, if you can find some sort of electric fence for my evil spirit, um, <laughs> I'd like to contain them. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, 
Wow. Did you guys just hear that? So now they're laughing and joking and making fun of Nathan saying that Thomas's spirit was attacking him. They're making fun of it. <laughs> we got to do something about that thing. It's loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Actually, I rented my evil spirit to Streakos. He's got it right now. Wow. He's saving it for Halloween. You can't stop an evil spirit. You can only hope to keep it contained. They're mocking me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, the question remains, um, is someone putting that into Nathan's head? Um, he doesn't strike me as a malicious guy at all. Someone putting that into Nathan's head. I wonder, I wonder, who, I wonder who put that in Nathan's head. Could it be the same person that put it in Pavana's head that she would get visits in her sleep and these shadows and shit? Hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to have a mean bone in his body. So to me, it's a uh, compulsion. It's um, command hallucinations. It's uh, disassociative behavior. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. My dad was. But, you know, to me, he doesn't, you know, there's an innocence about uh, Nathan. Yeah. You know, I think that we all see that. Again, I have to ask, uh, Thomas is talking about disassociative disorders and all that with Nathan, but yet in the chat, Marsha and Thomas were trying to convince Nathan that he was fine and in full control of all his faculties. So which is it, guys? Yeah, I know what you mean when you say that. Yeah. Um, this is kind of off topic, and I hope uh, it's all right. But chat is curious about Tracy Twyman. Um, I didn't know her. She talked to me once after Cappy died. Um, and I understand that she, um, you know, died mysteriously, but I never looked into her. That was something that um, Steve Ockham uh, had some discourses with her, but I never knew um, Tracy. I had one conversation with her. Um, I guess she was a former um, member of uh, the Church of Satan. Is that correct? <laughs> That, that sounds yeah. like it. Oh, she, and uh, I think I think I heard from Lift the Veil that Tracy had. She said she had multiple personalities, and one of them was a demon. And she wrote a book from the perspective of a demon or something. So she had yeah, I I never read anything that. Uh, but you know, you bring up a, a, a important point. You've got Corey Daniel as uh, the de occultist, uh, very much into ritualistic magic. Um, yeah, study. Oh shit, Thomas's demons coming out. Do you hear that shit? A lot of that stuff. Um, his uh, girlfriend, living girlfriend, last person to see Isaac Happy Alive. She's a self proclaimed Sicilian witch. So, you know, I don't get any of that shit. I write music. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not um, fascinated by the occult. It, it, you know, I, I thought it was when I was uh, 13, like most, you know, 13 year old boys, right? Uh, we're, we're, we want power. We're in puberty. Um, we want to assume, uh, that we can move things, uh, and, and do things that other people can't, but that's, it's called puberty, right? It's a uh, fantasy. But right now, you know, I'm a 63 year old guy and, uh, I am a composer, so I, I don't fixate on uh, on magic. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm repulsed by uh, Satanism and by Crowleyism. I, I, I don't like it. Um, I, I stay away from it. You know, try to uh, keep to you know trying to do good things for people, trying to bring beauty into the world. It's kind of how um, my wife is too. She's an artist. That's how uh, Marcia, my ranger, is. Um, so a lot of people are. We, we try to make the world a little bit better. And that includes, uh, includes Nathan. Despite what he's going through right now, which is episodic, um, I see him as a, as, a, um, as a good guy. I do. Uh, 
Uh, Thomas, my headphones are dying and now people hear an echo. So uh, this may be a good time to uh, end it for now. And uh, hopefully if you're available next week, we can pick up uh, uh, where we yeah, left off. Let's, let's call the stream Rico Live. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay, man. Listen, great chat today. I appreciate it. And thanks to all your viewers. Um, they're really sharp. They've got really good <laughs> detection skills. So hopefully they've got some uh, some investigating to do. Oh, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we are uh, we are just here for uh, at at the pleasure of chat, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we can count on next week. Um, there are certain things I can't talk about for um, uh, for legal reasons, uh, but happy to continue the conversations. Sounds good, and I'll be um, on Titus Cross um, tomorrow night too. So I always enjoy, uh, you know, saying hi to the captain. He's a good guy. Awesome. I'll. Uh, we're all going to check out uh, Titus Frost tomorrow check you out on Titus Frost and is there any where else can people reach you um Sophia music M U S uh M U. yeah you can all fucking meet him in hell at the bottom of the rabbit hole pit that's right <laughs> S-I-K um music so that's on YouTube I've got um some music there and it's free you don't have to donate anything the songs are free. And also, um, thomasisevilspirit.com. That website again, thomasisevilspirit.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Th thanks, Thomas. We'll talk to you soon. You got a hoax. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Wow. Wow. All right, so we made it through that, and just for a quick glimpse, uh, right after I spoke to Nathan, um, and it pissed all these people off, I got this really nifty email. Re, Summer of Floods. UK to the win, UK to the win at mail.com. July 27th, 2023. 7.27 p.m. To Jesse Davis Dear Mr. Davis You really stepped in it, again, by attempting to bond with Mr. Stoltman currently in a state of psychosis while completely ignoring what Kate suffered through, i.e. having Mr. Stoltman read off her social insurance number and telephone number to his audience. Also capitalizing on Mr. Stoltman's mental health crisis so you could attack Thomas Skonberger has gotten people upset. You angered a number of people including Clown Warrior and other participants in YouTube streams. <laughs> Once again, you come off like a flaccid disingenuous snake oil salesman. Only the most ignorant of observers is being tricked by you. Congratulations on becoming a mindless minion. Keep on providing excellent evidence of your criminal enterprise. Did Mr. Dowd ever give you that blowjob that he promised? <laughs> Cheerio. And there's actually been two more emails that have came since then. Um, I didn't get a chance to have my little robot read them or anything. Uh, but yeah, two two more really weird emails coming from these clowns. Um, let's see, I, I can probably pull them up and read them. Uh, I'm not going to show them just because uh, I don't have their email addresses blacked out, and they they like when you show their email address so that then they can try to strike your channel, you know. Uh, but I, I can I can quickly read the two most recent emails that I received from this UK to the wind clown, which go along with all of this. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
the first one was a response to the one that uh, was just read. Uh, I sent a response to him. I said, there's no flood here. It's been sunny and hot. Not sure why anyone would be pissed that I popped on to Nathan's stream to wish him well and tell him to avoid Tommy Boy, as he <laughs> stated he was being stalked or haunted by him. As for whoever is pissed, tough shit, I could care less about any of them mindless minion trolls. Tell Tommy Boy I'm still waiting for his big investigator to reach out and waiting for those court papers I've been promised for six years now. It doesn't take that long for any investigation or to file your so-called court papers or RICO suit. LOL, fools will be fools. Hope you are well and have a great night, little wanker boy. That was my response. And then he replied back again a couple days later on the 29th and said, Oh, you silly wanker. I believe your destiny is a visit from authorities on a federal level. Not that I am an expert on American law, but it's clear your wife's mental illness is caused by you and also by the abuse she suffered at the hands of her brother, a child molester in prison for 40 years. You disgust me, Jesse. You are a liar and a fraud who can only find friendships with criminals and pedophiles. Man, that sure sounds a lot like the other emails I received from Thomas in the past. It sure does. And then uh, at on 729, I received another email from this UK to the wind. And it says, Jesse, I just watched a fascinating interview with Hoax Wars and Thomas Schoenberg. I believe the obsessive hatred you have for Thomas is the manifestation that Nathan called Thomas's evil spirit. I watched Nathan, Suicide King response, and I believe the evil spirit he was sensing is you. I think Nathan is psychic, but did not realize he was battling your future attempts to psyop Nathan. I have watched Nathan before, and each time you have called in to pester him, he gets a look of revulsion on his face. <laughs> Hoax War stated he considers Nathan a close friend. I believe you and your gang were exposed to the public for what they are low level grifting criminals, wankers who are losing ground, and whose many lies are being exposed. <laughs> wow. Is it true you promoted Dustin Reddy, a.k.a. Ghost3301, who is a pedophile curse, currently incarcerated for 25 to 30 years? Did you ever enter, interact with Dustin? Yes, you did. And so did one of your girlfriends, Diane Nordstrom, the one they call Nutbag Nordstrom. If, if this doesn't read Thomas, nothing does. Uh, you also have had Daniel Dowd on your show, and it's a good thing Gabe Hoffman, who has admirably exposed many pedophiles, refuses to have anything to do with you. You have spoken poorly about Mr. Hoffman, and you should apologize publicly for your attacks on Gabe's character. Gabe is honest. You are not. Show some backbone and apologize to Mr. Hoffman like a man would do. You should also apologize for bothering Nathan and sending your criminal gang to fake sympathy for Nathan. It's obvious you are trying to cover up the torture you have visited upon your wife, Paula Davis. You dominate Paula to the point of calling yourself a warden. Meaning she is your prisoner. That came from them. Yeah, yeah. It they they so dealt with this, the compound and the war, and I'm the warden, you know, not me. Uh, the Hoax Wars interview with Thomas Schoberger was very revealing. You have demonized Thomas as well as Gabe Hoffman. The fellow who looks like a meth addict, Phoenix Enigma, was exposed as Corey Daniel, who may be responsible for Isaac Cappy's untimely death. <clears throat> Hoax seemed interested in Corey 
and his connections to Isaac and his proximity to Isaac when he died. It seems like Hoax is on the trail of the real killer of Isaac. Corey and Daniel Ryan Dowd seem to be the focus of the renewed interest in Isaac. How well do you know Daniel Dowd? You were friends with a woman named Kelly Giovanni, a.k.a. Shark Belly Kelly. It seems she may have, may have been involved in the cover-up of Cappy's death. Why were Gabe and Thomas and Hoax all unfairly blamed? I believe Corey is behind much of this, and the reason may be that Corey bears at least some responsibility for Cappy's death. Hoax Wars is promising to have Thomas back next week to expose some more truth. I applaud Hoax Wars' candid and well-reasoned approach. Your attempts to use Nathan are upsetting Nathan's friends. Apologize to Gabe for starters, publicly and with humiliation, and maybe things will improve for you. I really apologize to Gabe and maybe things will improve for me. Hmm. The fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> that's that's some funny shit, guys. But apparently we're we're over some kind of a target because these guys are really, really pissed off. Uh so you know, those 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 are the emails that I've received <laughs> recently uh from these jokers. And uh, it's it's just funny because I don't think they really care about Nathan. I think it's more that uh, they're trying to troll Nathan and keep him uh, in the psychosis and uh, just drag him deeper down. Uh, that's that's my belief. Um, but it is what it is. Um, you know, if, hell, if, we, if we need to, uh, you know, bring up any documentation, we always can, but I'm not going to waste time doing that. Um, let's just, uh, go ahead and we'll open the panel up. I know there's a couple people that wanted to come up and, and talk. Um, so, uh, I'll go ahead and post the, uh. StreamYard link here in the chat again. It's also pinned at the top on YouTube. Um, and if anybody wants to come up and talk, you're welcome to do so. Uh, we're going to try to keep this show, um, you know, on track about what we're talking about here and not get sidetracked on, on other things that are going on to, you know, on the social media realm. But, um, Anyhow, uh, apparently Hoax isn't going to show up. The invitation was put out there. Uh, he definitely saw it because I uh, made sure I tagged him in Twitter. And, uh, you know, apparently he's a coward like Mr. Schoenberger and, and uh, can't come talk about something man to man. You know, all he can do is do his little streams and uh, push Thomas's fake defaming narratives about everybody. <clears throat> so um yeah thomas hoax wars denise matow marcia stockton mind expired uh chris the gimpy jones you're all invited man come on we're, we're here uh hoaxy you said bring it on i'm bringing it on where are you at where are you at is Lestat still here What's that? Is Lestat still here? Uh, I don't know, Lestat. Lestat, you were in the chat earlier. Um, and I know we've been going on for a couple hours, but uh, if you're still here and you still want to come up, you said you had some things to share. Uh, feel free to come on up. Um, I'm just kind of browsing back through the chat. Yes, they seem to get along better than most. Well, you know, unfortunately, supposedly they came to some kind of truce uh, between Gabe and Thomas, and and that's why Gabe says probably to not talk about each other. Dropped his lawsuit, so yeah, you know, not to talk 
negatively about each other. But, uh, you know, that is what it is. I mean, you know, Thomas, Thomas was, was, uh, very damning to Gabe and, and I'm kind of shocked that Gabe, you know, dropped that, but, you know, Gabe basically said he just didn't want Thomas talking about him. So, uh, to each his own, you know, um, I've made it very clear all along that until Thomas is no longer able to harm people via social media or whatever, I'm going to be here calling Thomas out and I'm going to continue to provide all the documents and, and the proof so that people know exactly what this vile individual is, is capable of. And, uh, you know, um, I guess while we're talking, uh, you know, we can we can share uh, some of the stuff that used to be on my old channel. Some of the uh, some of the actual receipts, as they call them, uh, proving what these guys were doing. Um, let's see. I will, uh, I'll actually mute this stuff, just basically, basically some videos of music in the background <laughs> showing the receipts of what was going on that led to Pavano's breakdown, which included Thomas Schoenberger and Lisa Clapier Pistis. But, you know, they want to talk receipts, man. We've, we've had tons and tons of receipts that we've provided. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas tries to use Gabe as some type of a shield now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What I think is funny is, you know, Thomas and all of them have been, uh, you know, uh, sending these cease and desist letters to everybody, you know, and, and verbally putting out these cease and desists to everybody, you know, on social media. And, you know, it's like, that's just laughable, man, because these people aren't doing anything to you. You're the one that's been stalking these people for years and years. I mean, let's, let's be real about this shit. I don't remember seeing some of these. Oh yeah, they've been out there. They were on I the don't old. Remember seeing? They were on the old channel. Who who was saying I was talking fast and blah blah blah? Was that from? These are the doctor's paperwork from the medical place. The initial. The the second time, yeah, when you went in. Consultation or my current doctor. No, no, this was your initial consultation in October of 17. I don't remember. These were part of the medical records. I want to read those. Um, so, uh, you know, as I said, you know, Thomas's biggest problem with, you know, a defamation suit would be proving that anything he says about anyone is true. Uh, one of their, you know, uh, biggest things they've pushed all along with me is that you know i'm this big criminal and i've shared this many times i i paid for a criminal history that went all the way back to 1993 and there's no arrests no active warrants or anything so you know there is that um did i uh, try to uh you know, stop Thomas Schoenberger. Of course I did. I filed police reports for harassment and stalking. 
Uh, you can see these are dated back in 2021. Um, I was also involved uh, via a declaration I put in with the Los Angeles court case um, when Beth took him back to court for contempt. Um, and I was at that hearing via video. Um, you can also see that we filed a com uh, IC3 complaint with the FBI. Um, <coughs> you can see what, uh, <coughs> what some of that says. Pavana herself stated she was hypnotized, brainwashed, mocked, harassed, bullied, and mind controlled. I nearly lost my life. It centers around the online puzzle called Cicada 3301. According to a news channel, the FBI was investigating this puzzle in 2015. The puzzle was purportedly started by Ian Murdoch, now deceased, with Bruce Clark Jr., ex-CIA director. And that's according to what Thomas told her. The head man who injected hypnosis into his music is Thomas Schoenberger from California last known to be in Texas. This was back in the day. He impersonated a doctor and interfered with my treatment, <laughs> treatment that was needed because of him and the puzzles. He also was purportedly in the CIA Project Stargate, which Thomas claimed. He also claims to know Robert David Steele, ex-CIA, and Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. I have outlined a lot of... <clears throat> A lot in my YouTube videos, and she left a link. His music channel, she left a link. This was in a report to the FBI. And then you can clearly see that in March of 2018, we in fact sent a cease and desist letter to Thomas Schoenberger. In uh, March of 2018, imagine that we sent the cease and desist letter. And then Thomas Schoenberger thinks that, you know, on January of this year, he's going to send us a cease and desist letter. No, uh, we sent you one years ago, and that cease and desist is still valid and still stands. You can't tell someone to cease and desist telling the truth about what you've done to people. You just can't do it. I mean, it's fact. What happened happened, and and uh, your involvement is going to be known uh, by all people. Period. Period. Um, did we file a lawsuit? Yes, we filed a lawsuit. Um, Den Denise Mattow tells Thomas's version of that story. Um, she doesn't tell the truth, obviously. She never does. She just reads Thomas's scripts. Um, but yes, uh, we did file a suit, and we tried to include Thomas's bullshit in that suit. We actually filed a suit against the facility because they did not do a proper evaluation of Pavana, and they also violated her uh, HIPAA laws. Uh, you can see here it was dated December 16th of 19. Uh, this letter serves as confirmation of receipt of your complaint filed on behalf of Jesse Davis. Um, so I did file a complaint. No question about that. Here is the complaint uh, that was received by them on October 29th of 2019. Um Here you can see said medical care or treatment rendered by the defendant was negligent and below the appropriate standard of care. Um, approximate result of the negligence of the defendants. Uh, we incurred other expensive additional treatments, related expenses, loss of wages. Uh, and damages. Uh, 
where I ask for them, obviously, to award for damages or whatever, yada, 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 your normal garbage. And here was the complaint. Uh, medical malpractice and HIPAA violations, negligence, all of which stems from my wife's visit to Epworth on October 20, on October 25th of 17. On arrival, I explained that the Mishawaka police had told my wife that she would have to go directly to Epworth with me or they were going to take her there. I'd also been to Epworth prior to this to speak to the people at the intake explaining how serious the situation was. That was approximately a week prior. And I actually have video of that uh, meeting with them uh, prior to Pavana going there. Um, explaining how serious the situation was with my wife and asking for suggestions on how to get her help. I even showed them videos of how severe the situation was and how she was pushed to the brink by online people. I feel the psychological evalu evaluation was negligent and was shocked that <laughs> she was sent home without seeing a psychiatrist, no diagnosis or any kind of medication. I was also shocked that after Paula signed a privacy statement asking that they not speak to anyone but me, that they in fact had spoken to one of the people from the online group that I believe caused her breakdown. I have proof of all these violations as well as proof of the person they spoke to is still harassing us and stalking Paula and myself online and using the fact that he spoke to the facility to demonize her and myself. And there you can see it was definitely mailed. Um, they brought in a team of lawyers who wanted a lot of uh, things. And Pavana at the time obviously was still in, in her breakdown state. And she was overwhelmed. So I decided to dismiss the case, as you can see here. Uh, but we're not seeing anything. Oh, you guys aren't, you didn't see them papers that I was just showing? Oh, uh, hell, I'm not going to flick back. Did you see the stuff I was reading? No. Oh, well, shit. I'll, I'll just quickly run back through there. So this was the complaint that I was talking about that was filed uh, against the facility. Here, Here's a copy of it showing they received it. This is what I read uh, about the complaint, guys. Um, this was our notice of the claim, my cover letter that I just read. Uh, talked about Thomas leading her to a breakdown and interfering and all that. There's the envelope that it was mailed. Here's proof that I dismissed the case. <laughs> Pavana was in no, no state to go through with it. it. It was bothering her, so I just decided to dismiss it rather than try to continue. And um, okay, so that that covers that. And then, I mean, unfortunately, these are all receipts that you know we've shared in the past, but um, just just to you know reiterate and, and uh, put this stuff out there again since they you know nuked our last channel so here you can clearly see privacy or non-privacy patient status Havana check the box no you may not release public information to those requesting it she said and she wrote in handwriting yes to jesse davis they could release it to me and only me but yet we all know that thomas clearly called the facility or i should say not called spoke to the facility and they revealed pertinent patient information to thomas schoenberger which he then used to attack and demonize pavana and myself and you can see the date where she signed all this, October 25th of 17. And then we get to this part here. 
where this is. That one's not showing. This one ain't showing. What the See, fuck? look at your screen. There you go. Damn it. God, I hate that. Okay, start back at the beginning. Clearly, here is the <laughs> privacy statement from the facility where Pavana herself said, no, you may not release public information to those requesting it. And she said, yes, they could release it to me. She hand wrote my name in there. Here's the date and her signature on the bottom of that document. And then we get into the actual, um, the, the document where Thomas posed as a doctor. Um, you can clearly see patient is a 52 year old female that presents to Epworth with her husband and her son, Brandon, for an evaluation. Patient reports her mood is currently fine, but tired. They, they were keeping her up all night with all this crazy shit. Patient reports a regular appetite. Patient reports she sleeps from five to more hours. Patient is considering purchasing noise reduction headphones. Now, you'll see further down in here that she's doing that because Thomas told her to do that. And that's how his music gets you when you have these noise canceling headphones and you stare at all this hypnotic bullshit. Um, patient lives with her husband, her three adult children, at the time her sister and her sister's daughter. And the brother's daughter, which was the niece who had been molested, uh, told everybody that we had court ordered legal custody of her. No weapons, uh, no OPTX, no medications, no prior patient records. She's had no other cases of mental illness or been on any meds. Patient reports having one drink with her dinner at night. No other substance use reported. Uh, her one drink at night is maybe a shot of her uh, fireball, fireball in her Pepsi, in her big glass of Pepsi every night. So uh, just to make that clear. No sensory hallucinations, no suicide intentions, plan or intent. No previous attempts. Patient reports her husband wants her admitted because she struggles to sleep. Patient gave her cell phone to a social worker to talk to her friend. And there they're referring to him as Dr. Thomas Schoenberger, a neurologist in California. Pavana never told them that Thomas Schoenberger was a neurologist in California, nor a doctor of any kind. Thomas can try to twist that any way he wants. But this is their actual writings of what was going on as it was going on. Nowhere in here does it say Thomas told them he was not a doctor. <coughs> um, he goes on to say, Dr. Schoenberger reported that the patient has not ever made any statement of threats to herself or others. No history of psychosis. And that she is just a woman that is very exhausted and needs some sleep. So he gave a prognosis. Then he says, I told her she needs to see a doctor about medications like Xanax. Uh, there he basically suggests a prescription. And get noise-canceling headphones. <coughs> Thomas clearly says, I told her she needs to get Xanax and noise-canceling headphones. Dr. Schoenberger adds that she's fearful of medications, but I told her everything will work out. I don't think she needs to be there. She just needs some sleep. Yeah, that sure sounds like somebody acting like a doctor and giving a prognosis, a diagnosis, and also recommending a um, narcotic medication. For a patient. That's sure what it sounds like to me. Um, the son reports patient told him someone from the government called her 
and they knew everything about my dad, but that he would be safe. Uh, if you guys remember, we went through that. I actually showed, number one, a video where Pavana was in her psychosis telling me that someone called and they had her petrified of the police. She said, Thomas told me we're targets in this video that we shared in a recent stream. So, yes, Thomas called her, told her he was from the government or act like he was from the government. And Thomas told her we were targets, but that they were going to keep us safe. Patient denies receiving such a call. I don't know why she denied that. It's very clear even in the video uh, what had happened. Son told her that she met, which I, that don't make no sense, that she met Dr. Schoenberger telepathically. Patient reports that she's psychic, which Thomas and them kept leading her to believe that she was having these premonitions and that she was a prophet is what they were trying to uh, pump into her brain. Husband reports patient had told him that <laughs> she had considered suicide, which was very true. Pavana has since admitted that, uh, even though she, you know, she told them when she was there that she wasn't suicidal, but she was suicidal at times. And, and didn't want them to keep me. Yeah, she didn't want them to keep him. And Thomas told her what to yes. tell them. He said, as long as you're not a threat to yourself or anyone else, they can't hold you. Right. Thomas was on the phone with her, telling her what to tell this place so they couldn't hold her there. He said, Lioness, remember? Which was the name of one of his music videos. Yes. Yes. So, so Thomas, although he's trying to proclaim innocence, Thomas was on the phone with Pavana while she was amidst this horrible mental breakdown and she was at the facility not only did he represent himself as a doctor to these people but he was on the phone talking to pavana who wasn't of her right mind telling her what she needed to tell them so that they would not be able to hold her there now you tell me that ain't some sick shit guys tell me that's not some sick bullshit um uh, uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, husband reports that two days ago, patient told him she had seen a dark shadow and it tried to choke her and push her down. Patient reports that she can see spirits due to being psychic. Patient reports the persona was named Brother Box. Imagine that. Thomas also had her so scared of Brother Box, so scared of Brother Box, it was it was horrible. Patient had seen her primary care physician two weeks ago, and the husband told him that the patient has been having issues for about five weeks, which at this point would have been seven weeks. Primary care physician prescribed Klonopin, but the patient didn't want to take it because of side effects. Patient adds, Thomas says that Prozac is bad, but Xanax is good. Thomas was really, really pushing to get Pavana on Xanax. And he kept telling me, if I couldn't get the doctor to prescribe it, you can buy it on the streets. Just go get her some Xanax and feed her some Xanax and she'll be better. I have those emails. I believe we've shared them. We can cover them again at some point in time. Uh, I will take my medicine. I don't need to stay here. Patient does not want uh, inpatient care. Patient reports she is open to outpatient suggestions. Husband would like patient admitted, which was 100% correct, but was also open to outpatient suggestion. Patient son wants patient admitted. Patient will not be admitted at this time because there's no acute criteria, meaning that she's not a harm to herself because Thomas told her to say that and Thomas told them that she has no history, suicidal tendencies or nothing of that nature. Patient is encouraged to follow up with her primary care doctor, <coughs> which we did. 
unfortunately took months and months to get in to see a psychiatrist. So um, that's just some of the receipts, hoax wars, that's already been shared out there publicly. But then they struck our channel down because they didn't want the truth out there. So this so-called longtime friend of yours that you <laughs> did this defaming interview with the other day is nothing but a liar and a piece of shit and a manipulator who takes advantage of people and harms people. Those are the facts. Those are the facts. Um, I don't think uh, that there's really any need to get into a bunch of this other, you know, uh, crazy shit. But, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's tons and tons of emails and, and shit that we've never really covered because, uh, you know, it, they got our channel taken down and we ended up, uh, you know, having to uh, start over again. But, uh, here's, here's another debunking video um, that has a lot of the emails in it um, that we've shared at other times. Uh, there's literally uh, gigs and gigs worth of this shit. So, hoax, apparently you're as big a coward as Mr. Schoenberger because, you know, you called me out and said, bring it. So, here I am. We've been on here now for three hours and I tagged you so you knew exactly when the stream was going to be on, yet no sign of any of you. Imagine that. Imagine that. Okay, uh, Aiken, that's fine. Uh, what I can do is uh, you you can pop up on panel and, and um, we can have a discussion after I shut the stream down or whatever. Yeah, Siren, you're right. It's, it's very, very cult-like, all it's, of it. It's coming up on Thomas's second big interview, oh, starting yeah. in like 15 minutes. That's right. That's right. The Titties Frost show is going to be starting soon. Maybe we should uh, dual stream it. I'm, I'm not sure how I can do that, but yeah, that, you, that might be interesting. share window, and you have that YouTube that, that could be interesting. Open in another tab. Okay, there's Jedi popped in the basement. What's up, Jedi? Hey, not much, man. Not much. I uh, Something that kind of, like, interests me um, about all this is somebody that isn't specifically Thomas, but uh -huh. somebody that I know Thomas um, apparently worked with in the past from what uh, pe uh, multiple people have told me. Um, this, uh, all seeing you, this, this lady, yep. I'm kind of interested in her because, um, I, I was, uh, watching, uh, I guess Tretch, Tretch's stream, uh, -huh. uh, last night. And I, uh, I got up on panel for like maybe a few minutes, but I had to go back to work and I literally got off work. And seeing that, like, uh, Hoax Wars was actually on his stream. And it was interesting because, like, they were talking about uh, <clears throat> you and how, like, she, <clears throat> like, basically almost did kind of stuff that you're, you're talking about Thomas did with uh, your wife. You know, like, this mind manipulation, like, warping uh, of his mind, you know. And it 
really was crazy because they started talking about like how she was like almost like controlling content creators like uh, Nathan and uh, like Titus Frost and, and um, other people that may not be like t um, Thomas affiliated, but like uh, it, it turned out that like you was the main driver of these people going to steam it. And like, basically that she was controlling, I guess the keys to where they could cash out their crypto that they made on the, uh, that platform. Yeah. She, she was actually at one point in time, uh, paid by Thomas, um, basically to troll or control, whatever you want to call it. Uh huh. And, um, she was very prevalent in the, um, the Lepo show um, that Thomas also controlled for some point in time. And then uh, they kind of booted Thomas out of that and so forth. And then, yeah, this name Frank Bacon that comes up occasionally that doesn't get talked about a lot, apparently was also another one behind the scenes. Um, yeah. With this group. And yeah, that's what they did. They they literally trolled people and and harassed people and and uh, just like they were trying to drive them out of their minds, you know. That's yeah, it's just weird because, like said, I know that um, in chat earlier, um, Aiken was talking about or questioning like who was the person that called the Nathan psychiatrist the first time because apparently. Um, he had had issues before and i think um he was alluding to uh like the people uh i guess you and uh his ex like co-host that jelena chick um and supposedly like they were in like cahoots where jelena was playing nathan <clears throat> and really they were like gang stalking him and and really fucking with him and I think they, you know, I don't know what the hell happened or why that even happened. Well, I think I, I, was that around the was that around the time the original like Cappy situation. It, it very well could have been. I don't remember the exact timeline to be honest, because you know, I mean, I, I've been honest with everybody on here. My purpose when I came to Twitter and YouTube, and I believe it was like 2018 was to find out who was involved and what actually happened to my wife. And I've tried to stay focused on that <laughs> instead of the other Instead stuff. of the side stuff. Yeah. And it's and just I'll weird be because it like it almost like interconnects. You know what I mean? Oh, it's it like does. one big fucking tangled up ball of fucking smart. It, it all revolves around the same group of people, put it that way. The same group of uh survivors and victims and the same group of perpetrators and you know i i first i i only caught a couple of nathan's shows you know back in the day i really wasn't into watching a lot of that stuff on here um and then nathan actually reached out to myself and my wife and he wanted to do an interview with us about what happened to my wife and how Thomas Schoenberger was involved in all that. And unfortunately that never really panned out. I, I just, I didn't know Nathan very well. Um, you know, and I didn't want to share a lot of the information with some people on here that I'm really not, you know, that yeah, well I, 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 see what you, I understand what you mean. And, and, and you know the what same, I mean? that's some serious shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, just don't go around broadcasting that. Yeah, the same with others, you know, Professor Dilly reached out to us, she was, uh, she was one, you know, we've had other people reach out, but, you know, I'm reluctant to give a lot of the information out to other people, because you never know how they're actually going to use it. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, to be mean to anybody, I'm just saying if I, if I don't really know you, mm -hmm. I'm certainly not going to provide you with, you know, uh, email accesses and, and shit like that. And, uh, 
So I decided to start streaming myself. And all these people that claim that we've been attacking him for four, five, six years, that's bullshit, man. I haven't even been streaming for but two years, roughly. And, uh, you know, we're, did, did we have a presence on social media, on Twitter and stuff, where we were talking about this? Yeah, certainly. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's just crazy, man. And I, I feel for Nathan, I, I, I truly hope that Nathan <laughs> is able to find himself and, and, like I said, get regrounded. But oh, yeah. that's going to be a hard thing for him to do, man, if, if he is still communicating and hanging with these people. It, it's mm -hmm. evident just by their comments and shit that they've been putting out over the last few days that they do not have Nathan's best interest at heart, period. And uh, that's sad. That's sad. <coughs> yeah, I understand. Like, um, I guess. So, so someone actually supposedly reached out to Nathan's psychiatric uh, people uh, that I'm kind of curious about. I'd be real interested to speak to Nathan about that if if he's, you know, uh, in a position at some point to talk about it because we have proven that Thomas Schoenberger spoke to my wife's psychiatric facility and, in fact, posed as a doctor, more or less. Um, and we also have proven... Uh, and I have all the info on that, that he reached out to a young man from Canada named Zach Quaid. Thomas and some other of these people were paying this young man who was known to have mental challenges. They were paying him to put videos together and attack people on their behalf. We have all the proof of that. We have the PayPal receipts. We have the actual emails from Thomas scripting this young man. And we have the videos that the kid did that were totally scripted by Thomas. Thomas interfered with his mental health uh, caretakers as well. That's at, That's been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so if, if he also did that to Nathan, if it was Thomas, that would be very interesting to find out who did or if it was someone tied to Thomas. <laughs> uh, look, now, see, this Aiken Drum guy, he he's really interesting because I've heard that he used to be, an, he actually used to be like a, a Lift the Veil mod. Um, but he like left and stopped watching Nathan after... Um, Nathan had on like uh, Nick Fuentes, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Like that's just, like I said, that's just stupid shit. But I, I don't um, know. I, it's I kind of it, that anybody that's involved with Nathan right at the moment, no matter who it is, including yourself, Jedi. I hope that you guys are honestly there to help guide Nathan in the right direction and, you know, not feed into his. Oh, 100% uh, dude. Like, to, to feed into his issue because yeah. that's what they tried to do to my wife. They, they wanted to continue <laughs> to keep her down in this fucking place that she didn't belong. And that, you know, Schoenberger went to the extent to, she, she asked him to remove some of her, what she called glitches, her gibberish stuff that she had posted on some of his, uh, music videos and shit. She asked him to please take that stuff down and he refused and he said, oh no, people love it. You know, you're you're gathering the harvest now. He made, made it out to her like what was going on with her mentally was a great thing. And so did this Lisa Clapier lady, you know. Um, so I, I just, I hope none of that's going on with Nathan with any of these people. But unfortunately, from what I've seen, from Thomas and even some comments from Hoax and some of the other Thomas mindless minions, as I've dubbed them. <laughs> um, yeah, I honestly, I want to try and like make sure I'm okay because from like if I was just like somebody else and I was watching Nathan's streams, like honestly, I would be sus suspected of myself just because like 
Nathan seems to like the last couple streams. He like kind of asked like my opinion, like, Hey Jedi, what should I do? Should, you know what I mean? And I don't want people to think like, you know, um, I'm, I'm putting like things in his ears or fucking anything. Like said, I'm just, I'm just a dude, just a, a fan of his. And it's like said, it's just crazy. Um, like all the, how all this stuff is in, intertwined and all like I, mean, I I didn't even know that um Nathan uh went to a mental health facility or something uh previously I mean besides him you know saying something you know like in uh in like a in a chat or something well it's it's a very a very narrow line to walk uh, when you're dealing with somebody like that, and I can tell you from experience, you you want to try to be gentle, and you know sometimes you feel as though just giving a a, a nod yes or something to what they're saying is the best thing to do. But in reality, I mean, it, it's not a good thing to just look past what's going on with them and. And you, you have to let them know, hey, look, you know, you, you yeah. need to come out of this. You, you need to come back to reality, you know. And, I, I mean, it's tough because if they are your friend, Yeah, I feel, I feel right? bad for him because, like I said, he's just, got, um, he's just got these signs, man. He's just got yeah. these signs. Like, he's spending a lot of money, honestly. Like, he just yeah. – now, I know he doesn't have, like, uh, transportation – because of what he said happened with his mom's car but he, i mean he just like bought a uh an electric bike for like uh i mean we're talking at, at thirty five hundred dollars or more and yeah and then he's talking also like i mean it's just it's just silly like why are you spending that kind of money when you're also telling people that like your wife allegedly like locked you out of your fucking bank account, closed your bank account and all this shit. Right. You know, like that doesn't sound like somebody that's really concerned about like <clears throat> money or like well, really the well-being of themselves, like in the not too distant future. It, it sounds like somebody planning for the right this second and not planning for, uh, you know the future. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I've avoided, you know, the last couple of times that I saw he was live, just because, you know, I I don't want to cause more issues for him by all these idiots, you know, in the background trying to tell him, oh look, Jesse's trying to take advantage, of him, yada yada yada. Because as I said, me and Nathan, you know, we're, we're not good friends. We've we've communicated in the past briefly. Um, so yeah, I don't want these guys to keep, you know, uh, okay, trying trying to blow that shit up, you know. But I mean, I'm a firm believer he needs to, you know, if if at all possible, avoid social media as a whole for a while, and and uh, you know, like I said, get get grounded back with himself. And and I mean, uh, his wife to- said that he's got a problem; like he's addicted to the internet. Lots of like it's are. tough. Yeah. yeah, you got it. You're damn right. I think yeah. everybody is, man. Yeah, yeah. Lots of people definitely. Are. I mean, I, I, I sit and see people that stream every single day, sometimes numerous times a day, and I'm like, man, I, I honestly just don't know how they can do that. I mean, I come on occasionally, and we might have a long ass stream, but. He just couldn't do it every single day, numerous times a day. I mean, number one, I don't have that kind of time. You know, I'm busy doing other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Titus Frost, upcoming stream chat. Nathan's in Titus's chat. Yes. Right okay. Now. Has, has Show Me the Burger showed up yet? or? No, it's not. It starts in like. Oh, it ain't even started yet. He's just in the chat. Okay. So. Is he only on uh, Odyssey now? Uh, I like he on YouTube or trust, what? He's on hashtag YouTube. trust fund babies. You know, that's kind of funny because, like I said, um, 100% Aiken um, about trust fund babies because, like I said, that's another thing that would probably 
had Nathan really shook because like his dad's like having severe issues with like Parkinson's and you know, he's getting towards the end of his life. So, you know, his mom's already gone and you know, he basically lives at his dad's right now. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, I mean, his dad was in the, uh, in the high, high up in the EPA. So he's got, I mean, he's got a, an account I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why he's okay. Or he doesn't really care. Right. But, right. but you would think as a human being, you wouldn't want to aspire to more than just like, you know, living off a check or, you know what I mean? Like the residuals of somebody else's, you know, livelihood or work. Well, I mean, the bad part is there's been so many what everybody calls psyops, you know. Um, you, you look at the, the Pizzagate shit and the Q shit and all, all this craziness that's been out there. And I haven't followed any of that shit. I wasn't involved in the puzzles. I I got better things in life to do than to, than to piss around with all that social media drama shit. But, I mean, there's been a lot of people, man, that I've seen... Uh, and a lot of people that have reached out even that have just went down some rabbit holes and were totally unable to pull themselves back out of them. And and that's shit that's right. scary. That's scary shit because it's so easy to access this crap on the internet. Uh not only for adults but children as well, you know. It's 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 a scary thing. And uh You're right. Honestly, like somebody uh that <clears throat> that also recently passed under like, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. He, he, he was a streamer. His name was uh Davy Croco. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, but uh, he was, he was like a uh, really good, like independent investigative journalist. And he just so happened to be like talking about some like, his main bag was talking about like the the stuff that uh, you know everybody can agree on the the PDF file stuff is disgusting and shouldn't be normalized in a, a normal functioning society. Um, so he would like talk about like just outrageous stuff, but he had on this one guy um, that like. Like you say, you have the receipts on uh, Thomas and all, right? Well, right. like this dude was like some, like <laughs> he had the receipts basically on a lot, a lot of like crazy, like government shit. Um, and he was talking about how like uh, New Hampshire is like seriously like the most wickedest wickedest uh state and the governor is like so dirty he's like involved with like the like drug cartel and it has to do i think some i think somewhere there was a statistic that said like uh new hampshire was like the highest like fentanyl or something you know what i mean some type of drug capital hmm. in the entire u.s and also it also had to do with like human trafficking i remember they they were talking about like uh like a plane flew in to an airport nobody knew you know it was full of like just illegals and they got on like a bus nobody was allowed to you know it was just like shady shit. well i mean obviously human trafficking obviously is a very serious problem um, you know, all these people who try to discredit it and make it out like it's, you know, not really going on. That's, that's crazy because it, it's happening every day. everywhere. Oh, my God, dude. Like, you wouldn't believe. I, I was uh, actually shown, like, somebody was literally sitting in a car at a uh, fucking fast food place. It happened to be Arby's. But literally, they were just filming like you watched it like these like there was this you know the white utility vans like the american pickers kind of mm -hmm. had 
Okay, what it was was there was like this fat woman that was wearing glasses. She had like a fucking uh, like board, you know, a fucking, you know, a board you'd hold the fucking paper on so you could clipboard. mark off. And she, yeah, clipboard. Thank you. Um, and basically, like, you would see like just these random people walk up with like a fucking envelope or fucking like just you know something they would give it to him the woman and then literally after she like would write shit down and all out of the fucking uh van would come a kid wow and yeah. then literally they watched they would like then th then the person that did the video like pan you know followed these people walking away and they literally like one got in like a blacked out SUV. The other one got in a fucking like van. Like it is so fucked, man. Like the things that go on in, in this society, man. Right. Right. Yeah. Go yeah. Well, so uh, uh, apparently they're getting ready to start this interview with Thomas, you know, which I'm sure will be just like the one we just uh, watched. Um, because him and Titus are, are, you know, best buds as well. And, uh, I'm sure a lot of people will, will vanish and, and head over that direction, um, to watch it. And maybe that'll be another, another stream. Oh, I'm not going to share a stream because, you know, that, that gives them a reason to try to strike you, obviously. Oh, I'm sure Marsha and all the mindless minions will be there. Uh, hopefully, you know, Nathan uh, uh, will be able to hold his own there in the chat if, if he's over there. And, uh, you know, they, they won't try and push him further down no fucking rabbit holes. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure all the mindless minions will be there. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to restream his stream and give him a, an excuse to try to strike me, you know, Uh Hoax can attempt to strike me if he wants, but I mean, I'll, I'll definitely dispute that with YouTube because he had tons of my content in that uh, in that stream that we were talking about earlier, you know, and uh, we were using it under fair use, so I'm I'm not going to worry about it. But uh, yeah, no, I um, <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, I don't. I hope that I didn't like derail or deflect or detract from the, uh, you know, no, stream no. I going off on, like, I just figured I'd stick with like kind of adjacent kind of topics uh, yeah, that so, may not be right on the same, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, if, and when Nathan, uh, is, is doing a little better and, and stuff, uh, you know, it'd be interesting. Maybe I'll try to, you know, watch some of his stuff, uh, when he pops on and, um, like I said, it'd be interesting to know if he knows who interfered and who contacted his uh, mental health facility. Um, the that, that, uh, a big a big part of information that some people might need in the future. Yeah, the um, some people at the time were suggesting it would either be uh, like either like you through maybe Jelena or his wife then or his dad. Huh. Because I think uh I think this this most recent time uh I think his dad did like call but they didn't really do anything at the time. And I think that was like at the beginning like around uh like the 22nd of may like when he had his nasty stream or like his you know his not the not best day <laughs> yeah so so yeah somebody in the chat said uh somebody else getting ready to go live yeah titus frost is getting ready to go live with thomas schoenberger with another Thomas Schoenberger interview 
Um, like I said, you guys all know what that's going to be because they are uh, they are kissing cousins, basically. So uh, it'll be nothing but another scripted bullshit session. But if anybody cares to go watch it, uh, there you go. I, I just put the link in the chat. Um, and it'll be starting here in a couple of minutes. Um, I'm sure some of the people that are in the background here um, that aren't participating in the chat will be fleeing over there to watch it themselves. And uh, we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely watch it and we'll probably come back and talk about it because I'm sure old Tommy boy will will be sure to bring me up and so will so will Titus. I, I really piss Titus off by calling him Titties Frost all the time. It makes me <laughs> really angry. But, hey, uh, can I ask you a question? Um, sure. Do you know this uh, do you know this Terry Joyce lady? I, I do know her. I, I'm not. I mean, not like, I'm not saying yeah, like, no. okay, like yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you're sitting there talking to her, going visit her. I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, yeah. like so, on YouTube and all. Our, our first encounter with her was not a very good one. She popped onto the scene and she had a stream with Denise Madcow on it. And uh, several people went into her chat and and warned her that this denise was you know bad news and you know she yeah, really tooth convoy yeah didn't didn't want to listen to this lady's delusions and then run with them and uh she was also apparently you know uh in conversations with some of the thomas people um because the stream was talking about the cicada token and all that shit oh, and yeah. uh she wised up really quick and found out they were trying to use her. So she broke away and then they attacked her. And in the meantime, she, you know, she thought we were the bad guys. And uh, okay. so we, we talk now occasionally and, you know, uh, I have to say she's, she's been triggered for quite a while ever since Thomas and them, you know, um, um, did what they did to her and then started attacking her and used her not. She's been triggered and I, I think she's another one that you know should probably step back for a little while and, and uh, you know sort some things out. Well, something she says is, is right on the money, but yeah, um, she gets a lot of it mixed up sometimes and, and yeah, uh, I didn't know if you uh, seen she actually she actually uh, posted a video today like a uh, a reaction video to the Thomas Schoenberger hoax wars interview. I caught part of it. Not all. Of yeah, it. dude. It was I kind of funny it. because literally she was talking about me and I don't know. It just seemed I have, I have to uh, go back and watch it again, but it was just like, she was talking. She clearly was talking about me. But then I think she went, you know, uh, and tried, like, then she started talking about, like, literally hoaxes stream, like, in his channel. Right. But was still, like, it almost sounded like she was talking about me, though, at this, you know what I mean? It was just yeah. weird. Well, and, and, you know, like I said, she, she tries to be. Uh, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the uh, lift the veil thing. Not yeah, always she, right, but always honest. You know? Yeah, she tries to she tries to uh, you know put out uh, what she believes is right, and like I said, sometimes she's just she's being fed bad information. Uh, to be totally honest, a lot of times, but uh, you know, I, I think for the most part, I believe she's a good person, <laughs> and and uh, uh, so her goggles. Um, I, I just I just grabbed my remote viewing goggles, uh, <laughs> I just so that I could you know, dude, pay attention. Is that, to is that really you, or is that your astral body right there? <laughs> you know, uh, I just man, this eight <laughs> drum man, I love you, dude. I like his comments, dude. It's funny, like the the. One about I am breathing, but then he talks about the Robo Cat riding grannies. <laughs> Aiken, yeah. Aiken has a um, 
Aiken has a very wacky sense of humor sometimes. He can just go from one place to another. <laughs> uh, oh, there's Terry. Shit. God, oh, did well, I see did Thank I say your name three times, Terry? Damn it. We summoned you, didn't we? Uh, she you said, say I her name. The you, white rabbit, right? But, no, like I said, I, I didn't get to see the actual uh, stream when she went live because I was... Uh, I was actually floating down the river today with uh, my wife and family, but uh, yeah. I was hoping like to check because uh, typically when you do like a live stream or something, you know, the, the live, the chat is kept up, but uh, maybe right. it was still like processing because she, there wasn't a live chat. So, but thank you for uh, letting me know. I just wanted to kind of put that out there. I'm not, I'm not hoax wars for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, I really have never paid any attention to hoax wars. So I, you know, I don't know who the hell he is. Don't really care, but um, you know, obviously he's, you know, going to push the Schoenberger narratives. We, we know that now. Um and, uh, you know, hey, he called me out on a stream and I tried to, uh, you know, uh, invite him up. But, uh, you know, as with most of them, they they don't care to um, they don't care to uh, come on and, and uh, you know, handle things in the right way. So they yeah. just like control. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Like, it's kind of funny because. Um, Nathan I'm is remote actually. Viewing. I'm remote viewing for you, Terry. Here you go. Here, let I'm, me. I'm remote viewing for you. Let me. Uh, let me. Let me get grounded first, and <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna conjure my spirit animal, the uh, the Moloch owl. Okay. <laughs> you know, like just that. Uh, <sighs> Man, that hurts my freaking uh, extremities. <laughs> I'm not quite as young and uh, you know, amb you know, flexible as I once was. Aiken, Siren has hoaxes poster on her wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Terry. I just got to be careful because if I ever get down around Texas, I can't wear this wig down there because, you know, Denise might try to yank it off my head. <laughs> Man. Man, Texas is like a scary place. Yeah, they got big roaches down there. We all know that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. We've seen them crawling uh, around some life. I've trees. never, you know, it's ironic because I never, ever ever watched like anything with uh denise but i i know people would like even in just like just ltv's chat like talk about the cockroach that was behind her like on a stream or something <laughs> or oh, it was dude, like <laughs> there was there was literally one stream she did i bet there was a dozen of them in the stream crawling around on all her craft uh, products that she supposedly had for sale. And I mean, oh, yeah. they, were just, they were just out in, in full force in one of her streams. It was, yeah. it was pretty damn crazy. Yeah. And, uh, she actually had one crawling on a lamp right next to her. And yeah. she was banging on the lamp with a knitting needle and kind of scared away and it just stayed right there staring at her like what are you doing lady i ain't going nowhere it was it was it was nuts oh, uh, she dude. actually stopped in the middle of the stream and was banging on the light it kind of sounded like she was trying to imitate um lepo's cow cowbell she was beating on that lamp and uh, she, <laughs> dude talk about lepo dude i heard that guy said, wears oh. mini skirts yeah <laughs> 
I don't know. She said, you guys, you guys know we got cockroaches down here. You're going to make fun of me. Just go ahead. You know, so uh, we did, obviously, but uh, yeah. yeah. But it's all in fun, right? I, I don't know about uh, Lepo. Um, you know, there's, he, he disappeared and some people claim that he passed away and nobody's ever provided uh full documented proof of that but yeah he just all of a sudden disappeared and unless he's around under a sock name you know yeah yeah that's funny because like i swear to god in the chat earlier like skills said somebody was like uh trying to get uh oh god skills was trying to get somebody to like use frank bacon steam it or something to make to make it seem like he was alive or what the fuck ever. Yeah, that guy. I haven't heard very much about him. But I heard he was uh he was in, into that the steam it thing. Apparently Frank Bacon has been involved with the Thomas Schoenberger shenanigans uh all along and goes way back. Uh you know, but there's 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 a few people that really aren't mentioned a lot. I mean, you know, Frank Bacon being one of them and, and Michael Levine being another one, you know. Yeah. Michael Levine uh, has had a lot to do with all this cicada bullshit. He has to be aware of all the uh, mind fuckery that went on and the people that have had breakdowns and, and all that shit, but yet he still supports all that crap. I just said, to me, I, that blows me away. I don't understand that, you know. Yeah. But, uh, so Captain's playing the same mind portal opening music right now. Oh, lovely! I'm playing the unnamed road. Oh, he's playing the unnamed road, the yeah. same one. Yeah, it's yeah. got a white rabbit in it and everything. Oh, nifty, nifty, dude! What? Um, play something a little different. Oh, than back now. Before, um. Sewer town, all now back and and here is Jesse Davis has done it. All but I do keep an eye on these people. <laughs> I bet. Yes, yes she keeps she an does. eye and keeps one one beautiful gaping tooth. I, I, I almost like feel for her. I'd love to, dude. I would love to like start a GoFundMe for her to get like the. The uh, implants, yeah, like some implants or something. Just get, just get it all. Get the nice porcelain, you know, veneers. There get has a night been people that have offered to pay for her dental work if she would just shut up and quit talking. <laughs> Dude, I I tell you what, you know how they say a smile could change your world. I really yeah. believe it could in hers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she could. She could maybe smile and go tell like some NPC people in real life off the internet about like all this dumb shit <laughs> and see what happens, you know? <laughs> wow, we know. Denise Matteau here. The the death cult sewer town. They are putting out videos. Taking advantage of a very mentally ill man. The delusional obsession of Pavana and Jesse Davis. Pavana and Jesse Davis are picking it up and hooking Nathan's madness into Pavana's, frankly, fake performance of a nervous breakdown. Now, Pavana. Lift the Veil is a friend of this channel. Lift the Veil is a friend of the Titus channel, Titus just said. Yeah. But did you guys just hear that nifty Denise script of Thomas's, you know, that we're, we're playing this whole game with Lift the Veil? Pavana is, frankly, fake performance of a nervous breakdown. Now, Pavana is truly insane. She's very mentally ill. One of the things about the obsession that's scary is that she is so obsessed with the whole Cicada Gamer group that she imitates them. We take the game. 
<laughs> that is one big pile of shit. She was doing the same to me at a time. She was she was showing pictures of herself where she these were her cartoon pictures, but she drew clothing on herself that was clearly an imitation of clothing on my daughter in some of my daughter's photographs. <laughs> very creepy, very creepy. Pavana has named herself after one of Thomas's Twitter profiles. She calls herself Painter 33 now, and she puts a little icon about herself being Painter 33 because he recently opened a profile for himself. As uh, wait, Denise, Pavana's pointing to the dates, and I believe Pavana had that Painter 33 um, months before Thomas. If you look at the dates, icon on these about things. herself being Painter 33 because he recently opened a profile for himself. As composer 33. I mean, this is. Oh, wait. She now, just said Thomas recently opened this up as composer. But wait a minute. Marsha and them the other night, and including in a Hoax Wars interview, they clearly stated that Thomas isn't on Twitter or the internet. They keep <laughs> claiming that he's nowhere around, that he's too busy. Yeah. Composing is wonderful pieces of music, Denise. It cannot be both ways. It can't be both oh, ways. Man. No, you know what's funny is like how easily you could um, debunk her claim that the fact that she used okay clothes that her that she purports her daughters wore in photos. <laughs> yeah. You know. Hey, guess what? There's there's only a, a finite amount of colors unless you're going to get down to like, you know, um, periwinkle pink. And this yeah. one is uh, pixie dust pink. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, so it like that. Everybody wears clothes except nudists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when she came off the wall with that one, that Pavana you know, created these images to look like she was wearing her daughter's clothes. I about lost them. I'm like, are you fucking nuts? She just created these little cartoon characters <laughs> of herself. It had nothing to do with her daughter, but she tries to tie everything to her daughter. So, yeah, so my question is like, at the end of the day, I like I said, I never, I don't know anything really about her. But, like, what is her purpose? Like, why is she on the internet? And why does she have to spend so much spiritual, mental, physical energy, like, making this shit up? Like, what is, what good does it, is it, like, literally grandma doesn't have anything to do? And this is her, like, vice? So, Denise has been on for quite a while. And Denise's entire... Uh, existence on social media has basically been about her daughter's death. Um, okay. Claiming it was a murder when in fact it was ruled a suicide. Okay. Uh, and constantly trying to tie and accuse other people of being involved in cults or gangs that were involved with his daughter's death, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Thomas as we have very clearly stated, uh, looks for vulnerable people and looks okay. for whatever, whatever crack he can find to wiggle his way in and take advantage of their vulnerability and use them as one of his attack soldiers. Well, Thomas did that with Denise. And for a long time, Thomas and Denise were apparently total enemies. Some of the shit they said about each other was fucking horrible. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, out of nowhere, Denise was in love with Thomas. Well, we found out what that was because Thomas supposedly wrote a 
requiem for people that have passed and he told Denise that it was a memorial to her daughter and obviously he was playing into a vulnerability about her daughter's yeah. death yeah told her this requiem was about her daughter and that was enough to suck her in on to the whole thomas schoenberger side it was up. enough to make her bend the knee oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i'm and sorry i i do not purport to be a uh mental health expert or any type but in my personal opinion be just because i like watch i've seen the show hoarders it just sounds like she has some unfinished mental anguish with that well, like I literally I, I just found out somebody that i used to know like that just had like just had a baby two years ago their baby just died like two i mean a two-year-old they're they just drowned so like i was kind of like oh my god that's horrible imagine. exactly so i'm like like that could probably cause this per you know, I would think that could maybe cause a mental snap or some type of Denise Mattel type situation in my friend. Well, so so her daughter was not a young child when she well, passed. Yeah. Um, but, but still, you know what I mean? The mother I, outliving the daughter. Yeah, I do think a big part of it is... And having, she, like, trouble, having trouble accepting it was a suicide. Yeah, she's you know not, what I mean? she's not been able to come to terms with her daughter's death and and the fact you know if your child takes their own life i mean think about it everybody uh if someone near you commits suicide your first thought is oh could i have done something to help or to stop this i had a yeah, cousin yeah. that committed suicide and i had spoken to her um uh, 30 days prior and i i did reach out to her her family to her parents and her siblings and i said hey something's not right i just bumped into her and uh, just by speaking to her something's not right and about a month later she was she was gone and uh you know my first thought was was there something i could have said or, or whatever you know but mm -hmm. um so I, I think Denise honestly has just not been able to grasp the fact that there was something apparently so wrong in her daughter's life that she felt the only way out was to take her life. And, and uh, you know, sometimes it's a guilt feeling or, or whatever, who knows, but I don't think Denise has ever had the chance or taken the time to come to terms with it and truly grieve her daughter's death. I think that's part of the problem. You know, yeah. honestly, if it was if it was me trying to take my best guess, it would be like my thought would be maybe she didn't she wasn't always there, maybe, or maybe she didn't support her daughter in a time of need. And she feels like she let her down. So now her only way to atone is to be like her biggest like defender and have to create this narrative to to make it work for her right right no i i believe that's a part of it as well i mean there's there's rumored stories out there that uh have had some uh evidence shown that denise and her daughter didn't have the best relationship and uh you know um it was it was kind of odd because in her daughter's suicide letter that she left um she really didn't mention her mother and then there was also like a i guess for a lack of better term like a a, a last will and testament that she wanted certain things that belonged to her to go to certain people and she uh -huh. never met her mother in in that either uh -huh. um, so you know that's that would lead one to believe that they probably didn't have a you know real good relationship with each other um yeah and you know like i said there's there's a, a lot of different stories out there about it um there's only there's so only yeah so you can obviously see like you say if somebody 
you know, like I said, uh, can can pinpoint this. And guess what? You make that requiem. Oh yeah, go. yeah. So, it was okay. it was strictly to to take advantage and to suck her in. You know, no no question. And and it's sad because you know. Denise has all this going on and she ruthlessly defames people. And I mean, she can't use the excuse that she doesn't know what she's doing because she clearly does, you know, mm -hmm. she, she talks about, there's, there's no insanity deal here. <laughs> yeah. No she, knows, she knows right from wrong. And, and, you know, she's not in a situation like, Nathan is or like Pavana was or some other people where she's totally on a mental break of sorts and doesn't know what she's saying. Uh, that's, that's the bad part about it. But she, uh, you know, I believe that she's probably, um, gotten paid in one, in one way or another. Uh, she t always talked about how broke she was and she could hardly afford to, uh, order her craft materials every month and she couldn't afford to pay for stream yards and this and that but all uh -huh. of a sudden she's no longer the cheap phone ninja she's now got a new phone she's got some kind of a tablet you know and she's this big time streamer now supposedly and you know <laughs> so so i do be believe that she's getting paid for what she's doing in some aspect so she's a coin intel pro agent yeah and you know somebody like her that lives on she's she claims she lives on eight or nine hundred bucks a month social security i mean that's that's a uh that's a fucking tough trick in its own number one but to her you know getting an extra 20 bucks or 50 bucks a month from some of these people to troll other people fuck that that's great for her she would you know that to her that seems like you know, she, she's wealthy, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, they like to prey on people like that. Zach Quaid, the guy from Canada, that we have all this evidence of them paying and scripting him. You know, that guy was another one, you know, he, he was living on, you know, disability money and uh, in Canada, a lot of your shit's free. And so, you know, having extra cash on hand. You know, they were paying this poor kid 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, you know, and to that, to that poor guy, he was, he was rich for a moment, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's sad when they take advantage of people like that, but that's, that's definitely what's happened. I mean, there's no question. Like I said, the evidence, the evidence has been out there for a long time uh, for those that have paid close attention to any of it. So now my question is this, like, Say okay, this this Quaid person. Uh huh. So, so uh, Thomas paid this person somewhere along the lines through a proxy or just through himself, and to do what? To come get somebody? Oh, there's there's receipts from the kid's PayPal. I mean, he he provided them himself. So, what did he do, or what was his what was his uh, what was what was his job for to do for the money? So I'm going to just speak on what I know for fact about me. Okay. So okay. Thomas Schoenberger obviously has issues with me calling him out for all his bullshit. So Thomas would send this guy emails, um, scripting him, telling him to do a video called Jesse Davis is a pedophile. Okay. Let's just say for instance, oh. and he would, Tell, he would tell the guy certain things to say or put in the video that he hoped would trigger me, you know, uh, piss me off, you know, basically baiting the guy to attack. Um, I saw the emails with the scripts. I saw the payments from Thomas uh, through this kid's PayPal receipts that he sent me. And I also endured and have the videos that the kid actually did that were exactly the script that Thomas Schoenberger told him to do and to say. And I mean, literally, word for word verbatim, it's almost like the kid would copy and paste something Thomas told him to say right out of the email. 
and then just post it in the chat or put it in the video. And so no question. He was uh, literally. Okay. So he was like a play, a paid harasser. Yeah. He was a, he was a paid troll to attack people. Yes. No okay. question. And there's been more than just him. Um, so Phoenix also just popped in. So <laughs> Phoenix, I'll, I'll bring you up. Um, Dude, I would love to talk to Phoenix. It looks like uh, the um, chat over in the Titus thing could be going <laughs> could be going south. I see Nathan says, "Oh my God, TS is the most boring interview of all time." Uh, and. Then he said, Nathan says, Thomas doesn't play the piano. That's not going to go over very well. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's, dude, it's like an up and down thing with him, unfortunately. Like oh, I said, wait. I mean, go ahead. Somebody in the chat just said, Thomas sucks on the organ. I guess you could take that two ways. Either he can't play the organ well or he sucks the organ. It's an open-ended question, right? Oh, an open-ended statement. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that'll be an interesting one to watch on the uh, replay. If if he doesn't private it, you know, they're, they're kind of cowards that way, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aiken, can you please refer to him as titties? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Claude, I saw you over there in the chat. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I could restream it on here, man, but I'm not going to give them the opportunity to try and strike my channel down uh, because they, they take that opportunity any chance they get because they don't want these facts out there. So uh, I'll watch it on the restream it, uh, if he doesn't put it on private. If he does, so what? It's... It's going to be the same bullshit interview we just heard, basically. So, Dude looked like a Viking. What's up, Corey? Good evening, everyone. How we doing? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Loud and clear. All right. Yo, Viking. I, I, I'll, I'll take that. Thomas thinks I look like a goat, but, you know, hey, his, uh, his fucking um, archipelago of a fucking patched face tells me he's just a little bit jealous of what he can't grow. Yeah, dude, I, I swear I haven't seen any recent photos of Thomas, but when I saw the one where he had the goatee going on and the long yeah. hair, it's almost made me want to cut all my hair off and shave. And yeah, know, I think I've said it before my children, who are all adults, ranging from 38, uh, got my baby, my daughter's going to be 24 in a couple of days. We celebrated her birthday at the club last night, actually. Uh, my children have all said and would say it today, Dad, we've never seen your face. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean you ain't seen my face? And they're like, Dad, you've always had a mustache and at least a goatee. Yeah. Not a beard. And literally, I don't think I've ever shaved as long as my children have been born, and even before then, actually. But mm -hmm. I almost thought about doing it just because I think Thomas was trying to copy me. He let his hair grow, and he had the goatee going on. And now he's got the Grecian formula, you know, trying to get rid of that gray. Which yeah, I Tom Thomas is a beta male. Um, you know, what? what maybe even a gamma male, and he looks up to men. And I, I think, you know, even when him and I were friends at one point, I think he secretly wanted to suck my dick. And it was creepy at the time, but I don't know. It's just uh, he's got this thing about trying to put me down that I can grow facial hair. Um, I just I don't have to tell Thomas at this point. I just want to tell him. Suck yeah, it up, he dude. He used to call me hairy face all the time. It was hilarious. Yeah, like, yeah no, he, he's big in that. He, he likes to he likes to denigrate anybody who can grow facial hair. And it's. The sad thing is it's genetic. It's genetic. There's nothing he can do about it, you know? Um, you know, it, 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 the Lord blessed him with a, with, a, with a great mind. However, the narcissism and malignant, the malignant narcissism and psychopathy baked in 
to his personality also was in there as well. He, he can't do anything about it. He's just a victim of himself, you know? Right, right. Um, real quick, uh, Jedi, you mentioned a minute ago, what did Skilly say about Frank Bacon trying to get someone to do something with Cappy's account? I think they wanted somebody to like, I don't think it was Cappy. It, it might've been, but I think they wanted somebody to basically pretend. That yeah, that was me. I can tell you exactly what happened. Yeah. So, so Thomas contacted me and said, Oh, you got to meet my buddy, Frank Bacon. He's blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, cool. All right. I'm, I'll talk to Frank. This is back for, for your, inf for your info. If you don't know, I yeah, knew I Thomas for five months prior to ceasing to communicate with him because I realized he was a fucking psychopath and I stopped communicating with him. And that's when he turned on me and began accusing me of having something to do with the death of Isaac Cappy at that point until then he was my best buddy. Oh God. He, he wanted me to come. He, he was on my stream twice. I uh, hosted him. He's the first person I ever hosted. Okay. And okay. He jumped in. Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me start from the very be beginning. I was on tour on uh, the 13th, May 13th, 2019. I took a tour with a pickup in Flagstaff, Arizona at the, I believe it was the Roadway Inn. Uh, nice hotel on I-40 on, on, on I there. I picked up at 9 o'clock. My load took five minutes. I went westbound. I crossed under the Belmont bridge or the trans western overpass at about 925 926 somewhere in there it was open there was no ambulance there was no vehicles there was nothing going on there was no roadblocks nothing plain as day cruised right through got to williams hung a right which is north went to the grand canyon did my tour right came back down through cameron east exit out of the grand canyon down the 64 and into the back way of flagstaff drop my people off at the same hotel and cruise on back to Phoenix. Okay. The next day, because I was a YouTuber talking about esoteric and occulted stuff. And, uh, I made a video de occulting the, um, um, what was it? When the Grammys wasn't the Oscars. What was it? Honey? Fucking some fucking award thing. And, uh, it was, it was on the, uh, it was on the, on the Ordolin bird and, Grammys. and what? Grammys. What was the Grammys? What was the, the Grammys? Alicia says it was the Grammys. Okay. Anyway, because I had done that and I was known not widely, but within a small group on the internet for de occulting and following the the Hollywood pedo scene, right? Um, this this good guy of mine um, who knows you, who used to be like uh, who's that? Like a fan. His name who's is that? Top, his name's Top Feed Coco. Yeah, top feed. Uh huh. Yeah, he told me um, he kind of like found you when Nathan, I guess when Nathan kind of like turned off some of his audience when he was kind of going with the narrative, we'll say. Yeah, he did. He he was a, he was a skeptic, and I'll tell you what: in the in the arena of getting to the truth, you need advocates, you need skeptics, and you need firebrands. You need yeah. everyone to get to the truth. That's what the founding fathers did when they when 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 they set up our 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 whole political system, and they said the men of this country will get together under the Capitol dome and they'll hash it out and get to the truth. But we'll we're going to balance that with the feminine energy of ISIS or Colombia, and that is the ever pregnant belly of ISIS, which is the Capitol dome. Right? We're supposed to do that. It's one of the trivium: logic, rhetoric, and debate. Right? And grammar. Yeah. Um, of ancient Greek ed ed education. All that being said, my my internet fucking communications blew up on the 14th. And they're like, oh my God, Isaac's, Isaac's dead. Isaac Cappy's dead. I'm like, who the hell's Isaac Cappy? Yeah. Who's Isaac Cappy? I, I, I had never talked to Isaac. They're like, it's the guy with the hair. I'm like, oh, the guy talking about pedophilia and all that. I'm like, oh. And I, okay, I, I've, I've seen one or two of his things. And he looked like a sensational wackadoodle at the time. And I'm like, whatever. Okay. And then I thought, wait a minute. And then TMZ had the article that came out that said uh, the highway was finally opened by 1030. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. No, I was there at 926 and it was already open. So I made a video. It's, it's in the Isaac Cappy mind map. And it talks about what happened. 
it's like 15, 20 minutes, or maybe, maybe it's 30. I can't Is recall. Is that on your website? The Isaac Cap type in Isaac Cappy Mind Map, and it will go, and it is every bit of evidence, every recording. I, if you don't know, dude, I interviewed all the witnesses that were at the scene of Isaac's death. I got all the reports, everything. I, I got all the video, all that dash cam shit that came out. That was me. Isaac yeah. standing at the, uh, at the co convenience store in, 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 at the love station in Williams. That was me. I put that out. I went to the security uh, people at the love station and got that. All the interviews of all the people who were involved about the homeless person. That was me. Okay. I, I found all this information and I put it all out. The dash cam of Isaac sitting on the bridge. I put that out. I got that. All right. Yeah. I actually just seen that, uh, recently. The dash yeah. Cam okay. Footage. So to continue the story, um, I made a video, I put it out a day later. I'm contacted by deep state. Kate, deep state. Kate was Isaac Cappy's friend and she spent a week with him. She said, I'm calling the, the hotel. I'm calling the, uh, the community store. I'm calling everyone. I'm calling the sheriff. But no one's giving me any information. I'm, I'm locked out. Can you, investigate it. Can you look into it? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I dug in, I dug in. And two days later I was put in touch with Isaac, uh, with, uh, Kelly Janini, shark belly Kelly. Okay. And then within a day or two of that, I honestly can't remember either Thomas got in touch with me or I was given Thomas information. I can't recall which happened. I don't know which one it was. Okay. You, it, so it could have been either doesn't matter, but you two were like communicating on the matter, right? Well, we were, someone said either, I think, I want to say someone said there's a guy named Thomas Schoenberger who is the guy who introduced Isaac to Nathan. Yeah. You're going to want to talk to him or somebody, but I know Shark Belly Kelly at that time was talking to Thomas. Okay. Because Thomas had, Thomas reaches out and talks to everybody. And when they figure out who and what he is, he burns them and they become his aggressors, his stalkers, his whatever, and he's the victim, and he lumps them all in and moves on to new people that he rakes into his fucking narcissistic psychopathy. All right? That's how he gets his feed, his narcissistic feed. He's sick. Thomas Schoenberger's mentally fucking ill. All right? And um, that being said, um, Thomas said, hey, I can come on your show. I'm like, all right, I guess. Sure, come on the show. That'd be great. And he proceeded to attack Defango, FK and Freddie, a bunch of other people about Seth Rich. And I didn't know what was going on. Thomas was my first interview ever, ever. And I was green, man. I had, I had no clue that psychopaths like this existed, that they were real. I had no idea this darkness that is this existed in the fucking world at all. And I'm like, oh, so Thomas comes on my show. We're talking about a cult because he tells me he's, he, he asked me to introduce funny in, in the last thing. He said, Corey's an occultist. He's in the occult. I'm a D, I'm a D occultist. I study the occult the same way a criminologist studies crime. A criminologist doesn't rob banks. A criminologist studies crime. A D occultist, an occultist studies the occult. I don't perform rituals. I'm not involved in covens. I'm not involved in, in, in any occulted church, theosophy, none of it, but I do study it. And Thomas likes to twist that and say that I'm a ritualistic occultist and yada, yada, yada. You know? My wife is a healer. She's been a healer for 24 years. She has Sicilian roots and she goes by the Sicilian witch because she is a healer. And in the old days in England, in Europe, the witches were the community healers. They didn't have doctors. They had the witches. They were, they were the midwives. That was the witches. That's where that comes from. But he, he likes to say that, you know, she's a witch and she's casting spells on people. She's a healer. She's a 24 year aromatherapist. Okay. She's a, uh, she's a healer. She's a Reiki master. She's been doing mas massage therapy for 22 years. She's really good at healing people. She's a nine one one counselor. She handles uh, suicide hotlines. She's a healer. Okay. And Thomas likes to twist that and say we're like Satanists or something. It's all bullshit. That being said, <clears throat> you heard about the Schoenberger kiss of death, right? It's called the Schoenberger kiss of death. When Schoenberger graces you with his presence, all of his enemies and survivors of him come out and attack you because they assume that you're with him. 
the person usually doesn't know who and what Thomas is. And Defango attacked me and all of Defango's fucking retarded friends attacked me. And I spent the next four months while doing the Isaac Cappy investigation being attacked online. And I had no idea how to deal with, with people like Carrie Wolf, the all seeing you, how to deal with people like Lepo with Defango. I didn't know that if you showed them the truth, I thought they would stop. They don't. It gets twisted because it's not real. It's LARPing. I had no idea this even, ex I didn't know what LARPing meant. And it goes on and on and on. I had no idea at the time that Defango and uh, Lepo and Carrie Wolf were getting together after hours and planning the next day's show to rope in other shows, to infiltrate shows, to suck people from them, to get views and clicks and donations and spread the disease of LARPing terrorism. Okay. But all that happened. This is real. And I had no idea this shit even existed back then. Exactly. So, so all this is going on. I'm doing the investigation and um, I'm working with Isaac Cappy's mother. Right. Um, I had met Alicia along the way. Um, I was uh, contacted by the family Lambergesa, which is Isaac Cappy's group of people, about a hundred, just under a hundred people in the family. Lamb. And uh, they said, Hey, no one else is doing this. And you're in Arizona. Can we, you're, you're invited to be an honorary member of the family. Lamb. Usually Isaac had to approve you, but he's gone. So they let me in and I started interviewing people in the family. Lamb. What did Isaac say? Do you have your, give me your text messages. What do he tell you here, here, here? All those text messages are all documented. They're all recorded. They're all in the background. And then I get a call saying, Hey, there's a girl named Alicia. And, um, and Alicia um, was the last person to be with Isaac. Like she was with him like the last week, twice. So I call Alicia. She tells me her story. And I say, we need to get this out. We need to get it out. So we recorded it. She put her story out. It cleared up a lot of the information about what was going on at that time. So there was a lot of missing com components as to what was going on when Isaac was in Apple Valley. Um, that being said, we move on down the road. I released the Isaac Happy Mind Map. Um, I am a professional certified interpretive guide. So I had a, um, a tour out of San Francisco in, I think I picked up in August. Was it August, honey? August? Yeah, I had it been, I had it been August um, of 2020. Sorry, 2019. July. Huh? July. July. And, you um, in August. What? You saw me in, at the beginning of August. July. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So it was July, I guess. I picked up 23 people in uh, San Francisco, drove them around the Southwest, Grand Canyon, Arches, the whole loop, dropped them off. And I made plans with Alicia to meet her and everyone else in my research group. Most of them lived in California. So after I dropped everyone off, I went down to the LA area and I met Alicia and I met my other researchers that were there. We had a hermetically sealed group that were going through information and data and videos, video, you know, everything. Um, and uh, Alicia and I fell in love and um, we end up moving in together a few months later, but like, that's the story, you know? And, and Thomas loves to say, he loves to call me a meth addict. Corey looks like he's on meth. So I'm passionate, you know, but he knows, he knows that I've mentioned that I despise that drug meth because I've had friends die on it. And my ex was a meth addict and destroyed our raising of our children. You know, I've had a lot of pain in my life because of that drug. So Thomas thinks that's going to hurt me. And he says, that, oh, Corey's on meth because he wants me to react to it. I'm not going to react to it. I know what he's doing. He's a fucking narcissist. He's a fucking psychopath. You know, um, he thinks by saying that, oh, we need to find out where Corey was. I think Corey has something to do with the murder of Isaac Cappy. Well, this needs to be opened up. Fuck yeah, it needs to be opened up. I've gone to the FBI. We've gone to the attorney general's office. Let's open it the fuck back up. I know where I was, and I have the documentation, and I have the fucking eyewitness who's an ex-cop who will tell everybody where I was at what time when I picked up my tour van and where I was going on that day. I got the fucking paperwork. You know? And for Thomas to, to keep going on and on and on about Corey and something to the death of Isaac Caffey, Corey was 15 minutes away. Yeah, the fuck I was. I picked up my vehicle in Phoenix. Yeah, you don't even have video because the, the 
the pickup of your vehicle was videotaped too. Yeah, the, the pick me up, the, the, me picking up the video, me picking up the vehicle was videotaped on the guy's uh, camera system. So I got you know, and, and and the ride from Phoenix to the Grand Canyon is two hours. Okay, so I picked up the vehicle. My pickup was at nine, so I didn't have to be there till like nine till nine o'clock, right? And uh, I couldn't have been there. It just the math doesn't make sense. The time doesn't make sense. Not only I got a fucking eyewitness. I knew who the fuck Isaac Cappy was. So you know, Thomas just loves to throw that shit out there because we there's always new people coming in to this 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 clusterfuck. We don't know anything about anything but what's going on. And if they, if all they go by is Thomas's narrative that Corey might have something to do with the eye, well, that's going to discredit the mind map. It's going to discredit the the work. It's going to discredit the fact that Isaac made a video two days before his death saying, I've been made to believe that I'm Judas. And we know that Thomas called Pavana Judas. We have that in email. We know he called Zach a Judas. We have that in email. We know he called uh, Lily a Judas, Elizabeth Veering, right? Okay. We know he called, who else did he called Judas? Two more that I know of. He called me a Judas and Defango a Judas. So, Jedi, when's the last time anyone called you a Judas? Um, I don't think so. I don't think. When's I the last time you called anybody else a Judas? Is that a common thing? Do you hear the word Judas thrown around very much in your world, in your life? No. The last, okay. actually, the last time I heard somebody call someone a Judas was actually in the uh, in the Owen Benjamin sphere. Okay. All right. So. So you got all this Judas being thrown around. Oh, and Beth Bogart. Beth was called a Judas by Thomas. And two days before Isaac Cappy's death, Isaac makes a video. I'm sure you've seen it. It's about an hour long. He said, I've been made to believe that I'm Judas. I've done something really bad. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. What are the fucking odds? Seeing that Thomas introduced Isaac to lift the veil. Seeing that Thomas spoke with Isaac several times, seeing that Thomas was on a call with Isaac and Frank Bacon. By the way, Frank Bacon was the one who tried to give me Isaac Cappy's Steeman account and wanted me to pretend like I was, like I was Isaac Cappy. You know why he was doing that? They wanted, to, they wanted to fucking discredit me so that they would say, well, Corey friend pretend to be Isaac when I was doing the investigation because they wanted to spin it to someone else. Thomas is a dark, evil, twisted fuck. And he spins everything and he lies. Every time that guy's mouth opens, he fucking lies. Over and over and over again. You know, he says uh, on about, um, about uh, uh, Dowd being a pedophile. Dowd's ex brought up those charges and they were fucking dismissed. They were dismissed. Because there was nothing there. You know? By the way, Zachary was the one who reached out and said, hey, Corey, or he reached out to Gabe and said, Gabe, I have all the emails where Thomas emailed me and told me what to say in these like 70 some odd videos where he was calling uh, Gabe Hoff and all kinds of anti-Semitic stuff and accusing Isaac of, or excuse me, killing, accusing Gabe of killing Isaac, right? He said, Gabe, I have the emails. I'll give them to you. And I'll give you the videos. You have the videos. I'll match them up for you. And that right there proves malice. Because at that time, Gabe was suing Thomas for defamation, right? Right. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, so, know, but well, no, it was. He was. Gabe was suing Thomas for defamation. Zach right. said, I will hand you all the evidence, Gabe. I will give you the evidence to prove malice. You have Thomas dead to rights here. And Gabe said, I don't want it. In fact, I'm going to sue you. And then he dismissed the case shortly after against Thomas. Hmm. I know for a fact that Gabe spent $10,000 to track down Thomas. Why? Oh, At least. Why would he drop it when he had the evidence in his hand? There's a lot of fuckery going on here, Jedi. A lot of fuckery, man. Thomas has hurt a lot of people. A lot of people. He's mentally ill. Bad. 
he, he, the guy's fucking sick. He's a malignant narcissist with psychopathic tendencies, according to uh, someone who's known him most of his life, who's a doctor. Mm-hmm. But that's how I'm wrapped up in this. What 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 questions did you want to ask me? I I could have swore though. I wanted to ask you because I thought you said that you used to practice like witchcraft. I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. That I wanted to ask like how you got into that. Like uh, you know, just I, interest from a young age. I knew that the world was more complex than what we're being fed in school. Okay. So, mm-hmm. um, What did uh, I mean? What did you use it for? Like, did it? Did you use it for like? Uh, I guess. Who's texting you, asking me to ask you to ask these questions to me? Nobody. This is actually me. Just okay. Like, well, I know. I, I know it's you, but you were looking at your phone just a minute ago, and they're asking me questions about me. Oh no, that's because I uh, was looking at the time. I have people okay. Sending me, you know, right. on Discord. I get I get notifications on Discord because I'm okay. All right. Me. All right. But, yeah. Magic, witchcraft, all those topics always interested me as a kid. But when you're a kid, you don't learn about the show on Sesame Street. You know, you know, there's something deeper going on in the world. And and you watch a, a movie and it's got witchcraft. You're like, wow, that's interesting. Wow. I never heard yeah, of that before. Just, so you dig into it, you know. And as I progressed, I learned about physics and I learned about, you know, the Theosophical Society. And you learn about, you know, hi, um, Manly P. Hall and the occulted sciences, and you learn where all this thing came from, and then you realize, okay, there's the there's the occulted sciences like Manly P. Hall and Theosophy that okay. stem back into Egyptian, Sumerian, Babylonian, the, the underpinnings of Western civilization, right? Okay. All right, things so that, kind of the like, stuff a, that's, like a belief system is kind of what... No, it's, 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 the, it, it's the occulted stuff that's baked into our very Western civilization, into our government, into our monuments, into our days of the week, into our time, all that, right? That's all occulted um, knowledge or hidden knowledge. That's what the occult means. And then you have the other side of it, which is witchcraft, which is, which is the, the, the woo-woo side of it down there, shamanism and people, the healers in the villages, you know. Um, that's how I kind of I, I break it down into the higher and the lower at that point in my life. But when I was younger... I was studying witchcraft and I was studying ritual and ceremony. And I was studying, you know, the, the Western tra- traditions okay. of, of witchcraft. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just didn't know if you were like using it to uh, like manifest anything or like, you know, Oh, I did all kinds of experiments. I did all kinds of experiments. Uh, uh, some were out of the Kabbalah, some were out of other tra- tra- traditions. I, 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 I practice all kinds of mental and astral projection. Uh, okay. Yeah. Med- yeah, because med- I kind of got into that type of – I wasn't, like, um, like a practitioner or anything, but, like, I – like like you uh, say, I was kind of – I like occultish kind of things because I find it interesting um, just because, like I said, the hidden knowledge and uh, different perspective on things. Um I remember reading like to, to perform like specific rituals, you need like specific um, like gems, uh, like stones, um, you know, like. Uh, if you want my opinion on all that, I'll tell you that when you take it back to physics, um, you have a, a color, use the, the, the color red for a love spell, let's say. Well, the color red is the color red because the molecules in whatever is red absorb all other light frequencies except for the one that's red or that your eye perceives as red and that re- reflects out, right? Okay. So you're talking about vibration. We talk about a, um, yeah. a, a rose or a lodestone or a gem. You're talking about vibration frequency. That goes back to physics. Okay. So witchcraft is all... Um, in my opinion, it's all um, a, a very sophisticated prayer, right? Your emotion yeah. is the gasoline for a spell. Your emotion and yeah, your need yeah. is the gasoline yeah. for a prayer to God. Yeah. But all of the gems, all of the flowers, all of the colors, all of the, 
herbs, whatever, are catalysts that resonate at a specific frequency with the intent that you are attempting to manifest from the fourth dimension of your mind into the third dimension of this reality because we live in a three-dimensional world, yes. four-included time. So yes. when you look at it like that, spellcraft, ritual craft is the amalgamation and the sinking of the, of the human mind with the catalyst around you and the intent which is going to fuel it. That's my opinion on all that, if you're asking. Okay. All right, cool. So now, obviously, uh, you, you, you do not practice anymore, correct? No, I have no need to it. I, you know, no. You just I'm, I'm, just like I'm, I'm, say, I'm ah. pretty tangible. I'm pretty tangible. I'm, I live in a tangible world. I raise goats and chickens. I, you know, sit under trees and mesquite trees and just enjoy the day and do my work and study and read. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just didn't know if there was like an underlying reason, like something happened. Maybe, you know, that's all. Not really. No, Not just, really. All right. No. All right. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, that's about it. That's the only oh. thing that was kind of uh, the questions that I had for you. Like I said, you I, know, uh, you ever the term people like they grow through their religion? Yeah, because yeah. to, you know, be closer to God, you have to ascend through, you know, the, the um, trials and everything. Well, I mean, I knew a chemical molecular geneticist for a short period of time, and he was raised Muslim. But then he became a chemical molecular geneticist and he began using CRISPR to piece together DNA. And after that, after he told me, he realized that we were, we were completely um, put together by he believes an alien race. He still held on to the beliefs of his Muslim religion, the values and the ethics and the ritual and the family ties and all that stuff. But he grew through the woo-woo-ness and saw it all as metaphor at that point an allegory to be a good person. So I grew through the witchcraft. And by the way, I have a, I have a very Christian base, very, very Christian background. And um, then I got into witchcraft and then I'm like, Oh, well, I'm going to grow through this. Witchcraft is like the, I don't say the, the dirty, the word not dirty is not right. It's the, um, it, it can be done right. It can be powerful, but it's just so unnecessary. When you look at, everything in its totality, attempting to exert your will on another's for any reason, like even a love spell. Why would you want to cast a love spell on somebody to make them love you? Yeah. Cause you're kind of going, you know, it's like going against the natural order. Correct. It's kind of predation. It's predacious, right? You don't want to make someone do something. Um, so when you look at the world like that, you start thinking, well, I guess putting goodwill out there, and doing good work is really the end result. And maybe that's why the Bible says, make yourself ignorant of these sciences and these things, because it is real. And, and it is powerful, but it'll, it'll always backfire and, and it'll generally lead to trouble. It's just so unnecessary. You can genuinely be a good person. You can genuinely do the work in this world to love somebody and to build a life and genuinely have good results where you can always attempt to trick the system and funnel energy in that you didn't rightfully earn. And it's only going to last for so long. It's going to backfire on you because there is a balance and it will be taken back. I mean, look at Thomas. You are aware Thomas is a two time felon, right? No, you're not aware that you're not aware that Thomas was convicted for stalking. No. Are you aware that he just lost a lawsuit for four hundred thousand dollars to Beth Bogart? I know. I heard that uh, on a on one of the other people's streams. I think it was. It might have been this stream that Beth was talking about. She had won uh, some case where she had like won an injunction and uh, yeah. a defamation so suit. Just just to be clear, the Bogart's case wasn't the four hundred thousand dollar one. That was oh. the case. That was the case against Thomas by Isabel Gaithier, I think her name was. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, where where Thomas Thomas literally frauded this woman out of four hundred thousand dollars. She proved it in a court of law. She won the case. 
um, Thomas was supposed to, uh, you know, basically about the same type of scenario as Beth. He was supposed to open a business for this lady. That's what he told her he was going to do. She was looking to invest some of her money in, you know, some type of a business. She's an elderly woman, older woman. Okay. Um, and she gave Thomas $400,000 to open a business that he never, ever opened. Um, he never had intentions open it. He claimed in the deposition that he lost 300000 plus of her money <laughs> at a casino. <laughs> uh-huh. so, Do you know what he told me? What's that? He told me that this woman was working. Because I asked him. I said, dude, this is about the time a week before I stopped talking to him. I started getting like, I started, you know, get, get, getting wise to his shit. And people started feeding me like a shark belly Kelly. She says, Corey, this guy's bad news. I know, I know I told you about him, but this guy's bad news. And um, I said, I said, Thomas, what's this $4,000 lawsuit? Oh God. Yeah. Oh, Corey. Yeah. That woman, she was working for the Russian mafia and she gave me all of these, all this jewelry. She gave me all this jewelry um, to hold because they were fencing it. And I didn't know at the time, but, oh, she was a criminal. She was a crook. And this whole story about how he was used, how he was the victim of this uh, Russian mafia jewelry laundering scam or something. It never made fucking sense at the time. It still doesn't. You know, it's just more bullshit. And then, so, but he lost the fucking case, you know. Yeah. So anybody that's, that's, that's watching the stream or that's going to be watching it, what you're seeing in the background is we're all talking are all the videos created by Thomas Schoenberger attacking numerous people over a very short period of time with all his stock accounts. Um, all of the videos that I've seen at the top up here, you'll see which accounts they're related to. Hey, look, there he is. You know, like this This one was that infamous death video that he created uh, for me, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just just overwhelmingly sick shit. But, yeah, the, this is a folder of all his sock accounts uh, over, I don't know, shit, maybe a year period. And these are all videos that Mr. Schoenberger created attacking people. You can see right here, clearly, I'm at the top here, Jesse Davis's snake and liar gee that's something that was uh used in that recent email wasn't it they called me a snake oil salesman yeah yeah you came to the witness thomas man just the way he writes and the shit he says you know yeah. so i mean that we're, we're talking thousands of videos not to mention the the twitter attacks and other social media and these are videos Thomas actually made himself or had someone create for him that he put out on his own sock channels. This doesn't even include the ones that he was having this Zach Quaid put out on his own channel and, and other people, you know. I love the one where he attacked me. I got it saved. Where he said that um, I made a deal with like the fucking ATF or something because I had three <laughs> felony convictions that I pleaded guilty to. Yeah. And he wrote me an email. I got the email still. It's like, if you don't stop contacting people from my past, Corey, I'm going to release to the world on the internet your criminal history. And I'm like, okay, do it. You know, what the fuck are you talking about? I've never been arrested. Never, you know what I mean? And uh, apparently what he found was I had um, three convictions. I pleaded no contest in Mojave County, Arizona. My dogs the, the dog catcher was called on my property because I had three dogs that were running around. They thought it was actually other dogs. It weren't even my dogs. But uh, they were unregistered, and they weren't fenced in. So I pleaded no contest, and I, I, I wanted to speak. And I told the judge, I said, you know, Judge Imus, I said, um, I, live in, you know, I, I live in the middle of nowhere, in, you know, down there in the desert, wiki up. I, he goes, well, that's still in the county. I said, yeah, but... Like, I live in the middle of the desert. There's no one around. I never registered my dogs. He says, well, yeah, that's the law. And I said, your honor, how many? I said, I understand that you grew up on the Benegas Ranch down there. He goes, I did? Yeah. I said, well, 
I assume you had ranch dogs on your ranch. He goes, I did. I said, how many of your dogs were registered and fenced in back when you were growing up down there in Wikia? And he looked at me and the bailiff started laughing and all the criminals handcuffed on the side started cracking up laughing. And he goes, you've been talking to Jimmy Carl, haven't you? Which was a friend, it was a mutual friend because this judge was like fucking 60 years old or 65, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I have. And he says, all right, all right, all right. Because the judge grew up in the same town I was living in and he lived on a ranch. He says $260 fine or 230 or whatever it was. He said, and he started laughing and said, get the hell out of my courtroom. That was my conviction, my great conviction that uh, Thomas loves to, loves to tell people that I, uh, I settled with the ATF or some three-letter agency to be a, some snitch or something fucking stupid, you know? Look, yeah. It's funny because, yeah, they, they've accused me of making all these settlements and lawsuits and, and shit. And I'm like, I shared my entire criminal history. I shared the uh, uh, entire public court uh, records in my area with any court case that involved me at all. And, and there were none of these crazy cases that they kept claiming and, and all that shit. But, yeah, no, I have no criminal history. I've never been arrested. Never been arrested. And Thomas loves to just besmirch besir my character. There's nothing I've done wrong. I know nothing wrong in this world. You know? And he loves just to, just to make shit up and twist it. And why? Why would Thomas come after me? Why is he? I never went after Thomas. I just stopped talking to him. I remember the day it was too, Jedi. I was in my Jeep driving my girlfriend to college. She was going to class. And he said, Corey, Corey, you got to do a video on Defango. You got it. And I called and I said, dude, no, I don't. He goes, oh, God, they're attacking me, Corey. I said, Thomas, stop. Holy fuck. Stop. Because I only know Thomas for five months this time. And he was doing for five months what he's still doing now. Only calling me twice a day, three times a day, trying to get, trying to come on my show, trying to get me to make videos, trying to script my narrative, trying to hijack my channel trying to use my clout as the investigator with my new audience to spread shit about Defango and derail it and turn it into a fucking circus. Mm -hmm. And I said, Thomas, enough is a fucking enough, dude. I said, either sue Defango or shut the fuck up and take a goddamn vacation, and get off the internet. One or the other, man. But stop. I said, you go on and on and on, round and round and round. And granted, at this time, I didn't know who and what Thomas was. All I knew is he was fucking insane and he kept trying to hijack my channel and he kept trying to use me. And I got emails saying, Corey, I want you to go on and do it. I got emails at him telling me what to put in the fucking mind map about him. He wanted me to rewrite it. And I said, Thomas, dude, I'm done, man. Either sue Defango or shut the fuck up and get off the internet. I'll just tell you, man. He's all right, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I hung up on him. And then, like, I never answered his calls again. And he sent me, like, a, you know, a little probing email, text, never answered. Because I started looking into him. I saw the ripoff reports. I saw the thefts. I saw the lawsuits. I saw the cases. Over and over and over. Everyone saying, this guy's a psychopath. This guy's a stalker. Two felony stalking convictions. Guilty convictions on stealing money, defrauding women. People are calling me saying, dude, he defrauded me. I've, I've spoken to a lot of his victims out there, okay? So, I mean, it is what it is. And then when I wouldn't answer his calls, that's when he decided I was going to be his enemy. And he started with the narrative that, oh, Corey may have had something to do with the death of Isaac Cappy. Okay, great. All right, Thomas, prove that. Please, please, because if you really want to go to the FBI, I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, Thomas, and we will do that. I would love nothing more than to get this case reopened at the FBI level and or the attorney general's office. I know where I was. Well, and I'm pretty sure. Thomas yeah. Also accused Gabe Hoffman of murdering Isaac Cappy at one point in time. Oh, and he accused Brett of, yeah. of murdering. And he accused Shark Belly Kelly last the, the other day on, on that thing of, of yeah. uh, killing Isaac. My God. Kelly loved Isaac. She loved Isaac. That's right. That's right. You know, 
She, you might have even called her um, a sycophant. She, she loved Isaac. And, but, but Thomas loves to say things in an attempt to infuriate people. And when you realize it's coming from a narcissist, a mentally ill individual who's alone, who's not married. He, he's not married. Let's not pretend he's fucking married, people. Please, for the love of God. Let's not pretend Thomas Schoenberger married <laughs> that, that New Zealand chick with the cocksucking <laughs> lips. Let's not pretend for one minute that that chick with the bug-eyed glasses and the cocksucking lips married Thomas Schoenberger. Thomas the Hutt. It's not going to happen. I don't know what's going on there, whether she's an asset. It doesn't matter. I, I, I don't pretend to know. But come on, really? You've seen her, right? Yeah. 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 Why would a chick in New Zealand looking like she, I mean, some men might find her attractive. I don't. That's not my type. Uh, but I don't, I don't, the bug eye glasses alone fucking just, you know, twist me off. But um, why would that woman decide to marry somebody sight unseen in Provo, Utah, where Thomas is still living for what? Right. Cause she's loves his body. Cause she loves his mind. Cause she loves his money. It must be his money, right? All of his money he's got. I don't know. I just, Anyone got an answer? I, I just, I'm going to chime in with the fact that this is the fifth time on Titus Frost's dream that they've been, they've said the phrase, let's get into the Corey Daniels part of it. They just chime in to Dustin Reddy being an actual, like, accused pedophile that's in jail instead of a single father with a four year old daughter. <laughs> the weird thing is, is this. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I'm going to mute it, though, so you guys don't get in trouble. Man, I'm, yeah. I'm going to yeah. have to go back through some of these old videos. There's so <laughs> many of them. This one here, the the title is just Ghost 3301. Now, that's obviously a video about Ghost 3301, who they now claim is a, a convicted pedophile during 30 years that Ed water supposedly associated with. Although I'm finding videos in Thomas's shit uh, relating to him, but uh, look, so so Jedi, you can see this video that's highlighted. Yeah, it was a Thomas video. I reported Denise to 40 law enforcement personnel. So, uh, right here, is Denise an alien bent on the destruction of mankind? This is the shit <laughs> Thomas was putting out about Denise until. Uh, he did the rec ram video and sucked her ass in. <laughs> ah. uh, you talk about all seeing you right here. Carrie Wolf and Nathan Stoppelman. Stoltman. 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 There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, th these are all Thomas videos attacking people. Lady Cockroach, that would be Denise again. The one and only. Lift the veil and the wolf. Um, I mean, oh my god, dude, there's just so much. Yeah, like I, yeah. These, these are all I don't, full videos, by the way. I don't understand what there is to talk about me. I, 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 don't, I don't, I don't get it. Well, what is all there to talk about me? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get it, but these, these, are I mean. Stock accounts. I'll admit, I mean, did I make mistakes during the investigation? Yeah. If I could go back and do a few things differently, would I? Absolutely. Um, so, uh, granted, it was my first murder investigation, right? I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just asked to go out there and look into what happened to Isaac Cappy by his very good friends. And um, I compiled evidence and I got records. I, I, paid, I paid for those records. I went out and I, the Arizona Department of Public Safety, Conio County Sheriff's Office, the Ponderosa mm -hmm. Fire Department, right? The the, uh, the dispatch calls. I got all that, lined it up, checked it, double checked it. I called the witnesses. I talked to them all, except for the 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 two brothers on the bridge. They wouldn't they wouldn't get back to me. But everyone else I spoke to, you know, I mean, what is there to say other than they don't like that I'm doing it? Hmm. They don't like that I'm actually investigating the death of Isaac Cappy because everyone from the cops 
on down to Thomas Schoenberger. Well, he just committed suicide. Just committed suicide. Unless it fits his narrative. All right. You well, know? Hey, listen, I hate to uh, head out. You have, any other, you have no more questions, that. Jedi? You have any more questions for me before you go? No. All right. Nope. But I appreciate you uh, enlightening me. Yeah, no, hit, hit me up on Twitter, DM. I'll answer anything at any time to anybody. Yeah, I'm right. always available. I actually, I don't have uh, a lot of social media. I literally have a Discord, a Telegram, and this YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. That's it. I do want to even- say before you go, I am appreciative that you show your face. And mm-hmm. I am looking at you while I'm speaking to you as opposed to some thing in the background, not hiding behind a sock account. And I, I really appreciate that. Unlike Thomas, unlike everyone else involved, not everyone, but a good majority of people, they don't, they hide behind sock accounts and fake accounts and avatars. And um, I really appreciate the fact that you came on here uh, like Dowd, like myself, like Jesse, like everyone else. And we are who we say we are. We stand behind our words. That means a lot to me. All right, well, right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, like I said, because I really don't have anything to hide because like I said, I'm nobody. I'm not like some secret fucking agent. I'm not some fucking like person that's got somebody else fucking tweeting in my fucking ear. You know, I am who I am. I'm just, you know, a dude mm. who just happened to like Nathan and this is all like, like I said, intersecting. So, but yeah, like well, said, I'm, yeah. I'm going to head yeah. out. I got to get to bed. It's about 11 o'clock on my, on my side. And I got about mm, three hours of sleep today. So <laughs> All right. I'm a little tired. Hey, thanks. Thanks everybody for letting me come up on panel. Y'all have a great night and uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace out. All right. All right. Later. See ya. Dad, what are they saying about me? <laughs> well, I mean, I can feed them in here. I can- <laughs> Let's talk about Corey Daniels. Right. They're, they're pretty much just like, it's suspicious that he came out of nowhere and started investigating. And I'm like, what's suspicious that you brought up me and Gabe Hoffman so far? Didn't bring up the court case where you used an all American cartels bullshit fucking LARP Oh, God. Wait, all American cartel? The same person who's Gabe Hoffman soon? Yeah. yeah, there's a court case between Gabe Hoffman and, and fucking Thomas Schoenberger, and on page 22, my fucking name was in the courtroom, <laughs> and I killed Isaac Cappy, and they used the black magic of using somebody else's fucking oh, like, God. from the internet, so they weren't the ones saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did, didn't uh, Gabe Hoffman sue Julio Hawkins as well? I probably listen. The, no, he did. Hoffman hasn't sued as me. And Gabe Hoffman is a fucking piece of shit lying gatekeeper for pedophiles. Dude, the fucking Hoffmeister, the Hoffmeister threatened to sue me fucking like 10 times. What is I that? I boil the chick. Oh. I live in Winslow because I'm winning slowly over here, motherfuckers. So, Don't worry. It'll all pan out, sir. Call my police department. I already told them about you guys. Like, this is how you stay ahead of the curve. Like, they have magical power, and Daniel Dow's uncle was protecting him because he was the police chief or assistant police chief in Flagstaff and got him off the charges in Texas and all kinds of shit tonight. I'm like, how the fuck wow. does that work? No, it was indecent exposure because I took a plea deal because I was going up against a hey, bartender. It, it's whatever. People don't ever want to hear like the honest truth of it. Okay. No, first, it gets in the way of the narrative. My first baby mama's stepdad, who she claims molested her her entire teenage like life, Gary Murphy, belonged to the lodge in Conroe, Texas along with her sister, Raina Murphy, along with my judge being an Eastern star at the same Masonic Lodge. So Jesus. It was fucking scary. 
they you could they can fucking make a jury. They can put a jury in and then lock me up on bullshit ass fucking charges. But luckily, I got together with Mr. Bond himself, 007 agent of the Conroe, Texas uh, indigent people. Here's a free lawyer, guys. Uh, Ite Bond was my lawyer. And he goes, dude, you know, you need to get. He advised me to take a plea deal for indecent exposure and get the fuck out of Texas because I had pissed off something that I couldn't fucking handle, were his exact words. That I myself, as somebody who could barely get the money to bond myself out to prove my innocence after being locked up for four months on false allegations, so, like, I'm already guilty until I prove my innocence, they'll just keep me in fucking jail if I couldn't get myself out and start actually collecting evidence, which by that time... My computer had gone 14 feet underwater because they had opened the dams in Conroe and just flooded my whole fucking neighborhood. I could get into crazy conspiracies and be like, God dang, sewer town killed my daughter. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to do that about the situation. I think there were a bunch of million dollar homes around Lake Conroe. They were about to get flooded. And they said, fuck this little shiesty community down here. We'll fucking open the floodgates and get some water out of here. So Sounds about right. That's why you live higher up on the flood plane, you know what I mean? And if you can do it good, you put it up on a fucking mountain, you've got a great foundation. Along with most of the land in Arizona, it's got great foundation. Because it it does. And turned into like a fucking glass layer that's like six feet deep. Love Arizona. Love Arizona. It's my home. Like, and like, I'm not even, like that's what I'm saying. I'm not even listening to the LARPity LARP over here. Like it's... Oh, now he's talking about Kevin Spacey. I don't know Kevin Spacey, just for the record. Right, yeah, no, I've never met Kevin Spacey. Uh, <laughs> me and a couple of friends got Dustin Reddy being a pedophile. Uh, so that's the connection with Dustin Reddy. That's why I shared Dustin Reddy stuff on Twitter. That's why other people then shared Dustin Reddy stuff. So if you want to pin it back to anybody, you keep it on me, not on anyone else, Thomas. And I'll sit here all day long and claim to you that I got Dustin Reddy arrested for being a fucking pedophile. And you do what? Just call people them on the internet. Why yeah. do you think they use that to the extent that they do? Why do you think that? I've, why do you think that is their go-to? Because they know there's a lot of meth heads and drug addicts right now that have fucking short fuses that'll go out on like suicide Manchurian candidate fucking. That, that, that's a fact. That's a fact. And Thomas recently again shared a meme. Is it trying to break you or make you go psycho enough to go like shoot up, you know, Comet Ping Pong Pizza and destroy the server that's got all the evidence on it instead of, you know, not. You know, Rick Holiday, Rick Holiday told me that Thomas likes to pay meth addicts and drug addicts to do his dirty work. They're cheap and easy. Yeah. Yeah. How much is a hit of fentanyl? That's how much the going price is for Thomas to get people to say stupid shit on the internet. How much was he playing, paying Zach McQuaid? I think Zach said it was like twenty dollars a video. It was twenty bucks. I mean, he had uh, he had Wolf send him uh, what's his name, uh, Jib Camera send him some money, but then he had Levine send him some money. You know, Thomas Thomas gets this should be very telling. This is his mo. He gets Zach to make videos against Gabe. And he has um, what the what the what's 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 Jib Camera's real name? I have no idea. That's why I right now. Jesse, like, what's oh, Hope's yeah. real name? I'm a whole. It's something. Guy. It's something. With Jonathan Wolf. Jonathan Wolf. There you go. Yes. Yes. Jonathan Wolf. He says, "Hey, because you know Thomas asked me, hey Corey, will you uh will you go ahead and uh, throw some money towards this person here? They're really good. I forget who it was, but he wanted me to pay somebody one time. I'm like, dude, I ain't got money." I'm living in a fucking garage right now, sleeping on a on a fucking landscape trailer, doing this investigation. Like, I'm broke. Then he offered to pay me money one time. I'm like, dude, I don't want any money. I was very, very careful to take any money from anybody, right? Because I mean, being a guide, I make I make pretty good money when I work. When I'm when I'm a guide, I can make up to six hundred bucks a day, you know. And uh, I'm actually a really good guy. I know a lot of shit in my head about about Arizona and cultures and everything else. As you heard Thomas say, but I wasn't buttering Thomas up, by the way. And that first time we we talked, he was telling me, "Oh, you like the occult? Oh man, I know all about the occult." He went on and on and on about you know about uh, 
right. uh, it wasn't just the I am, but it was about St. Germain and all that shit. And he just, he just got into it and fed it anything to get on my channel so that he could tell the whole world what a demon that Defango was and make an attack and suck me in so that I would be an ally for as long as I would until I figured it out. And then I would be an enemy. Then he moves on to the next. It's the Schoenberger kiss of death. I will point out the fact that this chat log has been really entertaining today. Because <laughs> yeah. when he started talking about me, they everybody in the chat's like, Daniel's clean. What are you guys talking about? You guys are stupid. And they, it seems that everybody's just kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. You go to that one video on, is, was it, what was this as? True Blood? Was that his one channel, Jesse? Yeah, one of them was True Blood, yeah. Yeah, you go on the, you go on the True Blood channel where he, he tells the world that I'm like, I end up doing the death of Isaac Cappy. And you go down to the comments, they're like, dude, you're a fucking lunatic. Corey's a good guy. Corey's the one who did the research. Corey put out the mind map. Corey got the evidence. What are you talking about? Corey didn't know Isaac. What they like doing is they like making it so you can't rewatch the live chats, which is why it's, yeah. I'm going to get the stream. Fuck you guys. Have fun with that. And then I'll make mine private so you can get the snipe version, but I can hand it out to whoever fucking needs it. <laughs> so I have the snipe version of your stream with your chat over here. We've muted all your crap because I want people to go watch your shitty stream. It's whatever. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll post a I, I posted the link to his stream on my Twitter. Here, everybody, come over here and watch this stupid shit. And that's where people have shown up and start feeling like you're dumb. But, yeah. you know, so you know, just for the record, I really don't care what people in the stream or the chat think about me. The only thing that matters is what the authorities are going to think when they go through the evidence and the story. Like, that's it. Like, I'm not appealing to social media here because social media is acting on a ton of disinformation and misinformation and misdirection and second and third tier assets like fucking Defango and everyone else, right? Just pumping in garbage and all the egos and psychopathy and narcissism that goes along in this world here. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't. I care about what the evidence is going to prove in the court of law. End of story. So Thomas can say whatever he wants about me. He can say that I don't know what the death of Isaac Cappy, fucking cows come home. doesn't matter. Because I know where I was. I got the proof. I got the evidence. And when it goes to court and they see it, that's the end of the story. I think I slept till like 2 o'clock the day Isaac Cappy died. Yeah. yeah. I was in any way involved in any situations. I find out about the Isaac Cappy situation after the fact through watching Defango and Bobby's dreams. And then I'm involved in the damn bullshit as if I killed the guy just because I say I don't know who Thomas Schoenberger is and he's a fucking lark who's lying to everybody. It's just misdirection, man. It's just more garbage to put out there. That's all it is. There you go. That that Thomas email from 2018 says it all right there, guys. Read that for me, man. What does it say? Now, now I need use a combination of chaos magic. Four text mathematics, you know, like Tesla, three Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. the humor that stirs the pot. Oh, well, there you go. That's there good. you go. I thought, I thought he didn't get himself involved in all of that. I thought Thomas wasn't involved in the occult. I thought he didn't involve himself in all that stuff. Didn't that what he just said, Jesse? Yeah, that's what he said, but... Isn't that what he just played a minute ago? Yeah. Uh, you know, I want that on my stream, too. So I'm well, that one bit him in the ass. There, there oh, you guys. Get my face out of here. He's there such a light bitch. Look at that. Now I use, and that's the STG, which we all know is Thomas's handle. I've actually had it for a while. See, I, I'm the kind of person who wants the whole text log from the beginning of relationship to the end, because I like seeing how they fucking evolve. Because you just watch him turn and start being a piece of shit to every human being he's ever met. Once yep. they start learning about his uh, LARPity bullshit. Everyone knows who what Thomas is. You know, we know it's Thomas is alone. He's poor. He's 63 years old. He's sick. He's old. You know, even in that, even the, the interview from the other day, when you listen to his voice, it's, um, 
it's strained. It's gruffer than usual. Maybe, maybe throat cancer from all the cigarettes. I don't know. He's, he, he's in a bad way. His vitality is gone. His energy has gone. You can tell he doesn't believe what he's saying anymore. And he knows that nobody <laughs> believes it. He's been burned by the agencies. He's on his own trying to make it, trying to score one last lawsuit. And I know Jesse, you're right. You said it on air and he's, uh, he's attempting to sue people, get them in a lawsuit so he can cash in for his final years. It's not going to happen. He's just going to die in an old folks home alone and miserable. Then E drama views says live on ghost of captain Titus Frost channel right now. Just, just in case they want to delete that. I want to make sure I read it out loud. This is worse than E drama. So this is like, <laughs> that, like four o'clock in the morning, random ass analog channel. You still get on somehow that like, you don't know where this dude's like pirating weird. Fucking shit. You know what, Wizard? At this moment, I need that weird guy that dances in a song uh, to weird music. You know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. I need a link. A song or a slingshot? That <laughs> I might have a slingshot. I don't know. It's pretty trumpy. So, I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to play some of the music. So, look, so by the way, earlier in the, earlier in the stream, oh. I was sharing some of the Schoenberger shit, and I shared some of the Pavana medical documents where yeah Mama was convincing the place that she had well, no psychosis and all that just like he recently stated that Nathan's in full control of his faculties right but so the date of the phone call at the facility was October 25th of 2017 okay we all know that, and it was on medical documents. So here you can see clearly an email dated 10-25-17 at 10-15 a.m. in the morning, okay? And lo and behold, this happens to be from Thomas himself to who? To Jesse Davis. And he tells me, Jesse, we're all trying to help. If she tries something like Lunesta, it could be a good thing. This is what they call a psychotic break. And the root cause is exha exhaustion. So he's telling me she's in a psychotic break, but he's telling the facility, no, 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 she's not having no psychotic issues. Then he goes on, the good news is she's listening, and if possible, you may need to go to the doctor and ask for something to help her with anxiety. If this yeah. happens, be the best course since she fears doctors ask for Xanax, which will relieve her symptoms immediately. Now they would have exasperated her symptoms, by the way. However, there may be some psychosis in play here, and a professional is needed to step in. Well, wait, wait, a prof you mean like a psychiatrist? The people that I took her to get help, and you fucking told them she didn't need to be there? And you play doctor and convince them to send her home with me with no diagnosis, no medication. That kind of a professional? He then goes, <laughs> on. I know this is so much to deal with, but I'm also sure you will see it through. I suddenly told her to trust her family, as you can see. So hopefully she's reaching out to you. I'm here to help. Yeah. Wow. Because Jennifer's yeah. cell phone set up to go score some Viagra tonight. What did Thomas just say? Listen, I don't know. We might have to <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at turning the volume on at exactly the Hold on. Time. Hold on. Hold on. Switch my audio. To unsubscribe after. So thank you very much for joining the chat. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Awesome. I. I'm already unsubscribed. You're right. There are a lot of people that forget to unsubscribe from your trashy YouTube channel. But um, you see, you don't ever bring the weird. You don't bring the funny. You don't bring the interesting. You don't know any of the old school classics on the internet, Titus. You can't just out of nowhere do what I do. Okay. So... So when you ask what kind of weird transgender I am, 
You have no idea what you're messing with. You think Thomas Schoenberger's weird. So I got the weirdest content, and I'm a straight white male. Okay, so to go yeah. along with that last email, to go along with that last email, the same day that Pavana was in the facility, 1025 of 17. We'll take a quick look here again. Thomas Schoenberger to the gambling bug. There we go. Thomas Thomas Schoenberger sending me another email with three attachments attached. Now, if you all remember, we saw a video where Pavana was very paranoid of even the word, the name Brother Box. So you have Thomas here telling Pavana P-Man is Brother Box. He's bad news. He posted and then deleted that he was driving Pavana to the edge. I did not see the post, but I was told about it. It is very cruel to cause harm to a woman who's vulnerable. It's beneath contempt. Why do you do it, Thomas? Please email DJ Genki and see who Brother Box is. Here's some screenshots to show you his game. Jesse, please call a doctor and get Xanax for Paula ASAP. Now, again, this is the same day she was at the facility. I will call you in an hour to discuss this. Now, needless to say, the three attachments that were attached to this had absolutely nothing to do with Brother Box or Brother Box fucking with Pavana's head or any of that. But mind you, this was a couple hours after the last email we just read where he said Pavana was in a psychosis. So this guy not only was on the phone, he was also emailing. You know, he was also on YouTube making attack videos all during the time that Pavana was, you know, in this fucked up mess. And he wants to talk about people, you know, uh, doing the right thing. I mean, there we go. Come on. All right. There, there we go. go. Thank you. Now I can hear yeah. you. <laughs> so, yeah, the day that she was in that facility, this fucking goober was just emailing left and right and i mean just it was ridiculous and totally contradicting himself and and all of this shit you know it, it, it's fucking nuts i mean it's just crazy um but yeah for for people who don't understand this story i mean when people talk about getting hundreds or thousands of emails from these people they're not lying. It's it's a fact. That's what these people do. And I mean, I, I've in six years I haven't been able to get through all the emails. So that tells you right there, you know. So, but uh, yeah, the Titus the Titus uh, stream over there. The chat looks just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting is. Uh... When this came out, can, can, can you hear me, Jess? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's interesting is that when all this came out about uh, yeah, about with Nathan Stoltman, mm -hmm. what did Thomas do? He fired up the network, right? Yeah. He came out on Hoax Wars, which people thought was like this independent coverage of the, you know, the online uh, LARPing. And then he gets Titus, and then he gets... Uh, the the fucking twofer, and he doesn't have very many. That's it, right? That's he's got those three platforms. That's it, right? Right, right. Yep, that's it. He so, scrambled. He scrambled to get all that fast to get his narrative out to drive that narrative, and that's that shows he's very desperate. Right, right. Well, it's yeah. funny. So mind expired in the chat. Listen to this. It's amazing. The same old stories on repeat, and I wonder when people will step up and have valuable discussions rather than just output lame trash discussions, repeating years of the same lines. Well, God, mind expired, you know? Thomas, you, Marsha, Hoax Wars, all the rest of the mindless minions, you had an opportunity to step up tonight. But again, as I said, you're all too cowardice to do that and have an you're, actual and bring your own here instead. 
watching this larpy larp larpy bullshit. We're now they're talking shit about Pawnburger, who's just another random person who discovered the situation and is now making content. But I bet we all know him or something. Wow. That's great. That's great. Just reading the chat over there is hilarious, guys. You know, I mean, fucking hilarious. You know what? I noticed about Hoax Wars. You're right, Jesse. It was all scripted. The whole damn thing was scripted from beginning to end. Oh, yeah. And they didn't talk about the Judas thing. They, he just, he just, he just um, sidelined everything that would make Thomas look bad and just uh, drove a false narrative alive yeah. the whole entire time. Yeah, sidetrack all the important, the important facts about all this. Yeah, Which, how everybody's thinking it. He's on his knees, choking. Which is exactly why he didn't. Which is exactly why he didn't come on the stream today. Although in his in his hoax uh, interview, he said, "Bring it on," and he also said, "Do you think Jesse would let me on his panel, or would Jesse come on my panel?" Look, I invited him. I invited him. I. I tagged him in Twitter and shit. I let him know when the show was. We've been on here now for five hours and 15 minutes, and not a one of them has showed up here. Imagine that. Who is Hoax Wars? I don't know. Some Somebody said it was some guy named Mitch. So, is it what? Some guy by the name Mitch. of Mitch. Mitch? Mitch, yeah. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like Gabe Hoffman if you just like twist the pitch a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying, if you know. if you listen to it and you, you turn the pitch up a little bit, it almost it's kind of whiny. <laughs> it's kind of whiny. It kind of well, towards the end of every sentence. It has, it has a real uh Real limp wristness to it, if you catch my drift. So I don't <laughs> very limp wristed, exactly, man. I, I'm um, just saying, I, 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 it's not scientific. I didn't do an analysis on it. I'm just saying that's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I think there was some videos out there with, with. Um, Supposedly with his face on him somewhere. Yeah. Has so, Gabe Hoffman been on this show since I proved him to be a goddamn liar? Uh, Gabe hasn't been on here in a long, long time. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't spoke to Gabe in a long, long time. I know he doesn't like to, um, you know, grace the uh, channel with me on it because, you know, he considers me a sub subhuman, but it's all right. Yeah, yeah. He uh he, he uh was he was very upset uh even with me and uh I I said, you know, he left me some some messages and even some um voice messages uh you know trying to tell me what I should or shouldn't have on my streams and and all that shit. So it was kind of like, nah, we're we're not going down that path. And that's par for the course. He did the same thing to me. He was very adamant on my show that he does not try to threaten to sue people, yada yada yada. But that's exactly what he uh, did to me. After I said, "Hey, bullshit! I'm not uh -huh. you know dealing with us." That's exactly what he did to me. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a demo, dude. Okay, so we are live. This is so live. This LARP is so live action. You just got a comment in Titus Frost chat via Langley LARPer who said, Breaking news Phoenix Enigma stated that apparently this Hoax Wars character is actually Gabe Hoffman with a voice changer, possibly with V2K upgraded chip. So, all right, they are listening. They are listening. Now we know. All right, they were here, didn't I? I told you they were here. Damn it! Now we know they're listening. We have a hundred percent proof of the cross LARP of the X LARP that's happening here, thanks to Elon Musk. 
uh, all power goes to the great lord of electricity, Tassila. And uh, we'll all meet at the uh, Eiffel Tower soon. Don't worry. There's an apartment up there, I promise. I'm not just making it up. Oh, I'm looking for this other video. Find the gate to Tomorrowland via the uh, Plus Ultra Society members that still exist. I know Trump is one of them. I've seen them piled in Mar-a-Lago, okay? I know Donald Trump is a Plus Ultra character. <laughs> And that's the point. They know how to use nuclear bombs or bombs of some sort to rip holes in time and space and then go to really cool raves and shit in like Dakota. Maybe north, possibly south, and just in Dakota. They, you know. Hey, hey, Dowd, have they mentioned the Judas stuff at all? Is anyone parroting that over there? They all, they all, I think they already, uh, no, they, they're not going to talk about that because it implicates them being fucking pieces of shit because we all know Thomas Schoenberger made yeah. fucking Lieber second this video via Lestat and whoever else he was working with. Yeah. 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 Figured. Have they talked about the scripting stuff where uh, Thomas like sent like 70 emails to Zach telling him exactly what to say to Gabe? Have they talked about that over there yet? <laughs> I've had I've had them turned down so much. I don't really. I haven't kept up completely. I've just been like turning it up and down and mixing it with fucking Canada videos. Yeah, because I'm just I'm just stream sniping them onto my channel right now. As well, I'm just like ah, I have a button and it lets me do whatever I want to use. So you guys are making. I can't care for that important stuff that you're busy watching us over here. Right. So there's like there's a trinity of. Oh, here we have like viewer portals going on. Why don't we just all get on the same thing together and just have it out? Because these, yeah, these I tried to do that. Fake cicada bullshit are afraid of the truth, and when you sit in front of three people that represent that truth, you're never going to win. Be right. You'll have no voice. You'll be proven fucking incorrect with every word you say. Yeah. And here he goes with another fucking random loud ass song that's 100 decibels, way too high, so he can just come so I can just scroll the fucking Discord chat so they know what to talk about for the next fucking six minutes. I'm gonna scroll, Thomas. Okay, scroll to line 36B. <laughs> I've, had, I've had two beers here. I'm vulnerable, and I know... I know Thomas loves this beard and he loves vulnerable people. I don't know why he didn't come in here and try to take advantage of me. Because <laughs> you're not Ben Cozer. You didn't leave out a pound of Amish butter. He was. He's like Santa Claus, okay? He he was. Was. Not just butter, <laughs> Amish butter. Amish butter. You can get oh. like that, in that big block. You know, God. The Super Bowl size shit nuggets. Yeah, That's yeah. Butter. I know, I know. We make we make butter here, but not for that purpose. We make butter from our goat milk. We have well, a goat back, farm. Back in the day, they didn't have synthetic lube, you know. So. No, it was just it was just Amish butter. It's where you went. Listen, I'm an internet sex offender. I'm here to offend you sexually at least one time per stream. <laughs> I swear, that shit bothers me just to say those jokes because I don't own a you know, table, so. At the end of the day, I just have to, every night I close my eyes, I think, you know, Thomas is miserable. He's miserable. He's alone. He's hated by a gazillion people. He has to maintain this facade with an endless amount of energy that is rapidly dissolving due to his sickness and his age. And it's, uh, it's just, he's just a hollow, empty, black vessel of sucking, I don't know, void. <laughs> And um, I'm sucking. I like that's a good. It's just it's just pathetic at the end of the day, you know. At the same time, I've been watching a lot of videos on narcissism and narcissistic disease, right? Of of which Thomas, we can all agree, Thomas is a narcissist, right? Oh yeah. And um, it's very interesting. They need this narcissistic fix. And if you, if, if you go from the, from the psychiatrist's point of view, let's just say Thomas is a clinically like end of the spectrum 
narcissists, more than narcissists, meaning that they are destructive and evil on top of needing that narcissistic feed. So what has Thomas like, done here? It's like a level of sociopathic narcissism. Uh, well, it's psychopathic. Sociopathic is different than psychopathic. Psychopathic has a tendency to go on and on. But he does lack, I mean, I guess for all intents and purposes, they're interchangeable at this point, right, for this conversation, because they're very close. But um, yeah. what Thomas has built this thing that we're all involved in, this thing that feeds him consistently, nonstop, every day, that'll never end, because of all the pain and all the people he has hurt are continuing, and he just pokes and pokes and pokes them all. And it's just a narcissistic feed to Thomas. So, look, I think this will be very interesting that you guys might want to hear this. So, what do you got? This is a video that I, I got. It's from May 17th of this year. And it, the title is Hoax War Slash Mitch Troll Ops Denise Metcalf. And it was on a channel called The Show and Burglar. <laughs> so the, the, the description says Is the injection of the Denise Metcalf into the Fred Catcher community a Mitch, aka Hoax War Troll Operation? Why did he go on NVCAP, Fireside Ryan's panel, and pretend not to know Denise? They were on that live stream together for 25 minutes, and then Mitch slash Hoax War and Ryan talked for another 30 minutes or so, but not a word about the past. So I happened to get that video. Um, and it might be interesting just to listen to a bit of it because it is apparently hoax wars um, going at Denise apparently. Let's see. Let me let me find it. I just I just grabbed it actually. Well, apparently they're equal opportunity discriminators. Yeah. So I just grabbed this. So this is May of twenty three. So this just a couple months ago. Hmm. Here we go. Well, that's what I mean. They, they want an atmosphere in which only degenerates will feel comfortable. Still. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Denise. Hello. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hear me okay? I hear somebody, but I can't see who. Uh, Mitch, I'm Mitch Denise. Hi. Oh, hi. I don't. My my screen might be frozen because I can't see that anybody came up. It's whenever he has a uh, chat highlighted, a message highlighted, it it removes the names. But once he takes, oh. once he dismisses that, well, it'll show the name again. Oh, yeah, but you, okay. yeah, but you can we talk about? Me. Can we talk about Locksmith's panel when you were on there, Ryan? Did they kick you off? Oh yeah, they totally kicked. They muted me. They kicked me off, and it was kind of like they they asked me to come up, and then they found they kind of learned quickly that that was kind of a mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, they did. Well, props to you for going one on eight. That took some balls. I think it was nine. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, um. That's well, actually why he was like 70, so it wasn't that hard. <laughs> uh, true, true. So true. Uh, but that's actually why I wanted to call and talk to you, uh, because I was listening to what they said afterwards. So it's even crazier to know that they kicked you off and then started talking this shit about you. And that, that I hate that shit. Like, really? They kid you got, you had your chance to say what you wanted. They had their chance to say what they wanted to you. And so to kick you off, to take away your voice from the conversation, but to, and to keep talk, that's just cowardly shit, man. And the stuff they were saying, disgusting, dude. Uh, one woman said, uh, when's the last time Ryan saved any kids? And then someone else chimed in, 
he's never saved any kids. And it's like, what the fuck? Dude? All they're doing is exposing themselves as being so uh, like sick in the head that they're willing to just deny reality altogether to say the most hurtful thing possible, you know? So, so yeah, uh, Siren, this is hoax speaking, but this is a video from a couple months ago. And apparently he was on another panel with Denise and Ryan. And, uh, you know, this just, again, you know, it proves that he pops in on people's panels, but you notice the guy didn't show up here tonight. So what's that tell you? But let's let's finish listening and see what they have to say. And they said some other things that I don't even want to bring up. That's like just yeah. it's it's concern trolling, and you know where they pretend yeah. that they pretend that they're saying it out of your own good, but it's really just you can tell it's a very thinly veiled attempt to hurt, to to just be as yeah just be uh, really condescending. I guess is the word. But, yeah, condescending, but but it's more vicious well, than that, dude. They really yeah. like it. it's it's satanic, honestly. So he's talking about uh, fake concern trolling, you know, kind of like they're doing to Nathan right now. And it's really sad that they can't see it. Well, I mean, I don't know about satanic because I'm actually a practicing Satanist, but uh. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what that's what comes to mind when I when I watched that yeah. vibe in there. They're like a wolf pack, a bunch of hyenas. It feels like demon possession to me. Yeah. But yeah. Um... Well, I hope people aren't failing to come up because I'm here. I better leave so other people will come up. <laughs> no, you're I good. didn't mean to hog your panel. <laughs> nah, I mean, whoever wants to, I kind of make it like whoever wants to come up and come up, and that's kind of just, uh, yeah. Well, th thank you for, you know, I really yeah. like the way things are going. So thank you for letting me speak. I'll go now. Yeah, bye -bye. have a good day. Your night. She hopes people aren't avoiding it because she's there. So, Denise? We we just got hit in uh, in the chat. Good stuff. Amors. Yeah. Asking for positions. Chats, chats like in the Denise content. That might be an important comment on Nathan's stream. Just you we we what? Say that again. Does anyone know who called Nathan LTV's psychiatrist in 2017? Was it you, Jelena, or Dave? Asking for Pazuzu actual. There is some legitimate trolling going on and listen, I have to I have to give a shout out to everybody who's over there spreading truth. And Nathan's, um, you know, Isaac Cappy, Daniel Dow, Jesse Davis, uh, Phoenix Enigma, Bobby Sarwal. He man, they've they've name dropped a lot of people's um, um, roast stream. You guys are doing, or you're just trying to like say the same thing you've said for years about people and get it to stick. Because like, I get it, I get it. You you know, predators. They usually just shoot for the for the easy to, to grab hold of people, you know. Like it's easy to get your emotions going. Yeah. You guys are on drugs and stuff. Anyway, um so, so yeah, yeah. the Maddie Towns. This 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 over here, this is beautiful to see this happening. There's, there's just, nobody on here seems to be paying attention to whatever they're talking about. <laughs> they're just like you guys are dumb. Yeah, I think you guys will like this. It's going to get interesting here. Before Alex Jones went down, and he did not go down because of censorship. He went down because of Monograph's crew. Hey there, Denise Matteau here. Um, this is a message to you and your rock. Bang, like that. He is building his channel on the blood, sweat, and tears of other YouTubers who did him no harm. 
We know we're at war. Bang, like that. Bang, like that. You are delusional. Like, I, I, I like old old core content, but it's now, like instead, yeah. like what's going with Lepo? Start making um, shit about me, like it's absolutely like false, and then I can prove it to you. Marxist revolutionary bullshit, extremely violent criminal. Your narcissism has robbed you of whatever good judgment you might want to have. You have deluded yourself, bunch of cyber antique mob I have a cream kick. And that's like all that. she was just saying that shit. People pissing on the stage, you know they just don't care. I can't take the smell, can't take the noise, got no money to move out. I guess I got no And you know damn well. <laughs> you know damn well. We are not talking about troll games. We are talking about an extortion ring. <laughs> we know we're at war. Because I'm close to the edge. That all your little political crap that you like to run, Unirock. Cap, cap, cap. You're going to need a criminal defense lawyer. You're running that extortion ring. Now, I believe Ohio is leading the way in extremely interesting laws about the kind of thing you've been doing. He hired Winter Moon. He hired Donna Emerald. He hired Monograph's crew. Look at what happened to Alex Jones. You think you're climbing the ladder of Alex Jones, but you're so stupid, you can't see that the wall against which that ladder was leaning has collapsed. Keep looking at what happened to Alex Jones. He was a hell of a lot bigger than you're ever going to be. Think about it. Like, I hope Swords doesn't... Unirock has hired extremely violent criminals. Don't start making... They're using shit. my name in many I'll different start. ways. Not you just talking and expressing their opinions in YouTube. And expressing Shut their down. opinions in YouTube. We need... Hey, what? No. We have the perfect video for this. You got the Franco doing all this stuff, right? Of course, get that video and get him throwing shit and shit around the room. Make it like super fucking nasty. That would be absolutely insane. I might send you five dollars. I don't have money, dude. You know. I don't really like to like fuck with autistic people or people on the spectrum. I'll talk shit about them, but I don't like to engage okay. with them in real life. It's so, um, see, the more the more you dance around the issue and avoid the question, the worse it's going to look on you. So just be upfront with the man. Answer his question, you stupid fucking idiot. <laughs> what is the question, Mitch? Uh, you want to re repeat it for this wet brain, Ray? Wet Let's brain or wet back, sir? Because I don't tolerate racism on my pedal. <laughs> yeah, Mitch, come on! Don't no no, no racism, man. Come on. I, I said, where did the uh, where did this blood feud stem from? Like, how did how did we get here? He honestly probably doesn't remember, so I'll help, I'll bail him out. You know, I remember. Uh, I remember. Well, then then answer then. You you were you were trolling Ryan on his stream, and I thought it was offensive, inappropriate, and I called you out on it, man. That's like that's what you're doing tonight. You're gaslighting tonight. It's the same fucking shit, dude. So, fuck you. And it's the same shit. It's the same thing you just try to do to Ed. You you gaslight people. You have no original content. All you do is gaslight. You're lame. Nobody cares about you. And you're a waste of fucking space. So, um, that's how it started. You're trying to get him to start shit. And I called you out. Because you you have you have nothing original to bring here. You only gaslight and you try and like pit people against each other. It's really it's kind of a fucking sad existence. He's talking to hoax wars, is what he's doing. And I can oh, I smell know. it from a mile away, dude. And I smelled your shit from a mile away. I called <laughs> you out on it, and you got your fucking butt hurt, and you retreated for like a month, and now you're back. So go back into your fucking hole, dude. So wow. you smelled my shit. No, you need to have your fucking meds adjust. I don't know who you're. You're. Uh, you have a. 
if you're a ward of the state or if you're part of a conservatorship, you sound like an older person. But there has to be some responsible adult that is responsible right. for you and whatever fucking medication plan you're on. Mitch, are you married? Do you have kids? Well, no, I'm not well. Married. Yes or no? Yes or no? You do. Yeah, yeah. You've already talked about. Are you ma- that. Yeah, so you so you're not married. You're un. You you have no partner. You have no kids. You're a fucking loser, dude. Mm-hmm. Say it. Say it, bro. Lean into it. Think about this, dude. You... No, I'm not going to think about anything. I'm going to I'm going to talk about reality, bro. You're you're here talking about shit, and you you have you have nothing. You have no fucking life. And I'm sorry for you. Whatever happened to you, man? But get some fucking help, dude. This is not a good place for you. So what people choose to share about themselves on the internet is their prerogative. And, you know, I haven't shared certain things about me, so you can only speculate. Anybody that knows you from this space. Oh, Mitch sounds like a a fag. And you're like a bottom line troll. And you're just this. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, let's let's finish listening to it. And we can... Then we can comment on it after everybody gets to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This guy's ripping the hoax apart. And he's basically saying what we all said. He's Who is he's this? Mustache. It's glorious. Look at that glorious mustache. Look at that fucking <laughs> glorious mustache. That's not really his mustache. He's Men have hair. I can't keep telling you people. Men have hair. <laughs> he's not pulling no punches, that's for sure. So let's let's finish it off. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to mute my mic. You're borderline fucking like self-harm. It's it's not good, dude. Anyone from this space knows that? Yeah. Yeah. Ask around. Look around, dude. Like, Read the ooh. fucking chat, dude. You're sketch, bro. People, what did you say? Borderline what? Self-harm, dude. 5150. self-harm. 5150. Everyone in this community thinks of me that way, that I'm borderline self-harm. Fifty-one fifty, dude. Get some help, bro. They want fifty-one fifty, dude. I'm sorry, Ray. I didn't mean to, to drag this it's, out, but it's okay. like I thought, I thought Mitch would pull up and be a little bit more interactive. And it it's clear that he's like stuck and he's in a sunken place. And so, do you have any other communities on the internet that you're like? Is it bad if I tell people that you're from Hoax Wars? Because I remember that was like a whole big thing. Like, what? That people accuse me of this? I mean, I've been accused of uh, being. Red Hood, the panel channel, the community, the list goes on and on. Oh, no, I just saw your face on uh, the hoax wars and your voice, or at least that's what people said it was. Yeah. You know, I do have a twin brother. His name's Pete. So you're, so you're, you're not, you're going to tell me that you're not hoax wars? What, what is it? What is it called again? Wow. Hoax wars. Can we just, can we just uh, kick him now, dude? Cause he's fucking lying his, his uh, little bitch boy pants off. It's yeah. fun for the content. Listen, you want to know why I, I originally picked up on your bullshit? Is because oh, I, have, I have a particular thing for um, autistic on autistic crimes. And I felt like you being borderline autistic on the spectrum was picking on Ryan, who's definitely on the spectrum. So spectrum on spectrum crime, I will you always call out, dude. And you might not understand it because you're on the spectrum. I get it. But that's how this shit started, bro. There's not one thing that you've ever like tried to like uh, bring forward or say about me that's like actually based in truth. It's all this speculation. I'm on lithium. Well, tell us about your life. Tell us about your life. I'm on the spectrum. You're definitely on the spectrum, dude. But you can tell us about the other stuff. How do you know I'm on the spectrum? Because of the way that you fucking talk and the way that you interpret information. The way. How do you know how I interpret information? Because of the way that you come into like the fucking chats and the way you talk to people, it's clear we're 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 well, past that. Sure but like, that. if you want to tell us something, if, why if does he have to provide news articles? I, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if you were high functioning with a low social IQ. I don't think anyone thinks <laughs> that you're unintelligent. Just I, I wouldn't be. It wouldn't be outside the realm of possibilities. Okay, so it you would, guys have a it high. Would you guys don't have a high social IQ. If if ahead, FCC produced a fucking news article, it would dox who he is. He doesn't want people to know who he is. We can respect that. No, we can't. These people. Yeah, no, respect, no, it wasn't on the man, news. respect, respect oh, my fucking privacy. Move on. Come on. Hey, 
people are asking for a news article. I mean, FCC, you brought it up, dude. No one would even know about this if it weren't for you. So why did well, you? Well, I was trying to be authentic with you and open up to you, but you fucking well, like took it the wrong way, dude. That's fucked up, Mitch. Okay, maybe I am on the spectrum. But that, there's wait, nothing that, wrong with that, bro. But what kind of person confides something like that to someone who's on the spectrum? Maybe somebody who's on the spectrum. I don't know, man. Oh, <laughs> all right. So we're just two autistic guys fighting right now? Pretty much. Fuck. So, Mitch, I appreciate you trying to gaslight me, man. I, I didn't say you are. I just said I wouldn't be terribly surprised. You have a, you have a unique affect, Mr. Mitch. Oh. Uh. Wow. Imagine that, guys. Imagine that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Good Lord. You know what I noticed, Jesse? What's that? <clears throat> Us here. We show our faces. We talk. We use our real names. You can track us down. We stand behind us. Look at, look at this Mitch fella. Look at Thomas. Look at all these fucking people, right? Mind inspired, on and on. They hide. They hide in the shadows. You know, yeah. you need to respect my privacy. Even the fucking skills, skilly, you fucking cunt, down there in the fucking uh, uh, comment, you know. It's, it, it's like, you need to respect my privacy. Of course, I don't. You know what? You're, you're joining the conversation. Can you imagine what this country would look like if the politicians hid behind avatars and fake names and handles. Can you imagine that? No one's standing behind their words. No one's standing up and saying, hey, this is me. Here's what I think. Here's what I'm doing. And he says, you know, and, and we spend so much time arguing about who's who on here. And the solution to that is, hey, turn your fucking camera on. Stand behind your words. Be a fucking man. Be a woman. Stand behind your words and say what you mean and be who you are. And the answer is obvious and it's simple and it goes back to basics. Those who are in the light are not hiding. The cockroaches, the evildoers, as Bush would say, are hiding in the darkness. They're the ones who don't want to be known. They're the ones who are fearful of their words and of the ramifications and consequences of what they have to say. And that is everyone on that other side over there. Everyone, all of them, with the exception of Titties Frost. Titties has had the balls to come out. And for that, I respect Titties, you know? Right. Titties is, um, I disagree with Titties, but, you know, he is what he is. I, 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 well, Titties was public before Thomas roped him in, right? So that's probably the answer to that. But, uh, you know, and, and, and Matt is a fucking lunatic. I don't know why even listen to her or play her shit. She's just a, she's just a berserker if you want to, you know, use a metaphor but uh i don't know man we spend so much time wondering who these people are when remember about two years ago i said hey jess why don't we just like disregard all these people in the chat who haven't shown us who they are yet just allow people to chat in that chat room who are who've shown their faces who stand behind their own words i mean that's I, all i'm I saying I do understand that there are people out here that are just adamant that they don't want to show their face because they don't want certain people to glom onto their shit and attack them. I mean, you know, they, they, they're not using a real name, obviously, for good reason in many cases. And if they put their face out there, we all know that you can re reverse search a photo and generally find out who somebody is. So I mean, sure. I see both sides of it. Um, but if, if but wouldn't they be more careful? Wouldn't they be more careful what they said if you could track it back to them? See, you and I have had the balls. Dow, number of people had the balls to go out and show their face, and that's where people like Gabe Bob and say, "I'm going to sue you," right? Because we're responsible for our words now, which automatically lends a. Um, a certain degree of credibility to us because we're attaching it to our faces. These people, they're just, they're just NPCs playing a game on the internet in the shadows. 
And then when that one gets burned, they make a new one and a new one, and a new one. It just goes on and on. And That's the problem with all this. I, I will say, I, I especially know why some of the women don't show their faces on here because there's a lot of really weird fucking guys on some of these, on some of these things. But I mean, if, if you're trolling people and, and fucking around with people and you're hiding just for that reason, I call bullshit. Uh, sure. And, and we know a lot of them do. I mean, you know, but, uh, I mean, myself personally, I can't say I have any issues with, with Skilly. Um, Oh, Skilly's accused. Yeah, I know. Skilly's accused us of all kinds of shit. That's absolutely not true. And she's blown up things and carried narratives forward that are absolute bullshit. And that's the, that's, that's the problem with Skilly. Um, we offered Skilly to come on, talk to us, call us, we'll answer any questions you got. And it's no, no, no. And just pushing a narrative that Alicia's a liar, that Alicia made everything up, that Alicia scripted everything with Cappy. And it, it's all just garbage. It's all just absolute garbage. She, you know, she wasn't there yet. Um, she thinks she knows something that she doesn't. And um, she's globbed onto a piece of information and something that was said and just wrote it to death, uh, thinking that it's like this holy grail of information. And she's absolutely wrong. And um, I see her as a uh, as an agent, as someone who's just seeding disinformation at this point, you know. Why not Skilly? Langley, Langley too. Is that is that the Langley Larper I booted earlier coming back under a new sock? Or yep. like that? Shit. Yeah, apparently, uh, apparently skills is getting jumped on. Oh man, look, they got a lovely meme over there. That's great. Sewer King, and it's got Larry, Mo, uh, and and me in the middle. Yeah, they can't even come up with original memes, man. I, I shared a I shared a damn uh, a video earlier today with these morons, uh, with uh, a meme with Thomas and them as the Three Stooges, and uh, they they must have took that and made a meme. <laughs> How fucking hilarious! <laughs> Wow. You three stooges. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wait, I just heard a noise. Did somebody pop you up? Could, I'm, I'm not in there at the moment. could have just put my face on the fool card, and it would have been hilarious. All right. Did a anybody know Toasted? Because uh, I'm not bringing anybody up that I personally don't know. Unless Never heard of Toasted. Unless somebody can vouch for them. Toasted, the name's familiar, but I'm not hey, sure. Hey, Toasted, what's your name? What's your real name, Toasted? Don't be a fucking coward. What's your real name, Toasted? So, especially with Fuck. all the, uh, with all the, uh, you know, porn bombing going on lately. Now we're going to need somebody with a wrench to vouch for Toasted. I think I just heard Thomas Spirit <laughs> for cigarettes and beer. Uh, somebody says toasted's all right. Okay, toasted will bring you up. Hi, hey, what's guys? up? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just wondering. Like, I got like I was on Discord. I know, I know Discord. And somebody just sent me a link and saying I should call you guys. Like, so why what are you guys all about? Um, what's up? Sorry. You you say say that again. Your your mic. Oh, what the, what the Discord? Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just got well, randomly uh, a friend sent me this on Discord, and um, yeah. So what what are you guys all about? Uh, what's what's your guys' thing about? Um. Well, we're we're talking about Thomas Schoenberger, the guy that's over on the Titus Frost show, and we are a group of people many of which have been harmed by Thomas Schoenberger over the years. And so we're talking about it and basically warning people that they need to feel free of that person. Oh, I see, I see. So, um, so what does, uh, are you guys, so, uh, so do you do an interview on any channel? Like, he sounds familiar. Just to say, uh, do you do an interview on a channel or? Um, Let's see. 
we're going to go ahead and right monitor this real quick and uh, look into the name you dropped, which is a uh, critically acclaimed, first profound, and deeply musical interpretation of the most demanding repertoire, both opera and symphonic, which means you're bullshitting uh, at the end of the day. So, like I asked, I'm going to ask you a question real quick. So, um, what friend? What Discord? Where the fuck do you come from? It's a simple question. Well, you, you come in here asking really, really dumbass fucking questions on a stream. Oh, yeah. Running, you know, oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so let um, me do you guys, do you guys know? motherfucker in here and ask you where the fuck okay, you come from. Who the fuck are you, dude? Yeah. What do you mean? Let me, let me explain to you. So I'm I'm here. I was Hoax War. Uh, one of my friends from Hoax War Shad uh, DM me this link. Over here, even though he was on Tretch's stream yesterday and fucking gaslit that bitch for about an hour and then decided to try to stream snipe it, at which point, you know, there might have been some porn bombing, so both of those streams would be fucking taken down or at least had to be edited later on in YouTube. So who are you, Toasted? Where do you come from? Who are you who wishes to study here? Basic fucking question, dude. So, yeah, so I'm here because one of my friends that told me about you guys say that you hate... um they don't that you guys don't like that you guys don't like hoax and i don't know he just said that i should call you guys it was kind of doing nothing so i was just but, like oh. well why should you call us as opposed to the one that we yeah, supposedly hate showing yeah, on. so i don't know hoax to be totally honest short no of one the, does short of the bs interview that he did with thomas schoenberger pushing oh, yeah. thomas schoenberger's defaming bullshit about me and several other people and in his stream, he called me out and said, hey, bring it. Or will Jesse come on my panel? Or will he allow me on his panel? So I put an invite out. I tagged him on Twitter. And I invited him to come up here today. And we could talk about his interview and what Thomas said and what he said. And he didn't show up. So that tells me a whole lot right there. Uh, he may be busy. Let me, let me ask his friend. He, I'm, I'm speaking to his friend. Yeah, MC has an agent. He has like a manager. Let me speak to him. Has an agent. Has yeah, he has, a, he has an agent. Yeah. He, um, yes. he used to, he, he was part of, what do they call it, Dan? It was like, a, you know, the Jersey Shore of Britain. I forgot what it's called. He was he was one of the finalists, but he ended up not becoming a cast member for that. You know what I'm talking about? I don't no. know. I care. The guy, sure. the guy has balls enough to say, bring it. And ask if he could come on my panel. People are being oh, fucking pedophiles and all kinds of shit, dog. And then he doesn't. Then he doesn't fucking show up. Yeah, he's he's ranting with Thomas, but he's gonna be a coward and not show up. I don't. I don't want to hear no bullshit about no agents. I mean, well, I'm, he's a grown ass man, you know. Yeah. Man, who fucking needs somebody else to manage what they say? <laughs> well, uh, not I'm a not man. Sure. Uh, well, he could be a woman. It depends what he identifies as. Nah, that, that's, not, that's not anything that's... I think he's actually her hermaphrodite. I think he's actually her hermaphrodite. Lose this piece of shit, Jess. Lose this fucking loser. No, no, she well, wants to come on. I just I just spoke to his agent. He, he wants to actually come on. Well, cool. Yeah. So what I would do, what I would do, Jesse, is I just, I fucking kick this motherfucker off and we'll wait for fucking Hoaxie to show up. Yeah, Toasted, why don't you go fluff him and get him ready for the fucking show? Go fucking fluff folks and get them ready. All right? Get them all, so get them we, all got, we got all the trolls coming in. <laughs> Imagine Please. that. Imagine that. That's exactly what happened yesterday, and then there was fucking just porn on the video. Yeah. So yeah. That's why just like, yeah, no, I, I'm already calling that dude out as quickly as possible. It's like, I don't know. Who thought fucking hoax needed a fluffer, man? So Ooh, I'd write. So, I mean, Phoenix can, can the way you can be right and something going on. I don't know. Phoenix, can you turn your mic down a little bit? You're really loud. Compared oh, to I don't know, man. All right, hold on. Well, he's about to go. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> No, just okay. like another YouTube channel. Yeah, See, and this is where it starts getting really, really fun. Um, oh, yeah. Because now you might need to show up and just put your real name on here and tell the truth because we might be getting your information. 
Oh, As we speak, well, hey, I turn I turn on the hacker background to call forth the people to. There we go. There we go. Can you hear me? Tell the truth. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. It's still a little loud compared to. Still Dan. loud, huh? We yeah. should dox ourselves. We shouldn't have other people doxing us. No, like you should come here and if you're gonna be, if you want to be, a, or if you want to like make, you know, like how is that, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. All, all right, cool. You have to be honest in the first place. Sorry about that. No, that's, that's all right. People will cool. love you. We lost it's it again. Yeah. You become like a weird little occult like thing that Thomas Schoenberger pays attention to, or you go mainstream <laughs> because you're not, you know, picking. You're actually telling the truth. People don't want to watch a truth stream for like a year, or even like a hoax wars stream where you're like dealing with. What we would call e larping drama, right? Sorry, guys, hit the wrong button. Friends, they're e larpers. They're just they're into ARGs. That's what they trademarked the Cicada Puzzle as was an alternate reality game. Like when you go into the trademarks, I have those in my documents. I can pull them up in two seconds. Like I can literally just pull this screen over here and pop directly into my Google Drive. And in my Google Drive, we have some majestic documents. Um, some other things, but in the shared with me folder, I have I have quite a bit myself just sitting over here. Like this one that says lawyers on it, that's full of screenshots of uh, of a lot of a lot of a lot a lot of stuff. There's a lot of there's there's quite a bit of um, stuff here for the for the lawyers, um, and this is from the SCG. It's great to see you amongst so many people. Is it fun? You need to break it and sound so excited. Your subs are loving it. I wonder who that's to. Oh, I wonder who that's to. It's just, but look at all these files I have, all of these countless files I have, just lots, lots and lots of files where he's he's literally sending things where he's trying to solve portions of his own puzzle and like sending out hints of his own puzzle that he created to try to like guide people to the crux constellation, but I figured that out before anybody else did. And he hates it, so he'll send somebody else in to get that information. What's weird is at the top of this, there's another one called QAnon, and that's full of a bunch of other files. S Stealth sent you a direct message. Stealth sent Sorry, you I'm a direct message. Stealth that's sent you a bad. direct message. Stealth sent you a direct message. He's not very good at hiding, is he? <laughs> So I have all of this as well, and this was just shared with me. And and in here, the, some of the first videos I have very at the very pretty bottom down here, so towards the bottom, it it starts off the Phoenix Enigma interviews. What was that? What, what did we have? What was the beginning of that video? I got to run away like that. I just needed it to get big and not take three minutes to load. Yeah, show me the first Hoax of video. War agent just popped in, but guess what? It's it's the same little green R no. that was just in here. Yeah. So wait, now, wait, what, wait. what I'm gonna do is now I'm look up Mitch Richmond, right? Mitch Richmond. Sorry, so, agent, like, you're gonna, we don't allow agents in here. <laughs> no, no, it has to be Hoax Wars. He has to show his face. That's right. Hoax wants to come in here like a man. He can come in here. They don't need none of your little troll buddies coming Hoax in Hoax the here. pussy. Playing, playing games like show me the burgers there, aren't you? You got to need me. Only little men here. If you, if you require a fluffer to come on this fucking show, you can fuck right off. Yeah, yeah. It, you didn't need a fluffer yesterday. You showed right up. It's a precious. <laughs> that Hoax for your agents. <laughs> You're gonna have to show up with a uh, name that I can the look troll, up. The troll stuff. The trolls. It's called verifying yourself. Verify you actually have a history, folks. Wars. Because I I can find things you've done. You know you've got an Instagram, a Twitch, a Twitter, a, a Pinterest. A steam it steam it's are always fun because this is that paid for content where you like to hide stuff <laughs> um, but that was four years ago you haven't touched it for four years so when you said last night that you've been on and you haven't been on and then maybe this mitch person's not even connected and you're a totally different person because i don't know hoax you sounded extra limp wrist last night compared to whoever i've been listening to i will say that i literally never saw any 
until well, let's I go ahead and hit control app and search all of this for Mitch. There's no Mitch at all on Hoax Wars anywhere in any of the descriptions. Mm. Talked about the all seeing you five years ago. So you're infatuated with that. Let's see what you talked about. Uh, Jazzercise into the psyop. So you're 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 just somebody like the Democratic Party during a Pizzagate who came in and tried to make it about marinara sauce at a pizza place instead of the word pizza being overused in Hillary Clinton emails that were between her and other political people. See, some of us know what the, we're talking about. And then we realize that there's people like you that seem to be like paid to try to distract things right around election time. You guys come up with a lot of really dumb shit. Oh, look, in four or five years ago, just kind of kind of line up with like this new <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. How to spot a Mossad agent. You know how to spot Mossad agents? Because you, you probably look in the mirror a lot, don't you, buddy? You sure you're not a Mossad agent? I just figured I'd find one, at least one post you have that has the word agent in it. I mean, did somebody just try to convince us that this dude was on, like, Brazilian, was almost on Brazilian TV? Like, you guys is LARPs are really late. Wow. So, so Titus is still over there with old show me the burgers flapping his gums, and they were just sharing, uh, I don't know, some damn uh, tweets or something from that thin of four clown that uh, also came in here and tried to uh, troll. <laughs> tried to uh, sideline things, distract from uh, the point. That uh, we're, we've been making that Thomas Schoenberger's a fucking liar, and those around him seem to all be a bunch of LARPy hoax fucking agents that are trying to get your channels deleted by putting up gay porn and all kinds of other dumb shit. So they've upped their tactics because we've been putting so much truth out that they must have their numbers going down and they're getting less views and they don't have enough money to pay for fucking extra views and stuff on all of their videos that they use. Sock accounts to obviously then comment on and make look important. It's not. Uh, it's kind of scrolling back. <laughs> scrolling back to a little bit of our chat here. Meth is a hell of a drug. That's why people shouldn't do it. Bye, Farwell. And if you guys don't know Zephyrtronic over there, he was he was he was my intro window into into live streaming and talking about what I was discovering in the cicada communities and pretty much started pointing out the fact that none of this was attached to anything. The Libra Primus was never solved and that there was some uh, absolute LARPery going on. So I noticed our, our viewers has jumped back up now that Titty's Frost ended his stream, by the way. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's many more names. Interesting. Maybe they there's can tell us what they learned over there at Titty's place. Yeah, yeah. That it's all a bunch of bullshit, lies, and dumbassery made to hopefully entertain you guys, if that's the kind of shit you're entertained by. Does Schoenberger oh. tell them how I mastermind the death of Isaac Cappy? <laughs> Just bullshit, made up fucking drama. <laughs> Go read a fucking book. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Her e-drama is not even fucking entertaining. We <laughs> <laughs> oh, so know, homie sapien. It's not like it's been solved yet. I mean, those middle 55 pages that are still undecrypted, you wouldn't know if it's slander libel. You know what I mean? How there do we you know if there's anything good in there? They Nobody ever got done. I and wonder if I'm going to make the meme wars show, the next meme wars. Look at this lame-ass meme. 
No, this is a beautiful meme. They don't even realize how much clout they gave you because your energy, <laughs> other than Mo and Curly, is the energy of the atomic bomb that's blowing all their shit up right now. <laughs> like, think, look at the actual imagery. That he he's putting himself as the lone man against this atomic bomb, and we all know who's going to lose that fucking situation. Yeah, how's that supposed to be deprecating for you, man? While you're yeah. up there, like. Boom! You are putting out uh, nuclear bombs against these people. This is a beautiful. I would steal it and keep it for you. I would make that my default. Picture. Yeah, I, I say we adopt that, Jesse. I say we yeah. adopt that. That is, but be careful. Check it for remote access tools. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. Check for what one if they're already in your computer. Well, it was, I copyright that shit quick, dude. Right, it yeah, no, that's you take it. funny. Because, like I said, we uh, Pavana had just just done a video uh, that had them in there as the Three Stooges. Musa uh, and Bimbi toasted did not make the show interesting. Let's let's see. Yeah, look, we just did this video, man. A lot of. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we just shared that video, so apparently, you know, they liked it enough that they had to create a meme with me in it. That was pretty great. <laughs> Well, I mean, Thomas didn't come with Cicada. He stole it, didn't he? And then uh, if you want to check the uh, backstage, I think we've got Tretch, Tretch in the uh, in the back rooms. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that, Treach. I didn't uh, I didn't hear the little noise. I was uh, busy pulling something up. Oh, shit. Uh, are you sure that's Treach? That looks more like show me the You're burgers. Wrong. It's the show and burger. <laughs> I did not approve oh, no. the stream. The I'm going to sue all word. of you. Oh, are you going to eat that hot dog? I'm you're, eating a hot dog right now. Can't you tell? I do it. <laughs> what condiments do you have on your hot dog, Thomas? Everything. Double. Are you, are you still working on that Rico suit? He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he's been having weird connection problems with his audio and stuff so he's probably just recycling through so it'll fix it's itself. not Thomas I'm just kidding yeah he's uh, Phoenix Phoenix is having some connection issues I don't think Phoenix would run away from Thomas he, he would be more than thrilled to be yelling at a black screen he would, it, oh, well, he we know Thomas isn't going to come in here with his obtuse triangle fucking shape and shit He's, he's, he's just getting more and more like straight line, you know what I mean? Like he's becoming uh, more uh, reconnected again. At least <laughs> but, like kind of like this. It's this shape. What is that shape? That's, That's like right. Um, no originality. Like so <laughs> Thomas looks like a church from the 1920s out in the middle of Arizona. Well, you know, at, at, at least he is, uh, he's consistent, you know, he, uh, he's still <laughs> forward and still like hiding everybody and, you know, still pushing the same bullshit. So uh, at least you got to give him credit. He's consistent, even when he knows nobody's listening. So, you know, so. Yeah, Thomas was just streaming over there on Titus's. I was listening. Yeah, yeah. Lying, yeah. lying his ass off. Yeah, I'm sure it was no different pretty much than the old hoax uh, interview. Well, it's interesting because, you know, before me, I don't think he was on a stream. <laughs> and then uh, he's rarely been on stream since then. And then all of a sudden now it's like, you know, two, three streams in a row. <laughs> Doing all this damage control is kind of funny. Yeah, exactly. Well, Thomas pays him. Thomas pays him. Right. It's like 
he streams. You did a reply stream. You know, or, or make it really clear. He streams calling me fucking bullshit. Then you do a stream where we clear it up. The next day after that stream gets taken down in his mind because he doesn't know you're just editing out the dick at the end. Then he does another stream on another one of his favorite fucking people to suck on his penis. Right. Yeah. Was it, I mean, the last thing I saw Titties do was where he was crying and crying and crying about how long it took him to make a video and how no one paid any money to watch it. And I spent eight hours lining up this news and reading it and researching it. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And what's stupid, he has on OBS that he has like a, He's a, like, at least over on Twitch, they, oh, they care. At least over on Twitch, they share my shit. Twitch <laughs> uh, fucking tell somebody else about it. Take your ass over to Twitch, you motherfucker. Look at homo. <laughs> now, God yeah. damn, you guys, you know I'm going to get in all kinds of trouble because now they're going to screenshot this and they're going to say it's a whole panel full of fucking criminals. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Criminal. Criminals of <laughs> 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 Who else is here? Uh, hey, Chilo. what's up, Phoenix? Hey, Squirrely, what's up, man? What's up? How you doing? <laughs> doing good, yeah. man. Doing good. Yeah, that's one of those people that's willing to show their face and tell their truth. Yeah, I like people who show their face on camera. Yeah, I mean, Jesse's not showing his face, but he's... Well, we all know who Jesse is. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my it's, face. It's, it's, I just don't want to sit here with an erection, so keep your face off stream, because if you put on that <laughs> I see your face, I got to put on... Yeah, <laughs> and then it's going to turn into a transgender nightclub. <sighs> oh, shit. They don't know what kind of transgender I am, being oh, straight shit. white male, forever pre-op lesbian. Nathan's in the chat. What's up, Nathan? Nathan! Hope you're doing see, well. He's in here laughing, own. having a good time, as opposed to dealing with you guys' <laughs> bullshit. He probably got tired of hearing Thomas lie over there and decided to come over Dude, here. <laughs> Do I have to be here? And if you watch my stream, I'm in chat like, no, Nathan, you don't have to be here. You can leave. Did uh did was Thomas showing his fat jowls over there on uh, Titty's channel? No, no, no. He, come on, you know it's just his audio. It's yeah, all right. Been, could have been pre-recorded, just like all seeing you's done like the last nine of her fucking streams. They're all just videos she made and put out. She's not actually live. Mm -hmm. Like what a waste! What did you get more wrinkles? Let me see them. Let me see them. Let me fucking see them. I knew you were gonna get fucking wrinkly. Nathan, that is some serious truth right there, brother. That's some serious truth. Boring as so shit. Boring, and packed full of defamatory lies. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I like to analyze the burger because he reinforces his own narrative, his own reality. Every time he goes live, he thinks that people are buying it. And he just looks like a moron. I mean, like, everyone knows what happened. Every, everyone knows the history. Everyone knows who and what Schoenberger is. He's a fucking psychopath. Yeah. We have so many receipts and proofs and screenshots and Gmail drives full of bullshit that we had to make a new account because yeah. we have 15 gigs of bullshit already. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I was hoping that, you know, one of them would take, take me up on the invite and come here tonight, you know, where we could uh, have a battle of the receipts. But apparently they don't have any receipts because they didn't show up again. Oh, Mitch is a fucking coward. You're a coward, Mitch, you fucking coward. I did promise. Wait, okay. wait, wait. You're saying that he doesn't go on any stream he can't control? But I never did that. So maybe that's why he didn't show up because he doesn't have the receipts. So now he's going to look like a total idiot on the internet because he only has Thomas's receipts. And that was pretty much proven yesterday that those are fraudulent as fuck. Yeah. And Jesse's receipts are actually fucking court documents. <laughs> but yeah, A to Z, no underlining necessary. It's just there. You can Google it and find it yourself. Yeah. Like PDFs that are made public and shit. 
or the 900 hours of like testimony we have of people saying, you know, Thomas mind fucked me. Thomas stole my money. Thomas tried to get tried to get me to commit suicide. Thomas fuck you, yada yada yada. I mean, how much more we need? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, we've put so much out there, so anybody that's truly following it and and stuff already knows, which is why I didn't bother to bring a ton of stuff up tonight. But yeah, uh, we did, well, we did we did bring some of the more interesting ones up tonight. Just, just well, to put it out there. So. One thing's a fact: at the at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're all gonna we're all gonna click the off button here and and go to our significant others. And I'm gonna go swim in my pool here in a minute and lock the chickens down and have eat some dark chocolate with my wife. And Thomas is gonna curl up in a fetal position in his piece of shit apartment, <laughs> Provo. And uh, wish he had a joint. He might fucking reach out to uh, what's her name, Lisa Clapier, and beg her for some more, you know, donations for a joint or something. And he's gonna go to bed miserable, miserable and lonely and fat and heart diseased. And, uh, and he's gonna wake up the same way tomorrow. And that's just that's the life this guy has built for himself. And that's at the end of the day, that's where it's at. You know. Right. Right. And you know, we all know who loses at the end of the day. Thomas lies to himself and everyone else every day trying to try to maintain this monstrosity of a lie to feed his narcissism to get his fix. And he's just a junkie for his mental disease. I'm stinky. What's that, babe? I'm stinky. And what? Stinky. And stinky. Yes, and stinky. And stinky. Alicia said. We all know everyone who's met him, everyone we've talked to who's met him says he reeks. He's got cheese in the folds, man. And you can't escape that. It's been verified. Like, to quote the lab rat, smells bad. <laughs> Thomas, you've lost, man. You've lost. And your mental illness, in your mental illness, you think you're winning. But everyone laughs at you. Everyone knows you're a malignant narcissist with psychopathic tendencies. Everyone knows you're a felon. Everyone knows you've been at this for 20 years. You're alone. You're lonely. You're sick. You have nothing. You have no money. You have no legacy. And when you die, Thomas, when you die of a heart disease, when you die of a stroke, when you die of natural causes, we're going to write your legacy. We're going to write the truth. The, the winners write history. Remember that. So, Corey, your, your, your audio is very loud again. I again? All right. You got your earbuds in, but it's, it's very loud compared to everybody else. So people in the chat are saying, uh, gotcha. Can you turn it down? Um, it, it, I know that it might just, yeah, no, it, it might just be my aura, man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Is that better? That's much better. Much better. That is, yeah, right. That's the that's the energy. That's the power of God coming through me. <laughs> <sighs> Telling Thomas where it's at. Whoops. Nathan, Nathan is on it in the chat, by the way. He said, Thomas is smelly because vampires can't shower. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the truth is that I forgive him but he is now the character of Satan on the higher levels. He really is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thomas will go down as a psychopath online who was probably working for, for three letter agencies who terrorized people and wound up getting fucked by the agencies that he worked for. Like that's Thomas's legacy. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He's got no family. He's got no wife. His kid abandoned him. His wife abandoned him. His brother abandoned him. His father abandoned him. His own yeah. father abandoned him on the steps of his house. Thomas, and I heard that. I heard that, Tommy boy. Tommy boy. Tommy boy. I want to feel sorry for the guy if he wasn't such a jackass. Yeah, yeah he wasn't such a, such a psychopathic fucking, oh, dare I say it? No, I won't. But um, you were abandoned by your father who handed you a paper bag. Double, 
double paper bag, if I remember right, it was doubled up so all your shit wouldn't fall out of it and told you never to come back again. That's the story I got from the girl that was with you that night on the steps, Tommy boy. She called you Tommy, not Thomas. All of, all of Tommy's friends from high school and back in the, uh, in the days of the nightmare house. Uh, have, have we talked about the nightmare house yet? Yeah, I think we discussed it quite some time yeah. ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tommy, Tommy was friends with Rick Holiday, and uh, they had this house. It was, they were squatting. And there was sewage running outside, and they brought their girls back and did drugs. And, like, any number of people could – kind of like an extension of, like, the 68, 69 MK Ultra uh, PSYOP flats that were going on, you know, cooked up by the CIA back in Berkeley in the area back in the day. It was an extension of that. I wonder why that was. And uh, Tommy Boy would bring girls back there. <clears throat> not, that, not that all of them were of age. And, um, and he would date them and, uh, they would do drugs there and Kobe lots of cocaine. I understand from the people I spoke to. And anyway, anyway, those were crazy days, huh? Tommy boy. I yes, they were. I just find it ironic that he doesn't stop to think that, you know, every single person who has came on social media, whether it's been on my channel or, or, or other places, and told their stories, their horror stories about Thomas Schoenberger, every single one of them has mental issues, according to Thomas. And every yeah. one of them is crazy, according to Thomas. And I just can't believe that everyone is lying and is crazy. But Thomas is the lone one telling the truth about everything. That's that's yeah, that's what I see here. You know. So I've been surfing uh, videos of narcissism and narcissistic mental disease, and every single thing that I find on the internet is like a a Thomas Schoenberger manual. Like a narcissist will attempt to do these five things, and it's like boom, 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 boom. Tom's done all of them, right? A narcissist will do this when they're cornered. Boom, 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 boom. It's exactly what he's done to us. You know, a narcissist lashes out like this, boom, boom, boom. And it's, it's Tommy all the way through, you know. Tommy I mean, is, a, is a very sick individual, and he can't help it. One of the things is they will never, ever admit defeat. At the same time, they are always, always the victim, regardless right. of anything, you know. Um, and, and, and they will divert. When you pin them in a corner, they will deny it, even though the facts are right there, and then they'll try and, like, come at you on the side and say that uh, you look like a goat uh, with your beard or they'll come at your, uh, your, your personal uh, character and they'll try to make you feel bad to divert from themselves. Every right. single email that you have, dude, every one of them is a textbook narcissist. Oh, it, it was hilarious, dude. He used to call me hairy face because of my yeah. goatee, but then he grew a goatee and grew his hair longer. And yeah. he used to try to fat shame me for some reason. And I'm like, uh, wait a minute. You know, uh, we saw your pictures, dude. Who are you trying to fat shame? I, I have a 38 inch waist. I mean, I'm not tiny, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm far from uh, Thomas Schoenberger size. That's for goddamn sure. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, know. they project too. Uh, narcissists project everything they do. And you know what's interesting? When I abandoned Tommy Boy, he started, that's when the narrative drummed up that, well, I wonder if Corey has something to the death of Isaac Cappy. <laughs> and knowing that narcissists project, and he started saying that I had something to die. And, and this is like, this is, this is easier than easy to prove. I've already proven it. I just haven't put it out there because I don't want these people to come after my ex-employer. Okay. He asked yeah. me, he said, Corey, I know what you're involved in. I know the fucking psychopaths that you're dealing with. Um, I don't want this for my business right now. Um, if it goes to court, I understand you've gone to the FBI said I have. He says, when the time comes, I will testify where you were, what you did, all that stuff. I have the proof. I said, great. Thank you. Um, so Tommy can say whatever he wants about that. But the fact that he's projecting that I had something to do with Isaac Cappy in and of itself when I had no idea who Isaac Cappy was, well, I think that speaks volumes. He just showed his hand. Right. He just showed his hand. 
you know, Tommy's for, 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 for being a near genius. He sure ain't that fucking bright half the time. Yeah. There's siren says, yeah, Tommy doesn't like to be dropped. He wants to do the dropping and literally anybody who has, uh, let's just say I, for lack of better words, befriended Thomas and oh. supported Thomas, whether it was financially or, or just as a person, as soon as they catch on to it and they turn their back, yeah, it's like a pack of wolves attacking. I mean, right? Uh, there's been so many, and uh, and, like, and that's another trait of 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 a narcissism. When you abandon a narcissist, they will come at you like a thousand times stronger, and just try to overpower you and dominate you, make me feel like make you feel horrible, and try to pull you back in because they need that narcissistic boost. They need that feed, just like a tick. Oh, and yeah. um, I mean, I, I think back to that interview with, uh, what was her name? Lisa Derrick, the, the lady oh, yeah. who, who actually came on and, and was very detailed uh, about uh, a rape claim against Thomas. And yeah, you could tell by that woman's voice. I mean, I've said this a few other times with other, other guests that have been on here. So I, I can say I, I've spoken with, uh, obviously, with Pavana, my wife. Right. I've spoken with Lisa Derrick. Uh, I've spoken with Beth Bogarts. Right. I've also had conversations with um, uh, uh, Elizabeth Veering. Um, I've had conversations with uh, All Seeing You. And I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting any other names off the top. I'm horrible with names, but so that's at least five or six people that I've personally spoken to verbally. And as soon as you start talking about Thomas Schoenberger, their voices become very stuttery, very faint. Um, you can definitely tell there's trauma there and they they don't want to speak about it. Now, after they've had some time to heal and deal with it and realize that he can't really harm them unless they allow him to, then they can come out and speak. I mean, Pavana's come a long way. Uh, Beth's done a couple streams with us recently. And, and uh, I mean, you know, phenomenal telling some of her parts of the story. And uh, Lisa Derrick has also... Uh, done a lot of healing um and but i noticed in every single one of their voices when they first start talking about it you can hear it in their voice the, the yeah. trauma and and shit yeah you can you know i've 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 spoken to carrie as well y'all seeing you and she's told me personally and explicitly in multi-hour conversations exactly what thomas and frank bacon did to her and how they did it yeah, and the mind fuckery that went along with that, and uh, she's terrified, absolutely terrified of Schoenberger. Well, she she she's she's she shared the same stories with me. She really honestly believed that uh, Frank Bacon and Thomas remote viewed her constantly uh, at any given time, uh, and I remember trying to talk her down from it. I remember giving her advice and trying to make her uh, think about it on different levels and shit. Because, you know, I don't really believe that that's possible myself. But, you know, if a person believes that they're going to believe they're going to see it. Right. And uh, sure. But I mean, that's, that's I, I do believe that's I, witchcraft. I either she's either the best actor in the world or she was really that paranoid. And she really believed that about them, which I always I always found a bit ridiculous. But now that you say that, it, it kind of reminded me of the conversations that I had with her as well. So, so she literally, if I remember correctly, she literally, she was like Pavana. She wouldn't leave her home, even to walk to the grocery store, or go to the grocery store. And she, I believe she ended up moving finally because yeah. she was so scared of these people. And she's another one that actually was suicidal. And, yeah. So uh, she told me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my main problem with it, uh, with it, I'm looking at, I think he's synthetic maybe, was 
she acted like she was trying to avoid him. And I've got, I've got emails where, you know, she was being very rude to Thomas. And then there was emails where she was being nice. They, they both, uh, you know, I've, I've told people before, you know, it felt like they were playing out a role or something that was scripted because, you know, Thomas would, would uh, send emails and literally tell all this crazy shit about Carrie, but he would attach her to the email. You know what I mean? And it was like, you know, talking about shit about her in front of her face. And it was just really weird. But well, um, Carrie, Carrie told me that she got together and she she flat out the night before we'd go on me and Defango and Aleppo, we'd all get together and show her and we'd talk about what we're gonna do the next day and who's gonna attack who and who's gonna pull who in and the, the bullshit that we were gonna do like uh, Defango is gonna go to the, uh, the post office and mail this thing because he owed so and so and lost the bet and we'd script it all out who we're gonna pull in and then the next day we would act it out. She says it was all scripted, every single bit of it. And then to hear her go from that to telling me this stuff and then putting up that video. Say, she she, she uh, befriended me under the pretense that she was avoiding Thomas and she was avoiding Frank Bacon and trying to get away from um, from both of them uh, and showed me. When was this? That, I can't recall. It's It's been a couple of years. A uh, couple of years. years, okay. All um, right. But she showed me the message that Tommy that Thomas sent to her, sending her my way, you know, calling me a good Christian person, a good Christian man. Good. It seemed very coded looking back and, uh, you know, talking about it just seemed, uh, you know, like a direct, uh, hey, go fucking try to fuck with him. He's married type of shit. See what we can get out of him type of thing. Wow. You know? Yeah. And, and when she approached me, she was very open and candid about all the stuff that she did with with both him and Frank, all the stuff that she did over in Steemit, and and she did this in an effort to get me to completely trust her, and I did, I I, I did completely trust her, right, and uh, and it culminated to the point that she, pro Thomas said she faked cancer. I don't know that she faked cancer, but she, that there was claim that she had cancer and that uh, that she was probably going to die, right. So that's what it boiled down to and got me to, got me to come down to new Orleans to see her and shit where she took pictures of us together. And I immediately was like, Oh, you're going to fucking blackmail me with this shit. Aren't you? And we fucking laughed about it over some wine and shit. You know what I mean? But she showed me pictures of her and Nathan. She showed me, or she wanted to show me penis pics of all these guys that, you know, sent her their penises and shit, you know, and, and she let me into the insides of her operation and shit. And I, I would not be talking about this shit if she hadn't fucking put that picture out of us together in an effort to fuck my marriage up and run me off of the internet. Yeah. That's what they do, man. Well, That's sad. Sorry that happened to you, man. You know, you know she, she came to me with the same stories, the same stuff, told me everything yeah. about Frank Bacon and her and the, the LARPing and what they did and how she was sorry for it and how they attacked her and how they turned on her and how... She almost committed suicide. Same, same thing. And I mean, this must have been over the course of about two or three months. We had a lot of phone calls and um, I'm, I'm yeah, a pretty trusted same guy. Thing. Same thing. Yep. You know, so, but in, in the, in the uh, transparency, transparency realm, I just want to be honest with everybody with the 54 people that are currently watching the show. I have put my, remote viewing glasses back on and I'm remote <laughs> viewing all of you right now. So I just want to be transparent about that. Yeah. <sighs> Good Lord. <laughs> um, yeah. And forgive me, uh, homie sapien. I don't know who you are. Um, do you have another name you go by? I'm Trich. Trich? Trich. Trich or Treach. Okay. Trich. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nothing with you. I apologize for not knowing. It's all good. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, there there is such a long list of you know, rather than call victims, survivors, whatever you want to call it, uh, people that have been fucked with by this same circle, and uh, it, the list keeps growing. 
That's the, yeah. That's the strange part. The list keeps growing because as people watch some of these streams, not just this stream, but I mean, lots of people are now talking about this stuff. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, people keep coming forward and going, "Hey, here's my experience. Here's my here's Jay and on in the chat." I still have one that I I wish they would, you know, uh, reach back out and say, hey, look, I want to tell my story. It was it was a woman and she lost a child. She swears because of this shit. And when she reached out to me, she told me about it. And she was in fear of losing her other child. And yep. they asked me not to reveal their names and so forth. So I, I won't and I haven't. But man, I, I really wish that person would at some point uh, heal enough from this that they could come tell their story because you guys would really fucking freak out over that. See if she's willing to tell you it in a private deposition that you will put in a safety deposit box until the day it needs to go to court. Yeah, this, this person is literally in the same boat Carrie was in and Pavana. Uh, just the the fact of someone saying names puts them in fear for their life. And, and uh, it, it's it's sad that, you know, people are that scared of these people. But yeah, I mean, it is. And, 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 and Thomas, Thomas was the cause of it. Well, that's what I that's what I was yeah. told. Yeah, I mean, hey. It, yeah, Janon, you're wrong, by the way. Janon's last little statement they got put up there, no one was hurt by it. <laughs> Lepo, Lepo and Carrie and Defango and Thomas and fucking Frank Bacon purposefully just stirred up shit online and, and, and assaulted other people's channels and pulled them into the fuckery <laughs> just to get clicks and views and blow their channels up and get do the, the donations. And that kind of shit is infuriating. Just absolute garbage. That was very fun. I yeah. Mean, there, of, there, there was some really serious troll type attacking that absolutely. On the Lepo channel. I mean, I hell, I was I was a victim of some of their so-called uh, uh, parody, which really wasn't parody to be totally honest in a lot of cases didn't yeah. you play a video last week where they went after uh, stoltman yeah yeah and he was saying you guys are destroying my life and they were just laughing and carrie was drunk off her ass drinking beer yeah that was defango and carrie yeah, yeah defango and carrie and carrie just laughing her ass off and not able to even answer a fucking question and justifying why she was destroying nathan's life I mean, they're just they're just terrorists. They're just online terrorists. But hey, it's all yeah. it's all fun on their end, right? Yeah, yeah. Lepo was definitely misled by Thomas. Thomas was doing a big part of running that show at the beginning. Of course he was. And then they parted ways, and that's when I was I believe Carrie got heavily involved in it. But does anyone know like what Lepo did before all that? Supposedly he was a librarian. And he wrote articles for that guy. I forget his name. He's the guy that's really, really big into the um, Holocaust denier. Really, really big into that. And he covered articles on conspiracy and uh, the Vegas shooting. He had a weird take on that. He wrote articles within the conspiracy realm primarily for, and I forget the name of the website or the guy. Um, oh, God, I forget his name. He's, got, he's a big name, older guy, but um, really, really big into Holocaust denying. And uh, Lepo was one of his main writers. He wrote, like, really long investigative articles for this website. Jim, Jim Fetzer, thank you. Yes, Jim Fetzer. Jim Fetzer is who he wrote for. He was one of his primary writers on that website. So Lepo's no lightweight. Lepo was investigating, writing shit, putting stuff out in the conspiracy world, 
He was already in this before he became Aleppo. Yeah. Well, I can now, Janon. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I can now. Fetzer. Slandering. I ain't slandering Fetzer. Fucking Aleppo's a dick. I never liked anything that, that fucking Aleppo did. I didn't think it was funny. I didn't think it was called for. I didn't think it was cute. I didn't think it was entertainment. It was just bullshit. It was just chaos and bullshit. And that's why Thomas was attracted to it. And that's why Thomas honed in on it. And that's why Thomas co-opted it and began to use it. That's how I see it. Yeah, it, uh, like I said, you know, uh, I, I didn't think a lot of the stuff they did was very comedic. Uh, it was it was more more attacking people and and uh, shit like that. Now, Lepo might have just been in it for the laughs and the tomfoolery, but in the background, Thomas and the rest of the group were actually. Um, Seriously wanting to attack people and, and cause harm to people. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, um, Lepo was very well written, very well spoken. He was very artistic. He had a knack for doing what he did. And you don't you're not that good at what you do and glob on to a Holocaust denier. I mean, that smells of government psyop to me from the beginning. And then all this shit that he did on the uh, on the Vegas shooting. And then he morphed right on into all this online garbage afterwards. It's almost like and then he disappeared. He's gone. We don't know if Lepo's alive. We don't know if Lepo's dead. We don't know. We heard he died. He's definitely MIA. Almost like he's a fucking asset. Almost like his job was to come in here and do this and on to the next. I don't know. I don't know. Anyone talk to Carrie? Homie, did uh, Carrie tell you what happened to Aleppo at all? Treach, I think he's talking to you, Treach. Oh, I thought he, I don't know who he was talking I've to. I always wanted to know what happened uh, to Aleppo. I'd like to Homie. know how yeah. they how they got Aleppo on. Uh, we, we was able to find that interview, so... Um, it was interesting the uh, the the set of preset phone calls that were supposedly uh, you know random callers just happened to be Thomas Schoenberger, Frank Bacon, and Carrie Wolf. Um, and it's it's strange that that's the last interview that this uh, historical you know figure had, and that uh, it's also very interesting that they're not listing him as dead. They're not. Sh showing him as dead if you just google his his name there's yeah. a, a couple of uh articles that that say that he passed on but uh n nothing other than that which is really strange so yeah somebody did at one time put up a a um death announcement about uh someone with his name um, it was there was a I think heavy magazine. I we've got the link. It seems like heavy something uh, did did the main article that said that he had passed. But like I said, you know, uh, especially being you know in politics and in the military, he's uh, you know he's got he's got a you know he's known you know he's a known figure uh, to just look him up right now and and not not see. You know about a, a date of death and you know where he was buried or anything like that. Right. So, right. You know, it's here. I can tell that he, you. That he's... Go ahead. Well, I can I can tell you during my as a Cappy investigation, there were a number of people who dropped me information who are no longer around, who I can't track down anymore, who were there, had numbers, had emails, had everything, and now they're just fucking gone. And that's a trend when it comes to this online fuckery. Yeah. Um, you know, do I, do I dare call them assets? Do I dare call them agents? I have no proof of that, but they come in, they befriend you, they feed you a bunch of shit. And then they're just gone one day, just like Lepo. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, and to, and to, I mean, of all the things to be involved in, I mean, Jim Fetzer, uh, you know, I, I was told Lepo was in hiding fear for fear of his life. Uh, from whom? They were going to, they were going to tie a QAnon on to him or something else. They, did he say who? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, fuck, if they haven't come after Thomas Schoenberger, he ain't that hard to find. He's in Provo, Utah, you know, and he's the number one suspect, at least overtly, you know, whether I believe that or not, you know, I have my doubts. I think he tried to hijack it personally, but, um, you know, what did Lepo have to do with it? Right. I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe I just I know don't know the story. Lepo, Lepo was the next person on the list. I, uh, when uh, Carrie introduced herself to me and we, we was supposed to uh, work together, the agreement was we were going to write a comedy LARP and make a joke out of every fucking thing. That's what my intention was. And that's what, you know, I appreciated her artwork for. She was, I thought she was really funny. I thought she had an incredible sense of humor. I guess I, I still kind of do. Um, but uh, sh we never actually wrote anything. We never actually, I tried to have meetings and, and really sit down and outline stuff and it it turned into come over here to steam it get it set up on this crypto meet this person go hang out go hang out at this person's stream and like i said before you know most of these people seemed pretty occultic they seem pretty satanic you know yeah and you know i'm not a i'm not a christian i'm not a religious person i don't practice any ideology at all uh for that fact but uh but I, you know, I do notice symbology and shit. I do, you know, I know the keywords and shit, you know, I'm not stupid. So after three or four people and also me streaming on other platforms that she's suggested and not getting any traffic and sitting over there by my fucking self half the fucking time or most of the time I got fucking bored of it. But Lepo was next down the list. And I remember peeping in and dude, I just, I got, oh, here we go again. You know, this, this really dark. You know, this really fucking, you know, fucked up feeling when I peeped in there. I'm like, dude, I don't care to get to know this guy. And that's a, that's as far as I looked into, you know, what, what was going on in that channel. And I and that's when Carrie switch mode on me because I stopped doing, you know, her bidding. I thought I stopped following her directions. And then I started getting the fucking, you know, threatening emails, locking me out of our accounts that we had built together, you know, stealing our crypto and all that fucking shit. Right. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's a real dark place to have to make a living in, man. You know. Yeah. What lepo, but a second-hand emotion. Oh. Listen, you guys got to quit remixing <laughs> songs in the chat. You got my brain going off funny, and then I'm gonna get copyright struck on my channel because I keep playing music. That's why I keep going muted because I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is copyright. Ah. Hey, Jay Anon, why don't you come out here? And, why don't Jay Anon come up here and tell us all about it? Right, dude. Come on, Jay Anon. He's been around. He's been Jay Anon, he's, yeah, he's been around. He seems to know a lot of uh, stuff. Come up here and tell us all about it, dude. I want to hear it. You helped Lepo make an expose. One of the first fucking people to help Lepo make an expose calling me a pedophile. You want to you want to fucking no, you already apologized for him. I mean Janon, what's your name? Come up here and put a face to a name, Janon. Be known for your work, man. You're 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 in you're in good hands here. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Um, why you wouldn't you as the rest it's no big deal. Why wouldn't you want to be known for your work, man? Come up here. Put a face to a name. Tell us your real name. Quit hiding in the shadows. Come on. He, actually, he he's been up here on the panel. Has he? Uh, I don't I don't know that he's you know had his camera on, but yeah, he's been up here and and spoke more than once. I think. Uh, okay, I must have missed and, it. Yeah, actually gave some pretty uh, you know some pretty honest answers as far as I know about things that were asked of him. Um, Let me ask you a question though, Jess. If yeah, you work I, with uh, a little bit of baby fist in that manner. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, people call him out a lot because of things that, you know, he was 
involved in, but when he has been on here and been asked questions, I think uh, for the most part, he's tried to be honest. Uh, uh, Jesse, let me ask you a question. If you, if you work with Kerry and you work with Lepo and you work with Frank Bacon, you work with Thomas and you, you, you build and design YouTube channels that are intrinsically lying and LARPing and fucking with other people and, and the intent is to cause chaos and so mistrust and bring other people into your LARP and fuck them over and get them to believe something not true. How can you believe anything that they actually say once they stop doing that? Well, uh, I mean, I, I can say some of the things that they talked about and the answers they provided were definitely verified uh, okay. to me by others. So I do know that they've been they've been truthful, at least on my show. You know, yeah, they've been on my panels. Um, yeah, I don't I don't follow a lot of other people's shows. All right, necessarily. So you know, I don't know yep. if they. You know, uh, I noticed something that Carrie would always say when she was talking. She would say, "I was in character. I was in character." And that seems to be a catch-all for I can do whatever the fuck I want and say whatever I want and destroy whoever I want and not be accountable for my actions or my words because I was in character. And um, that just leads to like sociopaths. If you come on and you build a channel where you just destroy other people, like when they were destroying Nathan Stoltman or when they were trying to suck in other channels and just sow chaos and say, well, we were in character. It was all in good fun. We were writing. We were being creative. We were artists. I don't, I just, I don't know. I just, I just don't get behind that. You, you, I don't think they should be allowed to separate themselves from their art. That's how I see it. I could be wrong, but um, you know, the internet's a lot of things, but to knowingly go out there and knowingly script this stuff that, uh, you know, sows itself into other ongoing real situations and just create chaos and make profit from it. I don't know, man. That's pretty fucking sick if you ask me. And that's what Carrie was a part of. So Carrie and Lepo and all of them. We, we played a short clip of Thomas stating very clearly that he had paid Carrie. Yeah. At some point in time and that he hadn't hadn't sent her any money in a couple months or whatever. And, and, you know, I mean, let's, let's be real here. Thomas paid a lot of people to attack and fuck with people. That's, that's a fact. There's, there's no question in anybody's mind about that anymore. Um, those receipts have been out there for a long time. And, and unfortunately, Carrie also falls into that realm, you know, unfortunately she does. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I hate to pick on Carrie. I mean, I know, I know they turned on her, but what'd she expect? She's laying with wolves, you know, of course they're going to eat her when they're done with her. You know, I, I, I feel, I feel empathy for her for being attacked by them. But, but let me just say this, look, Carrie, Carrie reached out to Pavana and I, okay. Carrie apologized uh, for any of the shit that she was pushing about Pavana and myself. And as soon as Carrie heard something in a stream that she wasn't happy with, she totally turned and made threats, you know. Uh, Dude, she's it, Dr. It, Jekyll and Mrs. But, Hyde. She's, the, yeah, she's yeah. the most thoughtful, caring person. And then once every fucking change of the goddamn moon, she fucking spazzes out, man. And it's like, who the fuck is this monster screaming at me at the, on over the phone or, or sending me these fucking messages and shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, mean, it I, was, I, it's, it's, and then like the next day, the, the, the message, are, are you ready to talk now? You know? And, and then like her friends, she would have other friends that would be like, well, this is how she is. Right. They would, they, she would have, she would have like a, a team of people that would come and console you and, and, and coach you through the the attack that she just did on you, and and and, and make sure you're okay, right? Yeah, just like sounds Thomas like Schoenberger, just yeah. like Schoenberger does. Yes, yes, 
So I, I definitely, I saw that. Uh, I obviously have, you know, the evidence of all that. I, I, I've not really talked much about her. I, I try to just leave her alone because she did have Me some too. very. Bad I tried times. to leave she, it all alone. She was suicidal as well, and and you know, it's it's like I, I, I do feel bad for her because she went through something very similar to what Pavana went through. And uh, as soon as she broke away from them, they turned on her and attacked her. And, you know, it's unfortunate she's done the same thing, you know. Yeah. Um, which is sad because that empathy that you feel when she turns right around and then reattacks you again and tries to re-trigger you, then you have to just go, hey, you know what? No, I, I let it happen twice. Uh, after the first time I got locked out of our accounts and she stole the keys and she let me back in, I fucking copied everything that I needed because I realized this is what she's going to do again. Right. So when the second time it happened, I, I was out. So the second time she sent the messages, Hey, you want to talk? No, I'm fucking done. I don't deal with abusive people. Right. You're telling me that my wife's abusive and my friends are abusive and that nobody cares about me, but you're more abusive than they are. Why would I turn my back on all these fucking people that really care about me just because you say so, right? Yeah, the, the last time that she turned on Pavana and I, she literally made a statement like, uh, you know, if, if you guys even speak my name, I will attack you worse than you've ever been attacked in your lives. You know? Oh, you should have seen and her, do not let your wife on stream, do not let your son on stream. You know, it's like, like, like there was going to be some, uh, uh, there was something bad was going to happen if I did. Right. So if you notice ever since me and that bitch broke off our stupid ass fucking, whatever the hell you could want to call it, I've always kept a chair right beside me for my wife or son or whoever the fuck wants to sit there. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, and, you know, you, anybody that paid any attention and watched my streams, Y'all know I don't give two shits what anybody says. I ain't scared of none of these idiots. So, you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say exactly what happened. If they don't like it, tough shit, you know. Yeah. Um, Same for me. I, I, I've tried to honestly just avoid talking about her because, you know, I felt bad for her. But uh, I, I do know recently that, you know, she has again turned on some people and, and attacked yep. them. And I call bullshit. Uh, I mean, at that point, your apologies, they hold no water anymore, you know? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying, Jan. On Her friends would message me and be like, you know, this. you just kind of got to get used to it. You just got to get used to, you know, once every fucking three or four days, she just fucking trips out and is, and is uh, amazingly abusive and you just have to let it pass type of shit. No, fuck that. I, don't, I, I never took that shit from girlfriends from friends from family from nobody right like you're right. you're gonna be you're gonna treat me the same when we fucking hang out or you're or or not we're not gonna be we're not gonna be cool you're not gonna have you know multiple personality disorder around me and shit you know right yeah is it any wonder why thomas reached out to her Thomas loves people like that, people he can control and manipulate, people with problems oh, and issues just, that he, he can. She's a, she's a honey pot. She's been used time and time again. Like I said, she had a collection of dick pics. She's got people's keys. You know, she was bragging about all the people she got started and, and helped them out. And see, this is something that I, I said last night and got his porn bombed over there on Hoax Wars was uh, Carrie, what Carrie liked to do, and her this is her her, her big scheme is she is see an up and coming channel going on YouTube, perhaps, right? A channel that's mm -hmm. probably gaining organically and getting getting good traction in the chat. And she'll go yep. over on Steemit and other fucking crypto sites and she'll set up a fucking account for them, maintaining the keys to it. And every time they fucking post shit, she goes and posts that shit over on their channel like it's an active channel and this person's actually keep, keeping up with it. No, she's fucking benefited off of that shit until that person finds out about that fucking channel. And then she's like, oh, well, here's the fucking keys. I, I made this for your fucking benefit, right? But no, she fucking maintains the master and she fucking holds it over their fucking heads and she can fucking control people's crypto and she can move it all around and do what she fucking needs to do with it. Wow. And that's exactly what she's been doing this whole fucking time. And that's the big secret. 
right? And I didn't wow. care to put all of her shit out there until she wanted to fuck with my fucking marriage over a beef between me and another YouTuber that had no fucking basis and no fucking bearing with anybody, right? Try to stop a documentary from happening. That's why. Which documentary did she try and stop? The one that Aiken and I are working on to fucking tell the truth about all this shit. To sp spread the light on every fucking thing. We've been working on it for almost eight months now. If you don't mind me asking, because all this shit encompasses a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, um, have you drawn any conclusions yet as to what the center pillar is, um, you know, of all this stuff. Well, for Aiken, it's different. We both have, uh, you know, our motives and what, what mattered the most to us and this shit. Yeah. You know, we're kind of balancing each other out. Uh, we're getting help from other people. Uh, I don't know if they want their names mentioned, but we've gotten help from other people and we'll be getting help from other people. Uh, my main goal is to show uh, the government, uh, the government's plan behind the ARGs in the first place, where the money really comes from, the the real cicada, the the C, the extra C cicada, that that if you put the extra C in front of it and you go and look it up, you'll see the dot that the Homeland Security is attached to it, right? And so all this social media was given to us, it was designed and given to us, and it was weaponized before it was fucking given to us, like every goddamn thing else that's ever invented. And we've all been taking part in the LARPs. Every single one of us is a LARP, whether we fucking uh, chose to take part in it or where we just fucking filled the slot, right? There's a spot open there and uh, there's a fucking like button. There's a dislike button and there's a comment here. We can fucking share what we fucking, uh, uh, we, we can share uh, how we feel about things and we can show the, 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 the big data you know, where we side on all the hot issues because you can show your hand. All, yeah, we, we put all of our shit out there. So what has happened is the government and, and all of us conspiracy theorists have been concerned about this. Government's been trying to get in our heads this whole fucking time and see what we're thinking. So they gave us a keyboard or they gave us a fucking handheld device so we can fucking put it in as soon as we fucking think it. Right. And so uh, the real cicada and the real reason behind the ARGs and the real be the reason why we're all arguing with each other on YouTube is so the government can watch and see why we assemble, how we assemble, who the fucking leaders are, where they come from, how they think. And uh, it's just all fucking data mining. And it's all how to how to control us better, because uh, when the Internet was given to us, they told us who the fucking celebrities were. They told us who our, who our favorite artists were, right? They told us who we were going to sure. watch on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, right? They told us. They give us our heroes. Fucking, yeah. Right, right. Well, all of a sudden, bam, we've got Facebook, MySpace. We got fucking all these, all these social medias that we started picking our own, they, we picking our own celebrities, right? We picked our own influencers, right? And this whole new term, social influencers came up, Right. And, and so all these people that weren't necessarily controlled by the fucking media or by, you know, the the the, uh, the two main publication companies, the uh, uh, Reuters or fucking what's the other company uh, Associated Press. The only two fucking places that any verifiable news source can take their news from. And if anybody would look that up and realize it. The, there's only two places in the world that your news can come from, and that's Associated Press and Reuters, and it's owned by the same fucking family, right? So what my point is and my uh, ultimate goal is to get people to realize that we're arguing with each other because the government wants us to. We're, we're up at 1214. I'm up at 1214 at night because the government wants me to because this is how they can control me and how they can see what I'm thinking and what I want and, and everything, right? Right, they can see every fucking sure. Thing. Yeah, I see and, your point. how many so, of these people have you? I mean, have you have you gone down and dug and drilled down into individuals? How many have you identified as being top down agents or assets controlled by Homeland Security, or is it theory? We've connected at least uh, two or three definite individuals that are connected. Okay. Uh, one of the offices, all these, you y'all can look this shit up. There's this uh, center for the intel, the center for the study of digital life that was formed in the seventies, long before the internet was given to us. Right. 
and uh, mm-hmm. what's what's the other one? Uh, the Office of Net Assessment is another one y'all could look up. Uh, these are uh, these are this is where the internet is controlling uh, where the people that are on these boards. Uh, if you just go to my channel and look up the intro, we put out the intro to the documentary, and you you'll see uh, a lot of information in that in that four minutes of intro. Right. Cool. But it doesn't cover everybody. No, it's just a, it's just a few individuals that we definitely can connect to somebody that can connect to somebody. And when you get yeah. all this shit, it, it's more than a, a it's more than a coincidence. Right. Of course it is. When, yeah. When you yeah. can when you can when you can keep connecting this shit and, and it keeps fucking and the, and the same characters keep popping up over and over, then it's more than coincidence. Right. So yeah. this is this is what we're working on. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'll be following that for sure, man. Um, if I can address Baby Fist for one second, Baby Fist just made a comment that life is a psyop. And that is spoken by somebody who doesn't have kids, by someone who doesn't have a home, by somebody with no equity in the world at this point. Baby Fist, Matthew, life is not a psyop. Life is to be lived and shared and enjoyed with other people. And the fact that you believe that life is a psyop tells everybody where you're at. And maybe that's why you collaborate with people like Thomas Schoenberger and the likes that you do because you think it's a joke. Other people have put a lifetime of, of, of blood and sweat and tears into families and a future and to have something and to build something. And, um, you know, when you say it's just a psyop, man, it's, it's, it's pretty sick. You know, right. it's, it's a pretty benign statement, but it's pretty fucking sick. Because you've never, it shows that you haven't really gone out and uh, and worked and lived for somebody else at this point. Yeah, please, Dad, Beth, I'd love to have Beth on. Yeah, you're you're more than welcome to jump up here, Beth. Um, That's one thing I want her to be clear on. I I was in the chat. I was asking her some questions when she was being interviewed a, a few weeks back, and I I wanted to let her know that in no way are we attacking her. Uh, no way uh, are we are tr- trying to make her, uh, you know, the center okay. of the document or anything like that. You know, she's she was used just like I was and so many other fucking people. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all we were all made characters in this fucking play that we didn't fucking write, you know. Right. Right. So. So no, man, I just posted the uh, the stream nerd link there. If you click on that, it, it should bring you right into the studio. There we go. Looks like she popped on. Okay. Hey, can you hear us? Yes. How are you okay. guys? Doing well, I- People may not know that I, I met Beth before. I met almost everybody. I had talked to Beth. Thomas introduced me to Beth early on, one of the first people I fucking knew. So Oops. I didn't mean to run her off so so quickly, but no, you did. she's she's probably having some technical difficulties. She'll pop yeah. back in, I'm sure. Um, the the last couple well, of streams that was back on my Twitter days, dude. So it's it's been that long, you know, it's been like eight, seven, eight years now. Well, yeah. first, let, let me let me just back you up on your very there last your very last comment there about Pizzagate. It, it, you have to believe the correct pizza gate. And it's not the fact that, that there's some pizza place doing weird things with the pizza and the children. <laughs> pizza gate was directing people to Hillary gate, which was trying no, to direct Clovis, Clovis knows people. about it. They got Clovis knows it. Weeks. I know. And I'm, if this isn't too Clovis to explain it to her, it's to everybody else. Right. So it's like, those emails where they talk about pizza weirdly too much. That's what it was about. And it's not. When you, you go if you research that, that's real as fuck. What are you talking about? Anybody who goes around and say Pizzagate is fake news, you're probably a Gen Z idiot running around with Harry Sashish or whatever his name is promoting a dude that there's literally video of him sniffing children during like you know, congressional inaugurations. Bro, I don't want to hear any of your shit about it's not real. It's so fucking real. Well, I'm going to go back to being silent. 
So, Nomad, can you hear us? Uh, are you back? I think I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Hey, guys. So I just thought it was an interesting conversation. Um, I don't know what your documentary is about, but, um, you know, like I just don't like because I do believe that I was kind of made into a character, like a caricature, um, because it's everything opposite of what I really am. And it was interesting time. when I what I heard I, I was working that night when you was uh, talking on Jesse's, I think it was uh, about how Thomas was wanting to pretend y'all were dating and stuff. And I'm looking at your you had your camera on. I'm like, well, no, no damn way. I remember him before he introduced me to you. He he did. He did insinuate that y'all had a relationship. And uh, and I've up to up to when I heard you say that, you know, just a week or two ago, maybe a little longer. I, I had that assumption that whole, this whole time. Well, I mean, I'm not saying he didn't, you know, try. Um, but the thing is, like, um, you have to understand, like, he would, I remember somebody else asking me something and I didn't know where it came from. And like, um, I don't know if you saw the screenshot of like when he did try to set it up to make it look like I slept with him only to try mm -hmm. to use it later. You yeah, know, we, in had these... that. we had that in the either the last stream or the one before that that Beth was on. But when so I like look at back at all the emails and stuff from the beginning, I can see they were just setting me up the whole time. Like, and if you even look at that picture of the fox in the skull, like it was in a trap, you know, like a. I don't like looking at it anymore, but it was like in a trap, like with Twitter birds around it, you know, like, um, oh, I can't hear you. I can't no. hear Daniel Dowd. Oh, Daniel, you're muted. I'm, I, I'm, I'm running my, I'm responding to comments in my stream. Sorry about, I, I don't mean to like look like weird ghost mode over here. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I was like, you guys can continue on. I didn't come to like take over the conversation or anything. Um, no, no, you're, you're, you're fine. You're, you're welcome up here anytime. But yeah, so we, we shared uh, the message where Thomas wanted you to play a trick on whomever. Yeah, somebody uh, else. And, yeah, and claim that you guys spent the night together or, or whatever the hell it was. Uh, well, like, yeah. to, to, to Skilly, like, um, a lot of these, like, you have to understand, like, a lot of this stuff, like, okay, like, I met him in June 25th is when he introduced himself as Thomas, and a lot of this stuff happened really quickly, and, like, a lot of these emails, like, are very fast, and I, I didn't know, like, I didn't know who these people were. It was so fast. Yeah. It went from, like, I was getting introduced to a bunch of people, too. To and 120, I'm like, Yeah. Like, um, and the thing is, he was, I was, he was having me research things, you know, or ask, he wasn't having me, but he was asking me to, and I was trying to be helpful and stuff. I got a question I, real quick. Mm -hmm. You said when he introduced himself as Thomas, so did he come at you as an, somebody else or before then? Yeah, he was better, which was like burners for Trump. Yeah. Yeah, he was um, stealth when he came to me. Uh, he was stealth for about three or four months before he finally outed himself as Thomas Schoenberger. And also skills. Um, there was a time I think he told Diane Nordstrom, you know, like these things. Um, and it was like past the date he was already extorting me. So like, um, but I know like a lot of these people. They you know they only know bits and pieces and. Um, a lot of people, like, I don't even really know, like, I don't think I've ever met Jay and on in person or on DM, you know, or, you know, or a lot of these people. And you said specific, Tretch, like, you've been on emails of him, uh, like, just yeah, making I've been bullshit. On yeah. Fucking emails. He just kept attaching me to him. I would sometimes be blind carbon copied. Sometimes I'm just in the carbon copy. Sometimes I was the title and there was just a bunch of people attached to it. Yeah. I remember the, the first time I seen Titus on there, I was like, holy shit, I never expected yeah. to be in a email thread with this guy, you know, because I was. Yeah, I was like, because he just like time. CC like a bunch of people. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I don't want to fight. Like, I, I, I really like, um, I'd rather build bridges than burn them. And, and I, I don't 
I don't want to fight with anybody, you know. And, and no, so the the documentary started because Lestat came back around and he changed his story, and then we we started hearing Defango come back and he's changing his script again, trying to act like he didn't go out to the desert and find that fucking spear. You know, and, you know, <laughs> dude, you know, and it's just like, this is, I'm tired of the fucking bullshit. I tried to stay out of it. You guys, I did. And I, and I moved the fuck but on. So, yeah, like, and so they came I, and I, they tried to, they ca they still came back and tried to take my marriage out. Still tried to run me off YouTube, even though I was completely ignoring it. <laughs> right. So I was like, fine, we're going to do this documentary. We're covering cicada, the real cicada and the fake cicada. We're covering, uh, the, the QAnon. We're covering fucking, uh, I don't know if Bacon's in the chat. He can maybe help me. We're covering the Red Triangle. We're covering, uh, you know, the pre Libra Primus. We're covering all of it. Covering everything. Yeah, like, um, so I wasn't around for the Spirit of Destiny thing. That was pre-me. <laughs> so, like, um, I was not part or around any of that part. Um, and it was It was pretty retarded, Beth. It was yeah, pretty like retarded. I, I know a little bit about it, but I, you have to understand, like, I really didn't watch YouTube. And I still, like, other than, like, this week, like, to be fair, like, I did watch YouTube this week. But I never really watched YouTube. Um, so, like, uh, like um, so, so like, I, I think it's just a lot of people. And I think that's what this channel has to deal with, you know, is a lot of people were, like, hoodwinked, you know. Like, and, and it can be downplayed or whatever, but I think a lot of us have a lot of the same experiences. And, and I think it's something that we can uh, really kind of connect on because um, we've all been threatened or, you know, um, in some capacity, you know, we've all had these things happen to us. And, and it's something um, that I don't even know how these people find the time to to, to go into so many people's lives and do this. And well, stuff. I, I've Beth, I've, I've talked to Jesse. I've talked to, well, I, last time I was on, I said the amount of, the amount of sock accounts alone that Thomas has to get up in the morning, have your coffee, log in, do your damage, log out, log into another one, log out, log into another one, call somebody, then call someone on the phone and fuck with them and then get involved in this. It's gotta be a full-time job. Yeah. Like, I, he can't do it alone. He has to be funded. He's got to be funded and he's got to have a crew of people who he delegates stuff to as well. I, I can't imagine sitting there logging on, logging and logging out on a, on a, on a laptop and his phone all day long at a coffee shop doing nothing but this, or maybe he does. No, I don't know. I, I think he has like, I, you know, I do believe. And, and like, I don't have a, I like it. Like, I don't hate anybody. I just want, like, you know, and I know this is going to, I I just, I did my lawsuit when they started telling me specifically to kill myself online. That's when I called my lawyer, or a lawyer, and, and that's when why I started my lawsuit, because it wasn't going to stop. Like, um, and so that was my best move forward to, to do it, you know, um, with Thomas, all I want, and with all the other people in my lawsuit, I just wanted them to stop. And, and Thomas fair, is mentally ill. He can't stop. He no, cannot stop. He no. He, has, he yeah. has a mental illness. He is really sick. He will never stop. It is his narcissism, malignant narcissism, that will forever propel him forward to, to get the narcissistic feed that he needs. But... To all these people, like, I, I don't hate anybody. I, I don't. It's not, like, in my capacity. You know, like, um, do, do I get, like, upset about things? I'm human. Yeah. Like, of course, you know. But that's what they feed off of is your response. And and so, like, um, of course I, I get upset of things because I'm lied about, like, every day. You know? Um, but, like, uh. But but in the end, I just want it. I, I want I want my life back, and I enjoy doing my art. I enjoy doing these things, you know. Like I travel extensively for my for for my work, you know, and I enjoy that. Like I'm I'm not always online. Um, if people pretend I am or not, you know, and I go through long periods of not looking because it's not healthy. 
So like, um, and then I get drugged back in because like somebody says something to trigger me, but, but I think it's just meant, you know, like it is, it's a self feeding thing, you know, like, um, but, but I, I didn't mean to take, I didn't mean to take over the stream. I like, um, I'm sorry. Like, like that's what I was trying to say about the, uh, the ARGs being, uh, planned this way in the first place, you know, it's, You're it's not, like uh, a, taking over would, Beth. You're more than welcome to come up here anytime and talk. Sorry. Sorry. You, you sound way better than any of these dudes. Any fucking way. Yeah, I'd rather listen to your voice all night. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, but yeah, like I do think there's too much fighting, you know, everybody. And there's too much people believing things, you know, that aren't true. I wish I knew more. Like there's a lot of people I would like to ask questions to myself, you know, to understand what happened to me, you know, or like, um, and I think a lot of people in this thing want to know that, you know, <laughs> like, um, and, and the thing is like with being wrong, like I've been wrong about things at times because like, like it's, it's a journey, you know, of like realizing things like there, there are times, like I'll find something and I'm like, wow. And it'll like change my perspective, you know, like, um, and, and so like, like it's, if I knew everything, then it meant I was part of it, you know, but, but I don't, I don't know everything and stuff and neither do a lot of people. And if they do know everything, then, then, you know, they're part of this network and stuff. So people, I think it's okay to be wrong just as long as it's, you're not being wrong to harm someone or hurt someone. Like if it's a genuine wrong but um what is your documentary what is it about i just said we're uh we're covering the story the from beginning to end you know we've developed a timeline uh we've got all kinds of events attached to the timeline that may or may not uh you know uh connect but they seem to coincide and um and we just went from there, you know, uh, talking with Daniel uh, was eye opening. And, and of course, listening to your story, um, you know, what happened with me and what brought what brought my interest into the documentary was, you know, uh, I had a, a circle of friends. We uh, we had good conversations going. It was a good tight group. And uh, Lestat started popping back around. And uh, I, I just said the story last night, so it's kind of weird to keep uttering it, but I'll, I'll share it again. Um, was that was was popping around and Aiken and I both noticed and we both shared it with our friend that we didn't trust him. You know, he's he's been dishonest with both of us and, that you know, the guys, you know, should be avoided. It was what, you know, we was kind of getting at. Our friend uh, was hell bent on doing an interview on Lestat and. You know, we were like, fine, you know, go do your thing. But we, we kind of warned you, you know, and uh, that that uh, interview I ended up using and in, in, in an exposure list that because, as I said, he came and he shared the story, his cicada story, which happened to be quite different than the four other fucking times that I heard him share it. So I just I put a video together and I showed him telling the story very inconsistently <laughs> <laughs> mainly just to show everybody that you can't trust this guy right and that was that was the point and the next thing i know because i put that video out to show my friend uh this is why you can't trust this guy and to show the world why you can't trust this guy a picture of me and carrie wolf was put out in an effort to destroy my marriage and run me off of youtube so uh, that fueled the fire to to do the documentary. I guess okay. it's kind of selfish. Yeah. You know, they someone has come twice now after me trying to break up me and Alicia as well. And it shows the desperation of what they do. And, you know... Uh, it's pretty uh, my job's been my, my they tried to cost me my job to the point that my job actually gave me equity in the company. They they felt so bad for nice. the, how many times that were called and how many times they had to do a background check on me. And every time I got to giggling, 
because I was like, okay, run a background check again. It's the same as it was when you checked it the last time. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know, my, and my wife's an, a registered nurse, and literally she's had to go to her 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 the board that she works at and tell them, hey, sorry about the calls. Uh, you know, I'm not on. She doesn't have a channel on YouTube. She's not participating in this shit. She just happens to be married to me and happens to mm -hmm. sit right here sometimes when I'm streaming and running my fucking mouth. And because of that, they've they try to get her. Uh, they cost her her try to cost her her nursing license. And sure. Uh, oh yeah, dude, all kinds of shit, man. It's and uh, they they constantly. I just I'm getting emailed about it every day. They're still trying to get into my Facebook account that I closed like ten fucking years ago. I don't know what the fuck they think they're going to get off of it. But just because I'm working on this documentary that possibly might show, you know, how shitty somebody is, this is the shit that I'm going through because of it, you know? Do you think these people are our government? Do you think that it is a branch of the deep state? Or do you think that it's just a bunch of psychopaths out there like Thomas? Or do you think I Thomas think is the, deep state? I think the CIA and the government have used people like Thomas and they, they have connections with people that are working in these offices like the Office of Net Assessment, the ONA, which happens to kind of sound like the uh, Order of Nine Angles uh, and, yeah. the, uh, and the uh, 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 Center for the, uh, uh, what is it? The Center for the Study of Digital Life, which is the parent, the parent, uh, uh, corporation that was formed underneath in the uh uh uh, uh shit dude i'm high fuck Sorry. you know what i'm saying this shit's verifiable just you can look it up just look up the okay. office of net assessment or, or the center for the study of digital life they show the fucking people that are on the pan on the boards and and we've connected a few of these people to some of these characters and we're going to show that yeah. in the documentary you know so this is where the eyes of where the money came from the Isaac Cappy mind map isn't the only map I've made. I just haven't put the other ones out. And I have tracked down, not at the level that you have done with your documentary here, but I've tracked down from Seth Rich to Isaac Cappy to the Hoffmeister to, you know, everyone involved here. And they all have one person in common. All of them. And that is Thomas Schoenberger. Not just Thomas Schoenberger. No, not just, you're right, not just Thomas, but definitely Thomas Schoenberger. And mm -hmm. I wonder, you know, if Thomas wasn't a part of all of this, would Carrie Wolf be as animated as she was? Would she be as apt to do the things that she did? Would these people be so riled up against one another if he wasn't there whispering in their ears, causing the damage? with the lies that he does. The only one person, well, the one person I'm talking about right now, Thomas, is involved in absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. And I can't help but wonder, think, that he's probably not just a malignant narcissistic psychopath, but that he is working for somebody at a higher level, funded, and given orders and marching orders to do what he does. There, there, it's the only thing that explains why he's not in jail right now with his history and everything that he's done. He is being protected. I just, I, I just read a really good book called Chaos by, by Tom O'Neill. It was about Charles Manson and about how Manson was being handled by the CIA, MKUltra, uh, Jolly West, as well as the uh, L.A. Sheriff's Office and LAPD. And he went through 20 years and laid it out. And it wasn't like it was all super planned, but he was one of many people who was being allowed to perform what he was doing out there in California. And he was protected and let out every single time because he was so good at chaos. And uh, ergo, the name of the book, Chaos. If anyone needs a really good book, um, you can actually go through there and uh, find the character that, um, well, that is Thomas Schoenberger in there, that, that, that liaison between government and uh, fuckery and death for the public. It's sad. It's sick and it's sad. It really is. 
Yeah, I've been amazed at the ties that bind some of these people together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the sheer fuckery, excuse my English, that I've seen on these social media platforms is sickening and, and, and shocking, to say the least. Yeah. Um, you know, at, 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 at this point, to hear what Mitch had to say to Thomas about all of this, at this point, if Mitch hasn't gone through the court records, if Mitch hasn't gone through the evidence himself, and he really believes what he's saying, he's a fucking moron, you know? <laughs> um, he's just a fucking moron. Or he's part of the LARP. He's part of the assignment. He's part of facilitating Thomas Schoenberger doing what he does at this point. You know, I mean, the evidence is out there. Jesse, you have done a better job than anybody at laying it out in a systematic fashion regularly once or twice a week. You know what has happened and you've shown the receipts and the proof over and over and over again. And if Mitch can't see that, he doesn't want to see that. He's just, well, he's just scripting I, a narrative. Exactly. Exactly. Those, those who don't see it don't want to see it. You're a hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And those who choose to associate and work with Thomas Schoenberger at this point still, baby fist. Guilty. You're just as fucking guilty. And maybe one day, Matthew, you'll you'll wake up with a fucking conscience and realize, uh, well, well, uh, maybe maybe there's something more to life than um what Thomas gives me or my fucking puzzles or something, you know, and move on, start growing, get a family and start building something in this world. Hey, Jesse. Yeah. I put a link in the private chat. You just pop that up real quick and take a look at it. Okay. Will do. Will do. Yeah. I wanted to say like, um, so with my lawsuit, like no one understands like how much documentation went in into it, like, and how hard it is to get a summary judgment because like um, a summary judgment, like a judge can, he can say like, okay, you get these or these, but you have to prove every part of it. And me getting all of it is actually like a big deal. You know, and then for people to negate that or to say, um, you know, like, oh, she's a part of this and this. I proved in a court of law, like beyond a reasonable doubt, um, what happened to me, to a judge, to the point where it didn't even have to go to court because I proved it um, with an injunction. So he's not supposed to talk about me. He's supposed to stay... 300 feet away from me and my family. Like there's a lot of stipulations in that. It's difficult as well to get an injunction. So all of these like people who say, oh, this and that, like I've heard many, you know, many times, you know, like um, I proved fraud. I proved that they defrauded me and I proved every part of that, you know, so and I'm, I, not to interrupt, but not only is he not supposed to be speaking about you, he's not supposed to be coercing or encouraging other people to do so, which we know that's what he does now. Is which we know he does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he still does, you know. And, and it's like these people who still come after me, you know, like trying to, like, what, I asked him in 2018, like, to leave me alone. Sure, he emailed me after, you know, and stuff, like, um, until I did my lawsuit. But most of those were threats, like, telling me to apo apologize, you know. Um, I, like, the, the thing is, like, um, I'm still under pro doing processes, Skilly, and, and I can't talk about that because, um it's it's not within my best interest to do so, you know, like I can talk yeah. about certain things because it's over with and and I'm I'm allowed to, but but um you know there there are things that I do have to keep to myself um about the processes because 
because it's in my best interest to. And like, I wish, you know, for these years, I could have effectively defended myself, you know, but, um, but I, I, I needed to have the evidence, you know, like, um, of, of what was happening. And I needed, you know, I, I, I needed to just kind of like, um, do the due process, you know, because I'm dealing with it legally. Um, and it's not an easy process either. I mean, it's, it's not. And it, it actually does like, cause you have to go over all of this evidence, which is re-traumatizing, you know, but the thing is, no matter what anyone says in the court of public opinion, I, w I won in a court of law. And, yeah. um, and that took a lot out of me. And it also, you know, like um, everyone can say stuff, you know, on Twitter or on YouTube, but I won in a court of law. And I think that speaks to something. Does, um, does he have to pay you back, Beth? Yes, he, he needs to pay me back plus my lawyer fees. How much does he owe you? I need to check. Like I can't say. Um, I mean, in the about seventy thousand. Okay. Do you have to actively collect that, or is the court collecting that for you, or do you have to? I'd have to. Um, no, I'd have to. I, I can't. I don't want to. Um, because that part, like, it's, yeah, it's it's not in, you know, like, it, my best interest to talk about that. that. That's probably upcoming litigation, so she probably should right that. Not talking too much about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, but, he doesn't but, make any money. He doesn't, he barely makes any money that I'm aware of. No, yeah. Like, um, and, but, but uh, my main part was about like with that was um i was trying to get jurisdiction as well not my main part i can't say but but part of it was to to get jurisdiction which i do have now right that's an important part though. and and the thing is it's it's really interesting to me like um because like i do have jurisdiction um and 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 so like why um people still have at me literally five six years later like i knew him until like the end of may like right after that lift the veil it was when i realized what happened and and so like um so so all of this stuff after that like i really don't know like all the larps and that like I, I didn't pay attention to like I, I don't understand the A eight five eight stuff. I I don't and I don't understand like you know all of this other stuff because it's not it's not in my knowledge base, you know. So in in all honesty, your situation was very similar to Pabana's. Both of you met him in June of 2017 around the same time. And both of you within months found out what the hell was going on and it's been non-stop attacks ever since then with you guys yeah uh, and and um i mean to be fair like i did i asked him to leave me alone you know in 2018 so so like that's a long time and it's still perpetuating to this day and i saw someone i think a or somebody, I don't know, somebody said today about it's self-perpetuating, you know, and it is like, um, there's a time where you just have to close the book and just like, you know, live your life, you know, and, and, and for the most part I do, and then I get sucked back into it, you know, and, and then, right. and then I, and so it goes, it's just kind of like, you know, like when will 2017, 18 move forward? you know, well, because I believe with, uh -huh. you're dealing with a narcissist. And I, I, I don't just say that as a as an insult. Thomas is an absolute malignant narcissist. He will never stop. If he knows he can get a feed from this, if he can get that narcissistic boost from this, as bad as it is for his record, for his finances, for his life, that's all secondary to his mental illness, which is narcissism. He will yeah. never stop and get some attention. This right here, he sits there and probably, but he'll sit there and jack off of this all week long. He'll play it over and over and over. Because the thing is, he needs to become irrelevant. And, and that's right. what's important, you know? 
Well, the thing about narcissists is they don't become irrelevant because he'll go out and find new victims every single day. If it's not here online, you know, it'll be at the coffee shop. It'll be in his neighborhood. It'll be somewhere. But the Internet has given Thomas the ability to go out there and get his narcissistic feed uh, relatively uh, 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 free of any kind of of of, uh, of, of, of payback. You know, yeah. the, the, in reality, if you think about it, though, Thomas doesn't even have to go search for his victims any longer. He has a gang that does that for him also. Sure. He really does. And that's the bad part because they'll find new victims, but as soon as something goes south there and they get bored, they circle back to their old victims and try to right, retry cool. I've gone and I've searched. Yeah, that's up. what happened to me. I'd fucking move the fuck on, dude. I I thought, other than the occasional accusing me of working for Thomas, you know, I didn't hear from him or about him or any fucking thing. Like I said, you know, we had a small circle that just enjoyed sharing pictures of our grandkids and shit. And all of a sudden, here comes Lestat, you know. And then all of a sudden, here comes a picture from Carrie. And it's like, oh, shit, dude, it's Thomas. It's Thomas. It's Thomas. Dude, so he talks shit on the stat and and defango and them, but they fucking work together, dude. Uh, they they yeah. will shit talk each other and praise each other in the same conversation. Like the uh, you know, they don't care of all the traits of malignant and narcissism. So we can play malignant narcissism bingo real quick. So everybody grab your cards. I'm gonna start reading out traits <laughs> of malignant <laughs> narcissists. And you just mark your board anywhere where, oh, this sounds exactly like Thomas Schoenberger. So being extremely arrogant and self-centered. Disregarding the feelings and needs of other people. Manipulating, using, or exploiting others for personal gain or pleasure, like having Titus Frost do a stream or hoax wars. Having an extreme need for power. Acts of re revenge against those who criticize them. There's one. Criticizing about ways to obtain, obtain more power or dominance over others. Lacking conscious regret or remor remorse for their actions. Being cruel and taking pleasure in the pain of others. High levels of aggression towards other people. Paranoia or mistrust of others. That I think I checked off every box there. That's, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Thomas is a malignant narcissist. He, he thinks he can bother yeah. me still by calling me a meth addict, by saying I look nervous, by 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 saying I look like a goat. He thinks he can trigger me, and he doesn't. When you know where Thomas comes from, and you know that everything out of his mouth, and I mean everything, is just to elicit a response from you so that he can feed. Well, once you figure that out, he it kind of handicaps him, you know. Then he actually has to go and start breaking the law, which he has no problem doing. He has no problem breaking the law, you know. And he has to pull other people in to do it for him. Um, he would be, um, and maybe Treach treat would know this better than me, but he's he's the perfect asset. He's the perfect deep state asset. He is the type of person you want to find if you're out there sowing chaos and destroying people's lives. You just feed them some crumbs and turn them loose, wind them up and set them out there and fuck, see what happens, you know? I think and in a way like this stuff effectively distracts people from 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23. You know, like people reliving 2018s, 2017, like what was going on the rest of the years, you know? Like, you mean um, from the lockdowns, Beth? Well, 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 like something, with, hang on, hang on, Beth, hang on, hang on, mm -hmm. because the whole pizza gate thing, the, 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 who really leaked the fucking DNC emails in the first place, right? Because that shit was all politically motivated. It was used to, uh, to, uh, uh, persuade the elections and it's only being brought up by large channels and, and, uh, influential people now because they're trying to use it again, right? They're trying to use QAnon again. To influence the, the election is which we up. can prove. Only, right, we're 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 gonna let Aiken Aiken. The, the video is already done. Aiken, speak yeah. for a minute. Go ahead. Okay, okay so here's here's the thing, right? 
everything that Church has said is, is is true, but there's a lot of devil in the that well, I well I, I I agree with. But you know, um uh, terrible though that sounds, things like this, um uh, that the idea of government actually utilizing the space to actually model and look for look for ways to model the the up and coming terrorist leaders in terror cells, right? This is actually shit that is studied in universities. There's a whole un there there are about six universities in different programs all over the United States, which are part of this modeling process. It is a, a, a process led by the Department of Homeland Security. There is the START, S-T-A-R-T, program, which I can't remember what it is, the it's response to terrorist, terrorism. The, the, um, they also co-fund with the Department of Homeland Security. They co-fund um, research projects with C Cicada, which is more to do with port security. I'm really con um, and modeling uh, port security, the, the th vital interests for the US uh, for the US economy that could be disrupted by, to, by by asymmetric warfare. So what you're really talking about is the is the the the, the, the empire on the earth, the most powerful planet uh, thing on the planet, with 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 more military expenditure than the rest of the world combined, I would imagine, with a, with thirteen hundred bases and it's susceptible to asymmetric warfare like 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 fucking crazy. And so these guys these dedicated professionals going out there and trying to plug the gaps, and one of the problems they have, which is 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 the emergence of ad hoc uh, networks, right? Where these um, where, where where you get uh, the, the the development of where, where leaders come up and, and and they're trying to work out, and this is a very very future crimey, right? So it's got this horrible kind of feeling to it. This is where it's going, man. So, so you've got DMAX, which is the mathematical modeling arm of it. You've got Cicada, which is the uh, more to do with things like the the port port stuff. I, I, you know what? Have you guys ever wondered why George Webb, right, was interviewed by the by, by the FBI, but nobody was arrested? The port of Charleston was shut down for what half a day or a day. Yeah, That's the eighth fun. largest port. That is the eighth largest port. Going into the United States, right? Do you, do you know? Do you know what the fucking insurance? Do you, do you know? Do you know what happens when containers sit in a, in a ship, right, for a half a day? Do you, do you know what the con? You know what happens with the contracts and with the insurers, right? Do you do you, you reckon that an insurer isn't going to go after people? You got another thing. Fucking think about this. The port of Charleston was shut down by a dirty bomb hoax, the eighth largest port. Okay, and all they did is like um, talk to somebody. Hey, oh, the bad naughty boy, right? No bullshit, absolute bullshit. You're on another planet if you think that that's what actually happened, right? Now you look at Cicada, C, C, C Cicada, right? One of its major things with supply chains is port security. Okay, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying that that there are some important reasons why and, and human to be trafficking model. too. Okay, human trafficking. Now, now, to be to be honest, like 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 one of the fascinating things I find with these spaces is you're all fucking nuts. Okay, I love it. I love it. I'm I'm nuts as well, right? Okay, this is where you find the nuts. Okay, and so if you want to actually like establish human models. For people who are nutty as fuck, right? This is where you go, right? Okay, and it's the nuts that you got to watch, okay? So, so, so the thing is, is that it's everything's cool when you're trying to do sophisticated modeling of linear systems. When you get go to nonlinear systems, right? Or if you're training IOIs or you're doing stuff like this, you need data, right? How do you get data? How do you get data? when you're looking at dynamic emergent systems, right? Okay. Now, um, now, when you're talking about chaos, there is a lot of chaos mathematics involved in this, not chaos, chaos magic, 
right? And when you're talking about chaos and magic, be very careful that you're not getting confused with modern marketing programs, okay? Which is which 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 look very very similar, modern propaganda programs, right? Okay, so so yeah, there's some real interesting questions I have to ask relating to the whole DNC thing, Guccifer, and all that sort of stuff. But the other thing is, is that you've got to also realize your own limitations. It doesn't matter how good an internet investigator you are, you're not going to fucking know. And the professionals know, right? The professionals can ring up the right person in the social welfare. They can talk to, they can pull your records. They can do all that shit. And they will know shit within an, hour's t an hour that might have taken you three months to look up. Okay? Right? doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter how, and, and if you think you're good, you're a narcissist. If you think you're really, really, really done well and you've got the whole fucking thing, right? You're a narcissist, okay? Investigation is really hard. Cor Corey did some interesting stuff, right? With, 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 with actually going out there and interviewing people. Power to you, right? That's real world stuff. Uh, I, I think that's big, big props to that, right? You're actually um, uh, talking to Cappy's parents, props. Doing things like that. That's real world stuff, right? Talking There's to the guy that ran over Isaac Cappy. Right? <laughs> look, look, look. I, I, I'll i leave that to the experts. I'll leave the Cappy thing to the experts because I have a bit more faith in the system than a lot of people here because I'm a shill, okay? All right? So so let's consider, let's consider the whole thing about, um, and, and please copy that and put that on a loop. Right, because I'm proud. I'm a proud shill. Proud shill for Satan. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, um, if you if you, if you consider everything that Trisha said and understand that all of that stuff we're telling you, what we're telling you is that that's not what's important in the documentary. Okay, what well, what is it that we started looking at? That, that offended and scared us so much. Not scared, because you know what? These people aren't all that powerful, right? <laughs> you know, what's, okay. imp what's okay. important okay. is... The, the powerful for, people for, come out if you start fucking with me, right? Maybe uh, outside of the people... <laughs> like outside of those that have passed... Profile, these people are gone. Uh, other than that... Look, that I, other than the people that have passed <laughs> in the process of all this madness... Look... For the rest of us that are still here, we we have the the ability to go back to our reality and yeah. find something beautiful in it. And that's what my my hope final is. My final hope for everybody in the chat and everybody on the panel is to find something beautiful that's real in your life and avoid this uh, multiverse fucking you know social credit fucking bullshit. All right, because that's what the government wants us involved in. It doesn't want they don't want us growing our own food. They don't want us hunting and maintaining our own family. You know, they don't want to they want us fucking on their pharmaceuticals and feeling like shit and dealing with all the repercussions of their shitty food. That's what they want us doing, you know, and you so, know, so that's that, <clears throat> go ahead. In, 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 in order, and I don't want to interrupt you. I, I, you know, I believe in all those things. What do I do? I hunt. Right? What do I do? I raise animals. We grow our own food. I, I, I make my own alcohol. <laughs> right? I love bartering. Right? Okay. And I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is, is that I, I, I've got out of the city. I, I can't stress that enough. Right? That, 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 that you know, that, that, that is great for your kids. It's great. To, it's so great to invest and in, in immerse yourself in small communities. And, and and you know you know they want you right. You might even have to do three jobs, right? I mean, like like I can remember ringing up when I was looking for places to go and live, right? I remember ringing up one place, and the lady at the information centre said, "You're not a plumber, are you? We need a plumber. God, we need a plumber. Could you learn to be a plumber?" <laughs> and I said, "You know what? This is where you want to be, right? This is the the land of opportunity." Is 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 just outside the outside the limits, right? Okay, and and like I I can everybody just listen and just go on about their lives, but that's where it is, man. You want to actually um, 
you 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 you, you want to be in those places, but but what is motivating me is not that. It's not the government thing. It's not all of those. It's it's what I actually found, right? And 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 Daniel Tretch, without saying anything, because it's not the right time yet. Okay, it isn't. Doesn't matter how much you want to know, it's not the right time yet. Okay. Why? Because I say so. Because I did the work. Okay. And if you actually look, if you watch Daniel's stream, because this is a plug for Daniel, because I like Daniel. So I'm I'm working some lesser black magic right now. I'm tr I'm encouraging you to do the work. Daniel for the last three months has been dropping it all, right? He's been feeding it to you and amongst a million other things, right? And so you'll actually see this is the beauty of the soil. You'll actually see there are people who are that crazy to actually hang on any every word that's been said. Do you know, do you know, um, who's the guy? Um, Ayrton Yardini. Uh, Ayrton, okay, I'm probably the only person who's ever talked about Ayrton Yardini, right? Um, uh, 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 Donald Trump's guru, okay? There's an, been another three accounts that have been popped in here today, which are named specifically after things that I have actually, like, talked about in streams, okay? It's, it's really cool. I love this. I love this kind of soil. This is you, you, this is the sort of shit that happens. Watch what happens. People will be profiled. Okay, okay. It's going to be hard for me. They're going to, it's going to be a lot harder with me. It's easy for you guys. It's easy for someone to profile you as Americans, right? It's a lot harder to profile someone like me. Okay, right. So so let's let, let's see how this works. This is a beautiful operation. Okay, because it's not going to be nice when the actual well, by, by when, when two, shit comes out. Am I, am I under, now, am I exaggerating by, in this? In two days from now, we're all going to be child rapists. We're all going to have what? you know, we're all pedophiles, right? Thomas, that's the first thing Thomas is going to say. We're all pedophiles, right? That's yeah. What can you <laughs> what can you get on somebody's computer? You're going to have to try pretty hard, right? Okay. Let's let, let's just see what happens next. That, that, and, and in fact, like you know, let, 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 let's talk about let's let's talk where in your, the space you understand. Gnostic karma compels me to tell you not to do that, right? What? Okay. Can don't, you guys say that I'm not involved in your? You're not involved in anything, Beth. <laughs> You're not involved in anything except. Can I can I ask you yeah, something? I was gonna, she may have missed. I want to ask you something in. very important. Okay, I want to ask you something very important. <laughs> This was, you were involved in a really, really, really weird, weird time. Where a, lot of this stuff was, where, a lot of, where a lot of this stuff was being established, right? Okay, right. So I can remember, no, I can remember um, somebody telling me about um, Nathan Stoltman having somebody ring, right? The, um, his psychiatrist. Did do you have you ever heard of anything like this? I heard it was Thomas. I I know you heard it as Thomas. I heard that from Katie. Right. I wanted you to say it. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I I did not. I that that was something I wanted to talk to you, Jesse, about. Okay. I wanted to make sure that Jesse and Pavana knew that that was actually the pr predominant thing that's going through. Now I have the I have the messages to back all that up in, in private discords, and that, but and it's not something I would make public. But it is something that I would actually share because I think it's got a legal. There, there's something weird there that 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 speaks to a a a a, a modus operandi, okay, which I find disturbing. Yeah, because he does the right? same okay? things, you know. So, He's so, so. I, did I wanted to say, so like when whenever they came, you know, like um, to me, I had just done this. It was like, I, at the time, mm. I think it was like a maybe 16 tweet thread. I did it numerous times, but like I found in WikiLeaks how um, the government was manipulating social media. And I did this thread on 
on that and how it was through the State Department. And that's when I got, I think, their attention because Thomas was always like, show this person that thread, you know, like, um, and and stuff like, um, and, and so I think it's quite an important thread, you know, I, I redid it later because Twitter would like kind of, yeah. um, like kind of shatter my threads, you know, and hmm. stuff. So, um, but, That's but I did, like, um, I'm, uh -huh. I'm, 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 I'm glad that I didn't have to, you know, like, I thank you for, Thank you for um, that. You know, I didn't want to put you in a spot there, but I, I felt that it was appropriate to make sure that that Jesse and Pavana knew that, that the, the 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 that was the story that was going around at the time. That it was actually mm -hmm. Thomas, right, that mm -hmm. contacted Nathan's psychiatrist. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so this is a a teeny weeny tidbit. And a lot of the shit that you get when you're in the background, okay, and you see what's going on. So, like, do you know um, why? Do you know why Thomas keeps contacting people's doctors for the well, same yeah. reason that Hunter Biden keeps smoking crack and banging hookers on camera? Because nobody has stopped it. Thomas doesn't care because he's protected. The same way Hunter Biden has been protected. He just doesn't care. The same way his, him and his dad blackmailed Burisma for millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars. They just don't care what we think. Because what are you going to do about it? Thomas has been acting like this for decades now. What is anyone going to do about it? Who are we going to call? How are we going to prove it? How are we going to connect the, the, the dots? Who's going to pull them into court? And then how are we going to tie everything else to whatever little thing he's being sued for at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you hear like he's trying to tie me into this whole like um, Flynn stuff, which I thought was really ridiculous because I have nothing. Thomas is broke. Thomas's right. only shot to not starve to death in an old folks home is to sue somebody and mm -hmm. cash in on some money. He's, he's, he's the same parasite he's always been. His, no, his there, retirement plan is to sue somebody. There is another option. There is another, way for, there is another way for him to make money. I'm listening. I think. Go ahead. And, um, we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll, it'll come out. Okay? It'll come out. Uh, and, and I don't know whether he's making any actual, you know, uh, enough money, let's say, to live off of, but now that he's hooked in with you know, Marcia Stockton and, and these other people, they're now pushing his music on uh, Apple iTunes and, and all kinds of other weird so that's, uh, so, where you have to build now. Uh, so, so, you see, this is there's something very important I think you guys missed. It's like okay? it's, it was something that was said because the, 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 the emergent soil that's happening being conducted by um, a, a number of men with with geez, I can't even bullshit. Okay, so the, the emergent sale that's happening um, in the in the background, okay, um, has a lot of shotgunning going on because uh, there's got to be one of the things that you need to do when it comes to uh, 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 public relations and uh, being able to your, your whole shadow box thing is front running a story. Okay, so the problem is here's a story. It's an emergent story, right? Okay, how do you front run it? Okay, so you actually saw some shotgunning going on in the interview. Uh, go back and have a look at the interview. You will see that every base has been covered. Okay, but there is one interesting thing that's actually happening right now. There's a there's a scandal involving a, a person by the name of Ed. Okay, mm -hmm. there's some stuff that a person by the name of Ed. Okay, you'll have to go back yeah. and look at this. And I just want you to hold that as a place ma ma marker, because th this 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 involves an entirely other community that is now being pulled in to try to attack and cause chaos in this community. Okay, just watch and, and see. Okay, and by doing that, there's labelling ha happening. 
So you're going to you're going to start to see some labeling. You're going to start to see uh, the language is really clear and what's actually being done. You can see it more directly with Daniel. You can see it, but you also understand that the language that's being used is actually to try to spread it, okay, by guilt, by association, right? So they're going to find people on the peripheral or they're going to find these things and then they're going to try to um, associate you with that with That's that what they always scandal. do, though. Yeah, exactly. And this Who's is that? the one that's going to hey, come along. Uh, to, I, I need to add, answer a question. To, to Jay and on in skills, um, Thomas told me he did. Um, so Thomas actually admitted to me that he did. Uh, so maybe she did as well, but he admitted to me that he did. Called, I called didn't, Nathan. I didn't know who Lift the Veil was really at that time. It was before, it was long before, like I, you know, like the May incident. And again, I didn't watch a lot of YouTube then, but he told me. Uh, in his what did he tell you, Beth? That he called the doctor or doctor. on Nathan. So um, you, I'm Dave. not I'm I'm not making it up. Yeah. Um it's 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 true. I've got so. I've got messages from that are three year, three years old that will correlate that what you just said. Yeah. Okay. But this is before this was like um a long it's long time ago so that's it right was Maybe okay, for anyone new who's listening we know he also called and spoke to bavana's doctors and we know he also called and spoke to zach's doctors up in canada mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, so yeah this is yeah. sort of a uh habit with thomas now it's a it's a there's yeah. some, some homework that people ha need to do because it's far more important than people think, okay? Um, damn, I just made a mistake. It's far more important than people think relating to what's actually happened, especially with, we'll call it fake. No, it's data. like I noticed that everything, actually, like the second time he tried to extort me, it was him trying to wrap me up in other people's stuff, you know? And that's what they constantly try to do is like wrap me up in other people's things. So I understand what you're saying, you know, and what it's do what think, they Joe? do to each and every like one of us, you know, right. and what, it's what also an, the, a way to effectively separate people because like, I don't want to be responsible for someone else's thing. So then I get mad or upset if they do something that like, you know, because I don't want to be responsible for that and stuff. And, a lot of this echo chamber, um, you know, with the trolls or, you know, the, the Thomas minions or whatever, it's um, guilt by association, you know, like you don't have yeah. to do anything. It's just they do guilt by association. And right. Now, also I, now, also, um, just in the, the, the interests of, of, of visibility, around about the time of Cappy dying, I was um, I, I was actually in close my my, my former my uh, my real my this is a burner sock it always has been Aiken drums a burner sock my actual sock that I really like is Rumblefish okay mm -hmm. and I was Rumblefish Rumblefish in hoaxes Discord with lots of friends around okay actively talking in private direct message conversation with Hoax Wars during that time. I think he's a nice guy. Enjoyed his company. Watched Terry destroy his Discord. <laughs> um, the head, uh, I, I will say that I think that, 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 that All Seeing used promotional video that she did of you was really well done. It was actually a beautiful piece. I think she showed the skill that the, the, the level of skill that she can do if she sets her mind to it, right? It was nice. I, th I thought that was so a comp big compliment there. But, but after Cappy died, more than it affected a lot of people, okay? And it affected hoax wars, okay? And what was actually happening was, um, and a tremendous amount, and not just hoax wars, but a lot of people, a lot of people were feeling targeted, okay? 
because it's this empathy in the space, right? Now, I was in I was in Skype communication with Hoax Wars, and I can remember he was walking home from the pub, and we were in Skype, and my wife was in the background, and it was at this time that he was having a hard job differentiating me from Thomas, who was actually, as he was oh. walking along, Hoax Wars was think could not diff, could not tell he was thinking he was talking to Thomas when he was talking to me. Okay, this was a very a big concern of mine, and this I'm only saying this because of recent events. Okay, with with Hoax Wars becoming involved because I don't want to see this guy. I don't want to see this again, again. Okay. The thing is, is that I know because I was told, and you can get up on a panel, you do it right now, and we can have a talk about our conversations and how and how you were being love bombed, that this gentleman was ringing you all the time, telling you that you were actually like a brother to him, that he loved you, that it was it was uh, that that you were you were really talented, and, and you've got some talent, yeah. But, but but and 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 it didn't matter that you'd lost your job. He could give you get you a job. You could do some work for him, right? Okay, and and um, you could do you, you know, but but you was you were really really in a bad place at that time, okay? And I think that that was on purpose. That's that's what I think. That's what I thought back then when you said I don't think I should talk to you anymore. Right, and my wife said to me, who was listening to the conversation in the background, "Don't, don't talk to that person again. That is a person with serious psychological problems." Right, and what did I do? I contacted two very close friends, and they helped. Okay, and you shut your Discord down for a couple of weeks on my advice, I believe. Right. While well, everybody was wondering if you were dead, okay. So, so look, there's more shit going on, and there are more people who are victims. I would love to know. Next time, Hoax Wars is on chan channel somewhere. Ask him if he ever received the the shout out by Sean Stone. Okay. Ask him if he's <laughs> ever seen Sean Stone shout him out. I think okay? he did. I think I saw it. I don't. I, I I would love to have a copy of that. If it exists, I, I think that's cool. I think somebody brought it up, but I, I don't know. I now I Sean know. Sean Stone, if you actually look, you'll find you used to work for Buzzsaw, you'll find a, you'll find a lot of interesting articles on Buzzsaw. <laughs> okay, I won't go into those. Yeah, that just guy yet. Is suspect. <laughs> you'll find that he 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 would do personal personal um personal uh um stuff with people for 350 bucks an hour. And he used to do conference he used to do those those week retreat conferences with Lisa Clapier. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you know, I'm, 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 I'm just I feel saying, lucky. I had a half hour conversation with him for free. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's a whole country <laughs> of very interesting people. But I'm just saying that, that that there's a whole lot of shit going in the background. People are not necessarily evil. People can be confused. People can be. Um, people can also be love bombed. People can. And you know what? Um. You know, if you ever if you ever look at uh, even the worst dictator out there can have friends, right? And the worst the worst person in history can have fucking friends who would do anything for him because that person has been nice to that person, right? Because yeah. they need something from them. And so I'm not going to stand here and go, oh, this person's an evil person because of that or that. You know, there are shitloads of people who were in that who were in that thing the other night, didn't realize who I was, who I actually think are good guys, good people, right, who I've actually talked to in the past, and they just so happen to be on the other side of the fence and not realize who they're talking to, right? Yeah. What, what about okay. after you educate them? Uh, that's, that's another story entirely. This is part of a process, right? Yeah, yeah, like, 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 for instance, and I'm just going to call out Baby Fist here, you know. Baby Fist is friends with, and Baby Fist, sorry to do this, Matthew, but Baby Fist is friends because I, 
I, I, I interviewed Matthew for about an hour and a half one night on my show. And he just, he, he, he was honest and he thinks because he's honest about things, well, it's okay. And we explained to him exactly where Thomas hurts people and how Thomas hurts people and who Thomas is hurt. And we listed all the names. We showed the court records and went on and on and on for an hour and a half. And he says, well, I just like to make puzzles with them. And I said, yeah, but you contributing to make puzzles with Thomas so he can psyop and mind fuck other people. Um, you're contributing to Thomas's hurting and his damage and his pain. And once you know that you're no longer, you know, you're no longer innocent. If you continue to help Hitler load the oven with the Jews, you're no longer just Hitler's friend. You're now complicit in the act. At what point is someone being a friend with Thomas or any of the other evil fuckers, um, you know, not okay. So, so Corey, first off, your volume is really loud again. Is it still loud? Again? It, it is. Yeah. I mean, you, you had popped out and popped back in because you were having issues. So I don't know if that changed it, but yeah, your volume level is, is really, really loud. And, you know, um, I, you know, I'm going to be the one to jump out and say it in, in baby fist defense, there are people out there, man, that no matter what someone tells you about someone or, or a situation, yeah. unless you've been stabbed in the back, yeah. you you may not listen to them. I mean, there are people that have to have to learn lessons on their own. And, you know, obviously we we told baby fist, look, someday you'll get thrown under the bus. And that day obviously hasn't happened yet. And Thomas is still nice to him. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, whether anybody likes it or not, you know, that's up to Baby Fist. Uh, whether or not he's friends with him. And, you know, unless Baby Fist does something specific to myself or Pavano or, or any of my friends, you know. Uh, you know, I guess if he wants to be friends with Thomas and talk Thomas, that's up to him. You know, but. Uh, I think a. Uh... I think shitty people attach themselves to good people all the time, you know, uh, yeah. to make themselves look better. I, I had a good talk with baby fist and we're supposed to be interviewing again, him again at some point, uh, to do the inter, uh, second part to the Ian Murdoch interview. And, uh, I got, I always go with my gut man. I, uh, I, I've felt like he was being honest when he talked with us and I didn't feel like he was being deceitful, you know, and, and, it's just like uh, with the, you know, the mafia or the Illuminati or the Freemasons. They're so com compartmentalized that, you know, perhaps Baby Fist is ignorant of, of how truly fucking spectacularly fucking evil and methodic that that man is, you know, because how I got involved with Thomas is just very, very strange. And, and because of how strange it was. I went crazy for a little spill and I was questioning how and where and what the fuck was really going on. And there's a recording of me, uh, China to famously put out of me yeah. freaking out and calling Thomas the devil. Right. Yeah. Cause I couldn't, I couldn't see how my bud dealer already knew this dude, man. It, it just, this dude I'd fucking been buying weed from since high school. How the fuck is, how the fuck is me and my bud dealer connected to this fucking international conspiracy shit, right? Like it fucking blew my mind. How the fuck is this happening, right? But now that yeah, I fucking like got, now that I can see better and now that I can see how these people are connected and why and how I was gaslit into the situation, now I'm angry, right? right. right. Yeah, like I want to say, I was just, I just had two babies, you know, and, and I had gotten off online because I had just um, moved um, and I didn't know anyone. So like, uh, and then all of this stuff happened. Like, I, like if you look, at, I, I didn't have anything online about me because I wasn't anyone. Like, you know, like I didn't have good or bad because I didn't do anything. Um, and the only thing online about me is all the negative stuff they put online about me and stuff so and and they know that you know they're aware of that and so like i, I wanted to say something quickly to jay and non and and skills like um i just want to say you know like i just hope that like we can just move 
forward and you guys just let me live my life, you know, and just please, you know, just let me live my life and stuff. Congrats um, on the babies. I didn't know. No, they're older now, like, because this is now no, still, still a congrats. few years. You know? Congrats. Like, That's good shit. But I had world, just had The worldwide fertility rate is dropping by the day, so I'm happy yeah. to hear at any stage that people are having kids. I had two babies in 12 months, so it was like... Um, yeah. We know what you were busy doing. Yeah, and, and I had to... I had to actually like raise them through all of this, you know, and, and that was really difficult for me um, because it was really mentally hard. Yeah. I, I need to just interrupt just for a second. My apologies, but I've got to go. Okay. I'm going to read out an email I've sat on since May 2019. Okay. It's a reply. I'm not going to elaborate any further. Hi, Chris. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chris. This is no nothing bad, Beth. Hi, hi. That's my name, by the way, Chris. I've read through your email a couple of times and don't fully comprehend the issues, but I'll tell you what I know to be true. Eric is an associate who is clearly th free of guile. Thomas, on the other hand, is a manipulator. At times, Thomas has been a friend, in italic, in quotes, and we have worked together on many events. Is he a scammer? Yes. Is he a st cyber stalker? I wouldn't be surprised, because he has the ability to manipulate websites and browsers and is able to come off as the abused. He has a way with words and the ability to draw you in. Although I haven't seen him in a couple of years, I still take his occasional calls and we chat amicably. If you are considering a business relationship with Thomas, I would stay clear. Thomas has strong and light has a strong and likable personality with the ability to win over people he meets but underneath it's all about him <clears throat> without knowing more about your specific situation i can't give you any advice but i wish you the best of luck and feel free to ask more questions best regards gig zafarius huh. he is the person on one of the many resumes, on T Thomas's resumes, which he gives as a reference. Hey, hey, oh, hey LG, you got us all figured G out. Go ahead Gig and put your, put your documentary out. You, you got Gig us Zafaris Hey, hey, OG is the... thinks we all work for Thomas, you guys. OG thinks, <laughs> that, that, OG thinks we all work for Thomas, you guys. You got us, you got us pegged, OG. You, you, you won. Congratulations. Okay. You know, Gig Safaris, X I F A R A S, is the general manager, the owner of Innovative Entertainment. That was, that, that, that is um, a person who um, has been, uh, is, just look that name up. You'll be able to find it. You'll be able to find who that person is. And you'll be able to do like Google searches by association. <laughs> you'll and and you'll realize that this isn't anybody in the space. This is not somebody, this is somebody real. Right? You'll be able to get his email, right? Don't get it off any scam reports. Actually go to the person, go to the company, talk, talk to the C, talk to the owner, right? Okay, you'll find. This is nobody who's involved in anything to do with us. This is a guy who is on a resume. This is a guy who's um, who, who who owned an entertainment company that was actually representing him, right? Okay, I, 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 okay. So so nothing else is going to be presented about that. You can do your own homework. That was uh, sent to me. On, on May the 31st, 2019, 
um, and it was evidence enough for me to um, keep clear like a barge pole. He hasn't done anything wrong to me. I've seen a lot of my friends hurt by the guy. So, 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 um, you, you know, do your own research. But I tell you, there's um, there's something that I did back then. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go to dinner. I'll see you later. The the documentary is going to be a shocker. Bye. Yeah. Cheers, bud. I'll um, go as well because I need to. Um, I need to go. Have a great night. Hey, cheers. I was going to let you know. I don't know if you heard when you joined that we're not attacking you with the documentary on any level. So thanks. Like, uh, yeah, I just, I just really just want to live my life, you know. Yeah, and I, just I kind understand. of like, uh, thanks, like, no, like, thanks to everybody, and and I appreciate you. Thanks for popping but, up. But I do want to add, like, I want to live my life on my terms, you know, because too many people have told me to, to shut up. And stuff. And yeah. Like, um, I do want to live my life on my terms, and I do believe this is healthy for me, like to be able to speak, because I do feel, even though I've I've peeped up sometimes, of course, you know, uh, I've responded, like, um, uh, like this is on. I I feel this this is healthy for me. So have have yeah. a good night, though. Bye, Beth. Bye. Again, well, the stream just, just got a lot uglier and stankier. I don't know if I'm going to hang around too much longer myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I, I think one of the videos we played at the beginning showed a big pile of shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. I can't, I can't wait for my expose OG. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've got me all figured out. So uh, I can't wait to see how, uh, how terrible of a person I am. It's going to be great. Yeah. So, you know, we, we talk about how horrible these people are and how they try to project all these lies and, and bullshit on people. So I'm going to play an oldie but a goodie that was produced uh, about me by one of Thomas's mindless minions, you know, because Thomas trips right. everybody you know, and how they take things. And they twist it into their own sick narratives. And this this is just one small example of the sick shit these people are capable of, by the way. Paula Davis of South Bend in Mishawaka, Indiana. Jesse uses the handle at Alla Waste Learning on social media. Jesse is married to Paula. Paula calls herself Pavana and Vox Mod on the internet. On December 22nd, 2021. A man was sentenced to 47 years in prison on two child molestation charges. He molested a relative who was under 14 from 2010 through 2016. That man was already serving time for a criminal sexual offense. The man lived at Jesse and Paula Davis's cramped three-bedroom house for three years. He was there in 2017 when the child sexual abuse for which he was convicted occurred. The man's name is David Voelkert. He is Paula Davis's brother. In September 2018, a child victim reported that David Voelkert had abused her sexually for five years. It started when she was six. Voelkert's Michigan conviction resulted from his sexual penetration of a 16-year-old girl when she was an overnight guest of Voelkert's niece. In court filings Voelkert also admitted taking a 13-year-old to an Indiana hotel to kiss and fondle her. Yet the courts awarded Jesse and Paula Davis money to shelter runaway children who had nowhere to go except foster care or a clinic. All On lies. October 2, 2017 Paula spoke of taking in runaway number 11, a homeless girl from a broken family, who had started cutting herself. Once in the Davis home, these kids got molested by Paula's own brother. The Davis home was a cramped sardine can. We have no room at the inn, no room to think and breathe and live. It is inconceivable that the Davises could have been unaware of David Voelkert's child sex abuse in such crowded conditions. Was Paula Davis driven insane by all of this? Could she be in fear for her life? Jesse and Paula Davis have four children. 
One of their children is born. She was 15 in 2015. She is one of David Volker's victims. Bill follows her uncle David on social media. Jesse Davis. By the way, my daughter was not one of the pedophile's victims, by the way. Had legal custody of his niece. When this girl was 15, her parents filed a report alleging Jesse was abusing her. Child Protective Services investigated. Jesse Davis refused to sign a safety assurance plan. What is the chance that other kids were abused in the Davis household? Davis and her friend were sexually abused under the same roof as Jesse. Yet Jesse continued contact with his brother-in-law after Voelkert's arrest for molesting Bar friend. Jesse and Paula Davis continued actively taking in foster kids into a home where a pedophile's company provided surveillance systems for video recording. Yes, David Voelkert installed home security systems. His business wow. address was 210 Till Avenue, Mishawaka, a home belonging to Charles Voelkert, and his business phone number belonged to Angela Voelkert. So, again, all lies. First off, this home has never been owned by a Volkert. Volkert is my wife's maiden name. And I've made statements very clear on the third generation of Davises in this home. The house is 100 years old and my family's owned it for like 75 of those years. So, again, just, just all lies. Hey, who's that comedian goes, uh, Jack and Jill Jack went up a hill. Each with a buck and a quarter. Andrew Dice plays. <laughs> yeah, that's who I'm looking at right there. That's an Andrew Dice Clay look like. <laughs> so yeah, they uh, <laughs> they, they just project. They they grab anything they can and turn it into this kind of shit. Jesse's emergency oh, brain service company used to whore. replace aging homeowner <laughs> sewer lines for the city. He was kicked off the list of city approved vendors after it was alleged that he deemed every job replacement necessary when simple repairs would suffice, a profit scam. Wow. Jesse Davis has a YouTube channel that incites violence against innocent parties and senior citizens. Channel guests hey. include hardcore criminals like <laughs> Daniel Ryan Dowd, arrested for raping his own underage daughter. Robert Sauerwald. Lord Squirrely, oh, an ex-con who that, served four that, years for first-degree home that, invasion, like, and Vinny DiMartini who did fuck? seven years in state prison. This <laughs> short clip shows a Hang menacing on, pause Jesse that for a Davis why, trying... Why are they attaching Vinny DiMartini to our fucking group? Like, he doesn't even hang with the, any of us. I have no idea. I mean, I've... Uh, Vinny's been in our chat. Yeah, past. I've seen him around, but he doesn't really hang in our in our channel in our circle. He's a wizard, Harry. He does golden dawn magic. Just right. What else is okay. really funny is so he brings up Daniel and Vinny and uh, Bobby Sarawald, and this image of Bobby Sarawald literally was photoshopped. They photoshopped it. If you look at it close, <laughs> you can see the blurriness on the top of his head. They photoshopped it to make it look like he was bald, totally bald. <laughs> Good Lord. First degree home invasion. And Vinny DiMartini who like did seven years in state prison. This short clip shows a menacing like Jesse like Davis that. trying to intimidate composer Thomas Schoenberger. Yeah. Jesse and Paula Davis both have criminal records. Their yeah. criminal records should not be expunged until law enforcement investigates allegations of child sex abuse at their home. During the shadow box era, <laughs> assisted composers and business partners Thomas Schoenberger and Michael Levine by filing a trademark application on their behalf. By agreement, she was to hold Schoenberger's 50% share as a proxy to maintain his privacy. Instead, she stole the trademark and kept the collateral that Schoenberger had put up to fund the startup. <laughs> right. Paula Davis's YouTube channel also attacks innocent victims. Paula <laughs> attacked noted Hollywood film and TV composer Michael A. Levine for no reason, while holding up the trademark that <laughs> stole. Mr. Levine is a senior citizen. 
Paula suggests that Levine's brother, a judge, should get him convicted. A judge. This is absurd, as <laughs> Levine has no criminal record. Damaging consequences for Levine ensued immediately after Paula Davis's attack video. Julius von Rauschobt, a German national and Davis associate. Uh, someone else he claims is a Davis associate. I have no clue who the fuck this guy is. Just like the other pedophile, that ghost 3301 that he keeps it's trying to It's obvious he's a wizard, Harry. Look at the fucking hair. Look at the fucking yeah. hair. Well, that was kind of, when I first saw it, I was like, is this the dude from the Harry Potter movie or something? Or, you know, fuck, I don't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> is that, is that, a, it looks like a woman. Yeah. Kept we funny might Levine's just, film might agent with it. threats and smears designed to wreck a valuable it. business relationship. Jesse Davis masqueraded as an altruist when he agitated for better That's conditions a at a homeless camp in his city. Were there ulterior motives in rescuing homeless children in order to house them with his brother-in-law, pedophile David Voelkert? Jesse Davis outfitted his house with six video cameras. Does he fear exposure? Is there a darker purpose for such extensive video recording? <laughs> A public relations firm called Shadowbox <laughs> existed for about 10 months. Its participants included Manuel Defango Chavez. Don't you love all the open-ended questions he asked? Thomas Schoenberger yeah. and Trevor Fitzgibbon. The insinuations. During this time, Schoenberg yeah. overheard Chavez well, Phoenix and Enigma, say you they could were friends be a trained assassin, what up, from what I hear. Chavez's yeah. <laughs> did did Corey Daniel kill Isaac Happy? Did he? Did he? Having sex with a child. Did and Daniel a child's his uncle was charged with sexual abuse of a child. The uncle committed suicide the next day. Do the many criminals and pedophiles associating with Jesse Davis form a pattern? <laughs> Thomas Schoenberger's computer was hacked. He believes Esteban Trujillo de Gutierrez may be responsible. Esteban is tied to Manuel Chavez. Arturo Tafoya, and others. Use Jesse Davis as a witness in her suit against Schoenberger and Levine. Davis <laughs> committed perjury when he knowingly gave false testimony in that suit. CIA asset Robert David Steele perished in September, 2021. Within weeks, hacked emails of Thomas Schoenberger were read aloud on Jesse Davis's YouTube channel in an effort to embarrass and discredit Schoenberger. <laughs> a GitHub account created by Esteban de Gutierrez that made a copy of the hacked email trove suggests Esteban's involvement. Various Twitter accounts emerged at the same time with the obvious purpose of smearing Schoenberger. They included one impersonating Schoenberger's adult son. Another account mocked Schoenberger with remarks to trigger recollection of a traumatic injury. Yet other abusive accounts published deposition fragments out of context. Robert David Steele Deadman Switch was the cover name for leaking Schoenberger's hacked emails. An August 2021 tweet to Arturo Tafoya says think we should do an RDS mega thread soon. Release of the hacked emails on Twitter, GitHub, and Jesse Davis's YouTube channel ensued. Is there a common thread behind these vicious attacks on Thomas Schoenberger and Michael Levine? Are the attacks planned and coordinated? Is someone paying for and directing the attacks? Are Jesse Davis's many connections with convicted criminals and pedophiles coincidental? <laughs> you gotta love that shit, guys. I mean, come on. Sorry, I had to put up this seal of um of God. Unbelievable. From, from Solomon to protect protect my energy field. See, I'm trying to teach Nathan how to do it. You, you just get the seal of God. Look Did I drink solid. over half a bottle of water? Do I need to take a yeah, piss? And drink water. Lots, lots of water. questions will be learned. Lot, lots of water. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, guys, I, I don't know how many more times I can have you on my panel because, you know, they're just calling me out because all you criminals and pedophiles. And then Stretch just fucking teleported. He just pulled some real St. Germain stuff. I don't know if anybody else saw that. Oh, he was what, there. What, he was gone. What the hell was up with that? Yeah, he just vanished in the middle that of the That was literal just strange. magic. I took down the seal of, of 
of God from the Book of Solomon, and Tretch disappeared. And it, I think I think the Phoenix Enigma's got some tarot cards over here. He's mixing. No, no need to get nervous, uh, Matt. You you have done wonderful on the when you've cameraed up so far. You're you're freeing yourself, and you're finally able to speak about this shit. So, yeah, Phoenix, though, there, he's, he's fucking looking into our futures and yeah, shit. He's, he's reading yeah. it. Good <laughs> Lord, man. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just kept thinking about all the shit Thomas has said about me the whole time listening to all that shit. And I don't know where he comes up with this stuff. He just, does he write this shit himself? I, I think uh, it's yeah. pure projection. I think it's projection. So all these things that he says about everybody else, or it's actually what he's he himself is doing. So he's got to make lackeys and you know, like fall guys for every every move he makes because he thinks he's being watched that much. He's that paranoid that he he's like fully well, trying to set up, you know, fall so guys. Well, let's I mean let's examine for one second. He's He's attempting to win in the court of public opinion at the expense right. of the court of law. So right. what is the benefit for Schoenberger to win in the court of public opinion? Which proves his narcissism. Bingo. Just he has ego. a mental sickness. He's a mental disease, and he requires that narcissistic feed. That's all it's, this is. It's, an, it's to pet his motherfucking ego. That's all he's looking for. He's and he can't help him. Yeah, called it right. He's probably stroking it. it out right now just because we've been talking about it for so long. You know? Say it again. And the number Say one it. thing about narcissists, I swear I'll come. A, nar a narcissist <laughs> is always the victim <laughs> and they're always right. They're always the victim, no matter what. Narcissists are always the victim. And they'll never say they're sorry. They'll never admit it. They can't. They just can't. Thomas, you're a sick fuck in so many ways. This stream could be twiggling. Yep. So, see, all right, I'm, I'm going to call it a night. Two streams. I'm head off to bed. I got I got work to do tomorrow. Yeah, I, I got some work to do tomorrow too. Uh, but you know, uh, occasionally I have to do these marathons to to force them to watch for hours and hours and. God, we, we've still got, it looks like it says 44 viewers <laughs> after eight hours and 45 minutes, guys. <laughs> I know. You know we, we've not had near that many people participating in the chat. So that just means all these trolls are lurking in the background looking for content, guys. They're looking yeah. for content. Yeah. Yeah. Clips so. or clips. I know clouds. Thomas is looking at this gorgeous golden beard and fucking stroking it out right now. <laughs> he's only he's only mentioned my beard every time he's come on air the last fucking week. Well, you know, <laughs> he hides things in there. He's Thomas, got weapons of mass destruction in his beard, you guys. You better look out. Thomas, you know, look. That, that gray dude, that, that's all fine, man. That's part of growing up and, and adulting, you know. You don't have to color that shit, you know? You don't have to color it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You have a good night. I'm out. Night, Phoenix. Thanks nice to meet you, Yeah. Peace See you out. I'm jumping off here, too. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I mean, something to drink. I, well, you know, I'm just over here on my live stream that's been running the whole time as I steal. Um, everybody's content on the internet because i'm not original at all and i don't apologize for it i just let you know it happened yeah i've been so, actually been stealing this very much as much as i stole titus frosts and mixed it with dumb shit because it was more entertaining to just make you know, so, tubby, you know uh, i know when i play like youtube streams and and re-watch people's streams I can click down on the bottom on YouTube for closed captioning and it and it brings brings it up. I don't I don't know that I have any control over over that, but um it is what it is, you know. <laughs> so 
but yeah, it's 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 been another uh, record-setting stream, you know. So uh, I'm sure they'll have plenty of content out of this one, and uh, uh, I'm gonna have to go watch the uh, interview with Titties Frost. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was busy here, so I, I couldn't tune into that. So I'll have to watch it on replay, unless unless they private it, you know. Uh, they 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 often uh, like to hide their dirty deeds, so we, we'll see if he leaves that shit up or not. So, but yeah, ho hopefully everybody enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, some interesting guests on the panel, a lot of interesting topics and talk, and uh, I'm I'm sure some people got some answers to some things that uh, they were perplexed about. So uh, hopefully it uh, it was a good night for everybody that's hung out this long, man. I appreciate everybody hanging out so long. Uh, Daniel, uh, I might click over to yours for a little for hey, a little while. We'll see. I'm, I keep finding really fun stuff, so we're just gonna delve deeper into the, just the rabbit hole at this point. We're just gonna go see what YouTube serves me for the rest of the night. Well, Let's go hey, see what this, TikTok is trying to manipulate with me. Did did you by chance notice they were talking about the uh, the Terry Joyce wig and the lipstick already? By the way, oh, I hope they did. That was absolute beautiful, making fun of the entire uh, situation going on. So if you looked at it as a way to go make fun of me, you you dumb. I would love you to put that on your stream and share it everywhere. <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> He is, oh no, he's gonna be a dude. Did you? I did that on a live stream. Do you think I care? And then you guys call me transgender. That's <laughs> disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole trans community yeah, I it. I makeup. So, so you know that night when you did the lipstick thing, and and uh, Aiken was you know calling for me to put lipstick on it. I didn't see that i had any nowhere i actually found some i think on the next stream i don't yeah. know if you were if you were there but i found some in pavana's makeup and uh so i went ahead and uh, put the wig on i think and and did the lipstick yeah. and oh yeah they've had a field day with that shit you know? they need to slow it down and zoom in on just how like fucking like <laughs> dirty street hooker i put that lipstick on it was fucking glorious <laughs> yeah. Mouth all open yeah. Down it, it, it was funny as shit, Angela. I I laughed almost as hard as the night that we all crashed our hair on the live stream. That was that was pretty funny as well. You know, when we all had the the caveman look going on. <laughs> so. Uh, hang on. Hang um, on. No, this is definitely uh, where the cool kids hang. This is, uh, if you're at my stream right now, this is the secret Sasquatch Society. Just know that. Hold on. Hold on, Treach. There you go, Treach. Now you can post the link. <laughs> We're just, I, I've already got something pulled up that I'm pretty sure is about Denise Mattel. You guys, I'm, I'm telling you. We're just going to go through it. <laughs> And the, and the audio over there is now being mixed on a different computer and then sent back to my computer, and then there's a little delay going on, and it should be coming through nicely. I should be able to just hit buttons and just not crash. Uh, right. Well, cool. So, everybody, <laughs> thanks for hanging out. Everybody that came up on the panel, because, God, I'm horrible. I don't cool. remember who all was here, but Phoenix Aiken, Daniel, Bobby Sarawald, uh, Beth, uh, shit. Whoever else might have popped up on the panel for a little bit. I appreciate y'all hanging out. Everybody in the chat, it looked like it was a pretty active chat. I'll have to go back and uh, browse through it a little bit. And all you lurkers in the background hunting for content, I hope you found what you were looking for. Until the next time, everybody, peace out. Have a great evening or a great morning wherever you're at.